We have to find some good Toho tunes for today. Or Zelda. What do you think? Chat. I'm thinking like... Zelda music with rain. Oh, it's kind of annoying. I can't go to my channel and type in a search because it tries to search my own channel. How about Pokemon music with rain? I never do that. I guess I could just put on the Pokemon soundtrack and a rain soundtrack, but I like the rainy ones, honestly. I wish they were longer than an hour, though. Hang on. What's that? You don't start something that says beautiful, relaxing ambience with the Mario music, and thanks to my Patreons. I'm quite quiet. Am I quiet? Chat, am I quiet? I shouldn't be. My, my, my microphone output looks... Looks normal? Hang on. I can't hear myself talk. Say something, Woolen. I can't hear myself talk. No, I can. Say what are you on? Okay, whatever. Let's do our tweets and stuff. Give me a sec. Sorry I'm like 37 minutes late. I only woke up at like quarter past. I missed my alarm. Oh, thank you, potatoes. Testing alert system. Cheers, man. Yeah, I only woke up at half past 11 because I missed my alarm. So, here I am. Hello, Christopher. You, are you going to put it straight onto the metal? The dirty metal? Oh, yeah, no, that's fine. Well, Sorry, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we do. Do we not have any other crumpets or anything in there? Well, that was a shit tweet. I didn't put any links or gifs or anything in it. Let's go with that. I think I've only deleted like four tweets in my life. Oh, well, yeah, because I normally don't really care about what I'm tweeting. That was just bad. Oh, it's moss. Yo, have you seen the IC crowd? It's not that good. <laughs> it's got Richard Ardaldi in it though, and I really like him. It's really short, it's like two seasons. It's just... It's just not that good. Really? I just like Richard. And, um... We need to watch Avatar, Friends, The All of Shokugeki, No Soma, All of Railgun and Index, That Fire Fighting One, Konosuba movie, um... The 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 Bake Off is it Nadia? Her her Netflix show. I'm sure that will be fun. Although I don't think we ever actually need to watch it. It will just be something that will be on Netflix forever. Daylight. Hi, I added you because you seem to be a really cool brother. Hmm. I'm oh, sorry, chat. I decided to decide and check all of my like random crap. Migraine. Sorry, wool wool. Wool sad. Hello, Chris. I'm live, by the way. Okay. She's singing. She's singing the Dutch. She's singing the Dutch Pete Postman Pat intro. Do you need to raise the volume of the audio chat so you can hear it a bit better? Hey, everyone. Oh, Ash, you have a yellow name now. That's frightening. Hello, potatoes and moon and waste and burn the cow. Ooh, 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 oh, sis. And potatoes and donut. And was taken and ash. And Nick. And Atto. Hey, everyone. So, yeah. This is going to be a sort of slow, cozy stream because I am slow and cozy today. Um, and I have not eaten breakfast or had any coffee. And. You know, good morning and all that. How, how are all of you doing, lads? Anyway, I've been taking what Donut thinks to, to brain. 
and I thought we were either going to start experimenting with trying to make a platformer or a Toho clone. And now I've thought more about it, a Toho clone seems way easier because there's literally no physics involved whatsoever. So like the one the first step I wanted to try and make was to see what he actually made. And how I can like make my own thing. So like as far as I can tell, did you miss um hey Porky? Did you miss the the bean stream, lads? Let me try and remember how I build it. Do I just do F7? Because uh, I also need to do a game capture for that, I guess. Or window capture. Alright. It seems to be loading. It's going to be loading in 1920 by 1080, isn't it? I don't really want that. No, it's not. Did I not save it last time? Oh, hang on. You press the debug button, don't you? Okay, cool. So I'm going to load that as a window capture, I guess. Here's the bean.exe. Alright, so this is what Donut sent us. This is what it currently does. You can spawn beans in, and they interact with the mouse. I'm not entirely sure how the hitboxes are done. I'm assuming it's just like a distance thing, or like a square, because these images are rectangular and you can click slightly off of them, I feel. Maybe. I don't know. But you can spawn all these various beans in. And, uh... And get rid of them. So if I... If I remove that game... Okay, am I going to be constantly, like, deleting the bean capture? That's going to be annoying. Whatever. I could do a visual video capture, but that would be weird. But yeah, hello, hello Zill, and everyone. And Minty. And what am I making? Hey, friends. No OpenGL, just regular software rendering. I don't know, honestly. This is done in SFML. That's what I'm using. I don't know what it... Donut, do you want to explain to me what it uses? And how it works? Because that... That would be a good place to start. I've also never used this IDE before. This uh, this is Microsoft Visual Studio Code. Because Donut's a hipster and says that Visual Studio is bad, but Visual Studio Code is good. It probably uses OpenGL behind the scenes. Okay. Like, for example, right now I'm lost because I have no idea where my files are. Now I found them again, so that's we press up there, I guess. I want to see how everything's working. Because also it's been like a year since I've done C++, so I need to remember how it's done. And I'm under the assumption that he's done it all properly. Has he done- is that protected in C++? Hello. Yo, it's Postman Chris with the- uh, thanks, brother. Is there a cup around here I can use? Oh, there's that boy there. That yeah, I do. It's fine. It's a few days old. It's alright, isn't it? I'll bring you a new one. Do you want me to raise the desktop portfolio even more? It might be a bit too low. It's really simple. Control Shift B shows and hides the file pane. Oh, that is convenient. You can use OpenGL or Vulkan if you include the headers, but I don't know what's the default. Okay. Guess what U stands for? It stands for unsigned. Yeah, I know. I was looking back at the I was looking back at the stream later, and I was like, that is just I just unsigned integer. It's been a while, and then you can do F for float, can't you? I'm still going to do that. Well, you you know. Oof. You have no logging in coding. I want to know why you chose to use unsigned ints instead of just ints. Is there a reason for that? Okay, chat. You and me together. Let's read through this code. My webcam isn't covering anything, is it? Just like a little bit of the printout. Let's, uh... Let's do that. Now I'm not covering really anything. You can't really read the chat on the screen, can you, either? Let's do this. Oh, hello. What have I done? Okay, I don't know. I just follow here. Now the chat's sort of on the screen. Unsigned because you can't have a negative window size. That makes sense. See, these are the things I normally wouldn't care about, but now you're making me think. Just ask me if you have questions. Alright. We're gonna read through the code together, Chum. Try and figure out what we're doing. You'd assumedly start with uh, main.header, right? Forever. Where is main? Main.cpp. Okay, here's a stupid question. Is there not a main.header? Is it game.h? Or does everything include game.h? It doesn't. Bean.h includes 
Okay, now I'm confused a little bit. Main doesn't need a header. Okay, thank you. What music is this? This. Alright, let's try and be a little stupid together, chat. This is the main head. This is the main, so this is presumably the first thing that gets ran when the program is ran. Woolens. Over here. Okay, I have no idea why you're writing it like that. Sure. I, I'll, I'll accept that. Can I control click to go through to that? I can. Okay. Here's about CP, C++ 77, 17 when you have 99. Good question. Anyway, is game.header even above this? So let's have a look at game header first. Or oh, bean.header. Ow. Yeah, did that echo? Thanks, Meta. Hello. Thank you for 33 months. Good morning from the land of bald eagles and imperialism. Thank you, my my good friend from the land of bald eagles and imperialism. Um. Anyway, should we have a little read through Bean, I guess, first? A and RC. All right. Well, anyway, as you can see, he's yo he's yeeting in the SFML library here, and array. I guess you have to include standard array. Is there a reason using array instead of a vector? Is it just because it's simpler? Because I remember when I did Unreal stuff, you wanted to basically just always throw vectors at stuff. Can you show me the project so far? Execute it. Here you go. Donut wrote this. This is an example code written by Donut Viking Chap to help me get to learn this, uh, this system. It's very interesting, and I love it. There'll be many beans. The beans will fill the screens. Using array to store the four corners because you know it's always four and it doesn't need to be resized. I see, I see, I see, I see. Is that specific for your, um, for everything? Or just for your weird physics engine? So you can calculate the bounds. Okay. Hey, Supi. It's only for the corners. Okay. Would you ever rec- is, Would you recommend using array over vector otherwise? Because I quite like vectors. He uses a vector to store the beans, for example. Hell yeah. I got really into them. Um, I was like, oh, hang on. It's like a super array. I love it. I raise why you know the size of vectors when you don't. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, but there's no, like, I shouldn't worry about speed constraints or something. And try and, like, calculate it myself. Because I'm assuming whatever goes on with vectors is better than anything I could write. Alright, so this is namespace wool. Fantastic. I see you don't tab out. Is there like is that like quite a standard thing to do? Well, it's quite annoying that I can't click to the left. I kind of wish this button was like over here. Because I wanna I always like click and drag from the left and I can't do that in this package. That's kind of annoying. Is there a way to move that? Oh well. I don't know what context contest explorer is. Anyway. Class being final. What does this mean? Extends? God, it's been a while since I've had this class. Am I extending from drawable? Or what? Or am I including drawable here? You look back to SFML after using SDL3, yeah? You can re tab stuff with the button bar along the bottom. Okay. String length. Oh, thanks, Chris. Did we need to get the dishwashing done? Is it? Is it actually raining? I've got. Are you taking the mic? Really? Oh my god, you're right, it's pissing down. I thought that was just the music I was listening to. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> this is Donut's example code. Final means it can't be derived further. The colon is extends or implements. Okay, yeah. What's the goal of today? Rain is very woolly. I wanted to try and make a Toho clone, because that would mean I can take keyboard input, have some very basic collision detection, try and keep track of like maybe a few basic things, like having a little side, little HUD on the side. And maybe having like dynamic stuff coming in and making patterns. 
is peaceful. You know? I think that would be a fun little goal for today, right? Because there's nothing really else. Like, Toho, I can just write without... E I can write it even without friction in your feet. So, like, the moment you let go, you stop moving. Although, I think that's how some Tohos do it. I don't remember. I think I thought there was a little bit of uh, a friction when you stop, but maybe not. Anyway, you have to give me a few minutes till this coffee is drinking. Well, I'm drawn spell card images. Hang on, hang on. Let's, let's chill for just a moment. I need to read through this first. So in... This is... Are these all... This is the header. Okay, we need to bring our brain back to C++. If you haven't done C++, lads, and you've only ever done, for example, Java, which is all I've done for the last year, and Swift, um, files have the main C++ file and the header file. In the header file, you can, like, declare that you have all the methods and stuff, and I think variables as well. Probably? Yeah. You can declare all your variables and all your all your methods, or functions, I guess. What's the, what's the C++ way of saying that? A function, probably. And then in your actual C++ folder, file, you add the actual logic to them. Yeah? So it means that if you want to include other functions, all you have to do is include the header, I believe. So if you look at main, all we're doing is including game.header which includes bean.header which has all the SFML shit in it. You can use the Dharma terminology of methods and fields in C++. I've never called them fields in my life. It'll be fun. You're a master coder, you put stuff in your auto exec. You've only done Visual Basic. Is that the, the one where you have to like dimension everything? You have to do like a dim. Frightening. Okay, anyway. Bean header. He's got a bunch of methods and sprites and all of it. Well, he's got a little bit of commenting, so let's have a look. Public Bean. I'll be honest, the naming scheme and everything being on one line does look terrifying. What is just straight Bean? Is Bean the whole thing? Is it a class? Where is Bean? Is Bean a thing? Bean? Bean? Is Bean a... That's the constructor for what? This... This is a class? Are we doing class things here? Or bean? You have to you have to remember, I need to I need to remember this ever so much shit. It's all slightly different. Although hopefully that only takes like ten minutes to remember everything, right? Haha. <laughs> so here's the constructor. Bean has a texture. Bean has his initial position, velocity, angle, and angular velocity. Oh so I guess that's the actual thing for the beans individually. So this is a bean. This is the file that represents one singular bean. Okay, this is a bean. It says class bean at the top. Class bean. So class bean would need, when you make one, it would need a constructor to run, I suppose. If I tab out, you can still see that, can't you? You can. Terrific. So I can just put that off to the side. Put it down here. Oh, you can't see when I'm moving it. Alright, I don't think there's anything going off screen in particular, so that's okay. Unless you actually want, maybe I want to attach this beam to like... Actually over here is... That's fine. Make it a little small. Here is the beam program. The beams don't move for us. Are you sure? OBS makes it look like the beams are moving. Alright. They do. Okay, that was confusing. Well, this is one bean, as you can see over here. The bean has a texture position, velocity, angle, and angular velocity, so there's some physics shit involved in here. There's a function that updates physics. Ah, oh, delta time. Classic, brother. And within bounds. I guess you're passing in bounds. To update. Do you need to pass in bounds to update physics? I guess so. Do you need to pass that in every single time? Is this ran like X number of times per second, or is this ran as fast as possible? And then there's a draw thing that's ran X times per second, I'm assuming. You don't know what this means. I I'll try and do an explanation, because I don't know what it means either. And me explaining it, getting it wrong, having Donut explain it, will help all of us learn, maybe. Alright. 
It's bean science. This is a bean, right? This whole header file explains all the top level stuff to do with a bean, right? All the stuff it can do and all the stuff it is, but no logic. It just says it has a velocity. Yeah? That sounds about right. That sounds pretty cool. There's a function here, so there's a thing it does to update physics. It takes in a floating point number, which is a number with a dot, so like 1.01. .01. Um, it takes a constant. No, it doesn't take a... Is that what... A constant SF float rec? Is SF the, libra the graphics library we're using? Is this a particular... Like what is, is this the bound? Is this its hitbox, then? Okay, so we're using a graphics library called SFML. So I'm assuming... Oh, it says up here, yeah, as examples. SF, Vector, and Float Rect are stuff that is included in this library that we can use. So we include, a, we include in a little rectangle, which represents its hitbox, I suppose, which is in here somewhere. Bounds marks the window edges to bounce off. Well, I'm completely wrong then, I suppose. Why is it a rectangle? Oh, hang on, yeah. So on this side, it seems to go really well. Wait. Sometimes it doesn't seem to bounce right on the edge. How is the hitbox calculated? Is it just being the rectangle? Simple fast multimedia library. You gotta go to hospital. I was gonna say have fun. Good luck, Viper Army. Alright. Anyway. This is one of the problems of having someone else write the code for you. You might not know what the things do. I'm sure they're commented inside though, right? No discard? No idea what that does. Explain yourself, Donut. No discard. So there's a standard array. You know, like a thing to hold stuff in. Like, hello, goodbye, how are you, or whatever. You know, that's a little array of, like, greetings. You can pick array zero to get a hello, array one to get goodbye. That sort of thing. I'm assuming. No discard means you have to use the return value, or else the compiler will give you an error to help you use the function properly. Right. I'm now confused as well, because in Java, you don't use constants, you use finals, but here there is both final and constant. What does this mean here, then? What compiler is this? This is just the visual... I think this is the visual uh, studio. We spent so bloody long picking it up. Final means something different in C++. Can you explain the difference between final and constant? Final means it cannot be changed. Like it's permanent. Oh, we're using CMake. Sorry, yeah, 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 yeah. <sighs> Friend find a such family plan to join is hard. Is no one on Discord got one? Because it makes it cheaper for everyone. Oh, the thing called hitbox is the hitbox, probably. Why is this a function? Is that a function? Sprite get global browns. Right. Final means the class or method can't be derived or overridden. Constant means the value can't change. The function doesn't change variables inside. So the hitbox is always returning the same thing. Velocity is always the same thing. Angular velocity is always the same thing. Transformed corners, I'm assuming, is the thing that makes it look like it's rotating because it probably draws within, you know, the four corners and then manipulates them around. What are we making? We're reading through the code, the example code, and then we're going to try and make a Toho clone. So we're making beans right now. Anyway. So this forces you to... Sorry, do you not get forced by the, the IDE? to return the right thing. So for example, hitbox is a constant that should return a rectangle, right? This little keyword here, I'm not sure what it's called, honestly, template. I never use them, I'm probably not, I'm not cool enough to use those. Maybe I should start using them. When you add constant into the function, it means it can only do things as if every member variable was constant. I see. So getters are always marked as constant because they don't need to modify anything. I see. Every variable that's mutable, you can change it in a constant function. Right. Okay. The function is only... Okay, I see. You can't call non-constant functions from constant objects. 
Okay. So in programming, there's a thing with constant. Sometimes you don't want your... You might have a variable. Are you, do you call it a constant variable? Because that sounds weird. But you have, like, your things, right? Like your sprites and your, and your numbers and all sorts. Sometimes you want them to change. So, like, it's your X and Y coordinate. And sometimes you don't want it to change. Like, I don't know. The, I'm assuming the initial velocity never changes. Does it? Like, once it's set. Or maybe. Maybe that's a bad example. Maybe the, like, the actual sprite it's using or something might stay permanent. That's a constant. And you would mark it like that. So I'm assuming that's what all this is. It's just being very... He's being very serious. Is this... Is it a good idea in, like, a tutorial program to be so, like, hard? You know? Surely this would also work. It's just not the proper way to do it. Right? Because I feel like a lot of this might be overcomplication, even though it's the proper way to do it. You know? You want constant correctness, please. Wouldn't work if you had a constant beam. Some constant functions can't modify anything marked unusable. Alright, well, let's try and take baby steps here. But I think a lot of this stuff is completely pointless. Like, it's just there for being... It's there to be proper, right? Examples should uphold the standards expected. No discard is pretty modern, though, so you don't need to use it. Okay. This, this is how you're meant to write a program, right? But I expect if you look at the, uh, the, the, the uh, source engine source code, you will see probably like something like that. And that's, that will be the same thing as that. Okay, so if you, any of you are also confused by the amount of crap on the screen, I think, I think you can ignore a lot of it and just pretend it's like that. But to make Donut Viking Chap happy, we'll break our brain and try and add more things to it. It's from the 90s. Yeah, brother. Alright, anyway. It's got a bunch of methods. It's got a bunch of functions. Whatever. It's got a bunch of voids, which are th uh, functions that don't return anything. So if you want to do something but not get anything back, you just throw it into the void and it'll do it. So if you're setting stuff or adding stuff... Okay, cool. So I guess if you wanted to Im immediately stop it, you do set velocity and then shove in like zero and it'll go back. What's your native programming language? I don't want to terrify anyone, but I've probably done the most in Java, so I'm probably going to say Java. Because I've just worked like, what, 10 months on Android and iOS? And before that, at uni, most of the stuff they did was on Java. I did my dissertation in C++, so I worked in C++ for like four or five months, but it was like Unreal Engine C++, so I didn't have to see a lot of this shit. But I think Java's the one I'm the most comfortable in. But it's, I want to learn more C++. You're looking at nothing but the beam bouncing around for 10 minutes and nothing else. It's a really good beam, isn't it? It'll be a really good, like, loading screen. You're done doing finishing touches on your C-sharp console app, which simulates hunting shinies in Pokemon games and found your channel playing TF2. Interesting. That is interesting. Minecraft plugin for wool hee hee. Hell yeah. Okay, so there's these are all the public things. So other other files, other classes can access these, right? These are private, so they can't do that, right? Ooh, can you get a beam screensaver? It will be fantastic. There's a Kano with motion sickness on your screen. Is she okay? Thank you, friends. Oh, this one down here does not want to do anything. Do you see, like, the lazy one in the bottom left? That's me today. That bean does not care. When the bean hits the corner, everything starts flashing. What are you saying, Glass? Is it? What? Stuff isn't going weird, is it? Anyway, whatever. There's a bunch of uh, variables here as well. So these are the bean's private things. Ooh, private, right? So it has its own draw function, I, I guess, that draws based on all its variables. Everyone is trying their best. You haven't really look, looked at sitting down and properly learning a language. Do Java. Java's pretty easy. Everyone in the chat's going to be like, No, don't do Java. It has a garbage collector because it's a garbage language. Wah. You should learn... You should learn... Cobol. What's this? Bad Apple? This is uh, a Pokemon song, brother. Python is easier than Java. I don't like Python. It confuses my brain. Oh, hey, Wolf, sorry. 
Slow bean is me every morning. Hell yeah, brother. Python's very, very, very simple, so maybe it's not the worst idea. Yeah, everyone use x86 assembly. Anyway, so our beans, these individual beans, they all have a sprite, which is the picture. They all have a velocity, which uh, Donut very nicely marks as how fast the bean is moving. Angular velocity is how fast the bean is spinning. Inverse ma mass is a physics thing to determine how light it is. Moment of inertia is a physics thing to determine its spinniness. And restitution is its bounciness. I sort of remember some of this stuff from Unreal. I had my, uh, my golf ball with his restitution and all that bollocks. Standard array of vector. Four things inside the array. And it's the corners. Local coordinates for the corner of the rectangular texture. Okay, so that's all quite simple, right? The bean has a picture. It has stuff to say how fast it's moving, how fast it's spinning, and then a bunch of random physics crap that I don't care about. But it's there. It's trying its absolute best. What is this song? It's 30 minutes and 12 seconds into this playlist. Oh, there's a description that says... It's a remix of Emotion from Black and White. There you go. Use window.draw, not custom object.draw. Where am I looking for that? Okay, let's ignore that. Standard array of vectors, and there's four things. So if you wanted to do a standard array of, like, floats, would you do standard array float four? And then you can say floaty corners. Ooh. So I think that's the same as that. But instead of using vectors, we'd be using floats. If that makes it a little easier to look at, maybe. But just corner. Maybe. I don't know. I see you're, you're, uh, you're doing the old this thing. Where you type in, like, a thing underscore next to the variable. What's up with that, brother? Python is enjoyable. Anyway, this is bean.header. Let's dive into bean.c++. So this, does, this defines all the things, but there's no actual logic. It says how fast the bean is moving, but it just says we're storing that. All right, we're gonna we're gonna be storing that at some point, but it doesn't say anything more. You know, it says there will be a method to set velocity, but nothing beyond that. So if we dive into the C++ file, it's called Beam. We can go through and see all the actual logic involved. See, so this is all the actual. Oh, it lets you go really far down. Okay, we can have a little look from the top. You can ignore the size. You want to initialize the ver the array with zero, one, two, three and a type in C++. M stands for member, it makes it easier to differentiate from local variables. Okay. Also, I should probably define, my like starting experience in programming was from when I was like seven or eight, and I spent the next five years uh, programming Zelda engines in the Game Maker engine. And I did like a bunch of shit. I made like a couple Smash Brothers clones and like, a bunch of just random shit, like platformers and stuff. Um, so all my knowledge from then is what all of my programming is based off of. So all my programming is inherently slightly wonky. Because I built on it when, when I was like an actual child. Um, so forgive me if I don't do everything the, the, the proper way. I did go through uni and they tried to teach us the proper way. And I did the proper way to try and get good scores and then immediately forgot about it later. But yeah, we might we might not do things completely properly, and that might upset Donut a little bit, but that's okay. C sharp is the next step after VB. Are you the people that controlled my A levels? Because my my AS was Visual Basic, and then my A level in a different college was C sharp. You saw optional. Where is it used? That's a great question. I have no bloody idea. So here we're including the bean header, so the thing, there's all, this, all the crap in here, which includes the library and the array and all that stuff. All that crap, also throw that into here. So pretend this file is sitting just above this file, like up here, you know? Bean.header, bam, like up there, and then we scroll down to the next stuff. That's sort of what include does. Yeah? Sort of. Oh, when you try and copy stuff it makes it like, darken. Lazy Bean has become lazy. Oh, is he barely moving? 
Oh, he's just spinning silently. Let 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 her do her thing. That bean. Look off they go. Oh, they should be. They should intersect with each other. Think of the the bean madness there would be with constant collision detection. Yikes. What's the problem with not doing things properly? Other programmers will backseat you. But that's okay when you only do you only work on the program with one other person and they don't even do the back end. So really, you're just programming the entire Android thing itself. You pack remember this in school? Hell yeah. Include is basically copy paste, yeah. But we're also including algorithm, which I'm assuming is a standard C++ thing to help him transform. Sure. There's some random math stuff to use absolute and whatever the hell hypot means. Sure. Optional includes null optional and optional, I guess. Um, so if you want to know, the programming language, like, you can't just write in here and use all this random math shit. Like, that's not in the basic package, because you might not need it, and it's unnecessary bloat, right? So the actual just, like, base amount of the keywords and crap that you can use is actually rather low. So if you want to start using math stuff, you want to specifically include those maths libraries. That's why, you know, why, why do you have to include absolute? That's a pretty basic maths thing, right? It's because you might not need it, and it'll be pointless to try and include something you don't need. Hypot is hypotenuse. Hypot is equivalent to squirt. Oh, okay. More maths shit, basically. He's also the evil spider from Monsters, Inc., I believe. Also, what is this tabbing? Is there a reason that you, like, don't tab things out? Is it just because it gets kind of pointless to have everything out one? Because my problem is I've always had stuff out one like that. So that looks normal. But maybe I'll go back. This is your program for now. Until I mess with it. I'm going to have to get used to the fact I can't drag off the side. Is there a way to add a more, more like, a bigger border on the left here, like, between? Because I like to be able to, like, click here and then drag. I don't want to have to, like pixel perfect aim to the left side of a letter. You don't tab namespaces because you'll make everything tabbed in for no reason. That's fine. I think that's the hipster way to tab. Donut's pretty hipster, isn't he? But okay. Explain to me... I'm going to sound very stupid. What does namespace mean? I don't remember. Is namespace, like, the whole project? Like, namespace here is standard, right? So everything included in there is standard blah. So does namespace wool mean that this is technically wool colon colon find collision? Is that what that means? Because if so, what does namespace with nothing after it mean? They stop name collisions. So it's like in, if in this file, say I'm including from somewhere else, and we both had something called find collision, it would differentiate them, because this would be wool find collision, and that would be turbo boner find collision, or whatever. So yeah, it means everything outside the namespace has to access them with wool. Okay. Good luck with coding. Bye, man. You're helping your cousin edit a video for the 20th anniversary. Have fun. Have fun. What are calling people hipster? Don't worry, Tommy. They, they really are super hipsters. Trust me, brother. What's what does namespace wool and then inside of that be there be a thing that just has namespace close bracket? It's a bit special. It's to make sure the functions defined in the anonymous namespace can't be used from a different file. So is this like a bit of a hack? That means that all this stuff is sort of private in a way, maybe. Because it, it may, maybe perhaps Poss unless. Just kidding. It's to make them private to the C++ file. Okay, cool. So we picked up on that. Am I going to remember to do that? Game.cpp. Does this do the private namespace? It doesn't. This is just everything in wool. So this is like wool game run? Game? I don't know. Okay, let's go back there later. That's, that's way in the future. Oh, game is the name of the folder. Okay. The file. Anyway, let's work our way through Bean. By default, you could type extern blah 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 in a different CPP file and use them from there. Okay. And that's a very bad thing, I'm sure. Anyway, let's work our way through here. Struct collision final. So this is a struct. It's sort of like a class. Is it? Is a struct a class where everything is private? Is that what that is? I'm going to say that's what that is and then hope he, hope he corrects me. So... It's a class where everything is public. My bad, I got it completely wrong, but sort of right. 
the best kind. Everything's public by default. Okay. So you have classes, which is sort of like, I don't know. What's a good way to describe classes? How, how would how do you just how do you describe a class? I don't want to like confuse anything. A class is a it's a thing that has things and things to do. It's like what mind blowing. I have no idea how you describe a class. A class is a blueprint. Sure, a class is a blueprint. So a class can have all of his own variables for the things he knows, or the methods, the things he can do, and I'm sure there's other crap. So this struct here is just a teeny tiny little class, sort of, but because you use the word struct instead, everything is available to the public, so everyone can see its, its penetration. So I'm assuming this is a struct within a class, because surely bean.cpp... Is this not... Is there not a bean class? Surely? Public bean. There is class bean. So here there is class bean, right? So this bean... Oh, I just launched League of Legends by accident. What a mistake. Well, it's something I'd never thought I would do. Hang on a second, chat. Is it going to try and launch itself? I put it on my taskbar in case we ever want to play it again. Maybe I didn't launch it. I just clicked on it. Okay, it's fine. No League of Legends today. It's not inside Bean. It just happens to be in the file because it's the only place it's used. Okay. That's not confusing. So, Bean class. These are our beans. This defines all our beans. Within beans.c++. Here's all our bean shit. I'm addicted to Lego Noe. I have played it for four hours in a row. You to put its own file or something. Okay, so Donut wants to keep it simple. Supposedly this might want to be in its own file, file but that might that might be pointless. For now. But if you want to be super hardcore programmer, you would uh, you would make a like collision C++ and header file and put this in there maybe. And even though it'd be only tiny, it would be sensible. How is Lee? I really enjoyed it. I, I would actually recommend watching the vault. Like it was surprisingly fun. And people in chat who watched the whole thing said like I was it was like surprisingly good. Anyway, so this is, despite being in the bean file, this is a spy among our midst, right? He doesn't need to be here, but he is, okay? Because this is the only place Collision is used, apparently. So, ignore him, but Collision is a class. He has two variables. The class never changes, because it's final, I guess. He has a vector that, de that defines his normal. His normal? Sure. And a vector that defines his penetration. Ooh. -woo. Sure. No one can derive from it. So does that mean you can't have, like, a, a collision child down here? You can't, like, inherit from it? They should probably in a vector.math.h thing. Well, the fission is below collision. Alright, so... Where does bean start? Okay, this is where the bean stuff starts. So pretend Donut didn't try and confuse us with his, with his brain. And this incredible amount of work he did just for me. Thank you, Donut. You're very kind. Donut, he wrote all this, brothers. What a kind boy. What a helpful teacher. The man in the corner said penetration. That's a wool hee hee from me. So these are the actual bean.c++ things. Ignore, ignore all the stuff up here. We'll go through it now. So let's pretend this stuff is in a different file. These aren't bean related. These are maths, all right? But we can go through them anyway, all right, brothers? So... There is a context expert auto squirt 1.4.4.4. So I'm assuming this is. Is auto. Oh, C is auto, doesn't it? So you can. It like just. It just guesses what the file. It doesn't guess, but it works out what the variable type is automatically, right? Square root of 2. Is that what that is? Auto context expert means evaluated at compile time. Okay, so I can't explain this. I have no bloody idea what this is. I, I avoid maths sometimes, sometimes, and that is a bad idea. I do. Oof. Degrees to radians coefficient. These are magic numbers by the looks of it. So are these, is it just, you just stored these as flat numbers because it's much faster. It's a better slat. Oh, define. Okay, okay, okay. Quick maths. All right. So sometimes in programming, I don't know if this is the case, but sometimes it's a waste of computing time to try and calculate these things. So if you know what there is beforehand, you can just store it and just 
just sort of fudge it, all right? I think the Quake engine uses that for something. There's like, it's like, I think it's called magic numbers, right? There's something in, I think, the Quake engine that is just a number, and it just makes things work. And they don't know how they really found it, and the guy who wrote it isn't really sure either, I think. We made a train, it's not much, but it's a train. Hell yeah. What do you mean by a train? Are you doing modeling? Anyway, so this is a... We're just defining a thing, all right? We're defining... Auto... C++ has this wonderful thing called auto, where you, you just type it and it works magically, like BAP. You know? Do I need to work out what this is? No. BAP. It's an auto. BAP. BAP, BAP, BAP. It doesn't matter. All right? Because, I mean, it doesn't really matter. It's for the computer, anyway. Anyway. So this is a BAP that says... Square root of 2. Are you naming it square root of 2? Is that what the square root of 2 is? Does 2 have a square root? What? My brain, help. Degrees to radians coefficient. So these, is just, these are just numbers, alright? I don't like them and they frighten me, so I'm gonna... I'm just gonna label these as frightening, alright? Just so just so we can be afraid. Oh, you got a picture. Ooh. Oh, are you doing this all from, uh, from scratch? In Swift? Oh, you're doing this in... Uh... You're doing Xcode, brother. What's wrong? I don't mean what's wrong. I can't believe I managed to get anything to launch in Xcode. Terrific! I love it. They're using Metal to render it. Sure. I only used Swift. I've got my little Mac Mini that works sent me down here. I only used it for a couple months. And I only used it with the uh, iPhone section of stuff, so I didn't really explore too much beyond that. Square root of 2 is irrational. Oh, oh, like, Wollen, didn't you do GCSE maths? I'd be like, yes, brother, I did, but I didn't do very well in it. Your uni friend uses Swift. That's pretty fast. S-Code does some pretty phenomenal GPU debugging. Yeah? I, like, all I remember from it is that uh, there's a horrific bug in, uh, Oh, what am I? Th I'm now trying to think of something completely different. In uh, transitions, where like it won't remember. What am I trying to describe? So in an app, right? You'll click on a button and then go to another screen. There's a phenomenal bug in Swift, or at least what we're doing, where yeah, you, know, you tap on a button to go to the screen help screen or whatever. Then you'll go back. The button won't work anymore. You, you have to do something else and then go back and then the button will. Work. It's like it's really stupid. The train's made in Blender. It's nothing special though. It's cute. All non-negative numbers have real square roots. Ah. Huh. Degrees to radians coefficient is to convert from radians to degrees by multiplying that number. You should have called it radians to degrees. Okay. So this is a nice converty number to convert some things. This is a nice squirty number to make things go poof like that. Bap. Because in programming you can't really have irrational numbers. Because yeah, kind of like computers kind of like to know what they're dealing with. So I guess this is like a, cro a close approximation. And you see the little F at the end? I don't know if you can see that. I'm assuming the stream is high enough quality and the screen isn't moving, so the bitrate should be good. That means it's a float. I.e. it's dot blah 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 blah, basically. A floating point number. So auto here probably is going to chuck it as like, what, a float or a double or something. I don't know. Double? Long. Float. Double. Surely. All right, we're back to this frightening no discard thing. Get out of here, brother. No, we'll, we'll leave it in there, brother. Oh, can you multiple delete stuff? Does this IDE have that as an option? Because you see how it's highlighted all of them? Is that just so you can find them? If you hover the cursor over the very name, you can see what type it is. Oh, it turns it into a float. That's wonderful. So yeah, remember how I was talking about how auto is a wonderful keyword? And it just figures stuff out. That's quite nice. So if I hover over here, it says frightening. It is a floating number. And it is equal to that. Is that only if you've written it once? Like, is that only if you've compiled it once? Okay. Floaty boy. Yeah. Alright. Whatever. So, square. Oh, these are just maths things that you've done to save time. Right? So, get out of here confusing extra things. This is a function, surely that returns a floating point number, you know, a number with a dot. To call it, you say square, 
and then a number, floating point number, and it returns that number times itself. That's ultra simple. That's wonderful to learn. You don't even need to compile. That's convenient. These are, these other things he's added here, no discard, you said, is to ensure that it you can you always return a float, I guess. It's it's just like a sort of safety check, I guess. It means you have to use the return value. Oh, 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 I see, I see, I see, I see. No, so, okay. Sometimes you can just call something and then just ignore it. So, for example, I could just do square one, point one, and then nothing else, and that would be discarding the return value, right? Because I'm not saving it anywhere. I'd just be doing square one, it would be doing, all right, cool, one times one, that's one, brother, and then it ends. I'm assuming no discard means you can't do that, yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'd have to do, like, float, square root of one, or, you know, float, square value of one, equals float one, or something. Yo, Christopher, food? Oh, brother, thank you. I'm working my way through it, Christopher. Except it's not university, so I don't get marked on it. But then again, I don't get charged to do this. Thank you very much, Christopher. I got it right. Hell yeah. Okay. I, yeah, I get marked by chat, but like we're all learning together. Yeah? It's handy to mark certain features as no discard because you might accidentally forget to use it. Okay. You can go into every draw command. Let's have a look. Oh, that is nice. I know some people really like Swift. I got really confused by that debug screen though, so I just ignored it. Honestly. But that makes a lot of sense. Maybe I shouldn't ignore it. Food Brothers. I've got grapes. Anyway, so this means that whoever... So say I am I am like ancient programmer, right? I wrote all of these beans, and then this has been passed down through the many years. And Woolen Super Junior is programming. He can't modify this file because it's sacred text. But if he wants to use this magical square variable, he has to save it somewhere. Right? That's sort of what this is used for. AKA, you in a year, when you've forgotten how this works, it's to ensure that you do stuff properly in the future. Or now. Whatever. The only reason that other functions use it is because Vector2f doesn't support it. Right. Oh, this is a weird looking grape. Okay, cool. Dot product is another maths thing that I'm sure I should remember from the GCSEs, but absolutely do not. So it's a floating point number. Here's a stupid one. Do you have to define this as a float? You can't, presumably you can't use auto, because this is a function. So this always, do you always have to specify what this is going to return? You can't just say, ah, I'll figure it out, brother. Do you not document your code with comments to remember what things do? I usually do. I usually try to, yeah. But, you know, sometimes you don't really remember. Or the comments you wrote were a little weird, like you wanted to be short and kooky. go. Okay. So dot product, you pass in two vectors. What is a vector exactly? Is there like a thing that I can like go to and find? Does someone want to describe that? Like presumably a vector is an x, y. No? That's what I was going under the assumption of, but maybe I'm going to sound very silly in that. It's just two floats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. X and Y. Yeah, so it doesn't have to be X and Y, does it? But you just tend to use it as X and Y, because it's just a way to store two values in a little pair. It's like a little couple of values, right? So that's what this vector is for. If you've been seeing this vector this whole time, just think of that as we're passing around X, Y coordinate as a value. It's a vector. They can call them S and T or whatever, yeah. But that's confusing. SFML always calls them X and Y, as you probably should. Is there a vector 3F that has um, a Z value as well, maybe? More beans are slowing down. I'm assuming just after time they all get a bit lazy, right? Anyway. Orthogonal? 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 Whatever. That returns some math shit. Normalized returns some more math shit. Whatever. Like, this is all- this is all stuff you go onto Wikipedia 
look at like a chart on how the maths is done and then try and write an estimation of that in C++, right? Unless you're like some sort of maths whiz or at least, you know, a teenager, you can probably do this from scratch, but I can't do that. Programming puzzles, you're trying to decipher this C++ with your puny C-sharp mind. We're all, we're all trying to decipher. You could use SF vector type to use a custom type for X and Y. I see. So if you wanted your X and Y values to be stored as floats for some reason, you could do that. Presumably they're being stored not as floats, right? Because being at... Well, maybe they are. Maybe we're using X 1.1 to like use like subpixels or something. I don't know how you're drawing them. Hmm. They are floats. Okay. Are you storing coordinates as a float value? How are you drawing it? Is it not one coordinate to a pixel? How are you how are you defining the screen? I guess float makes a lot of sense. SFML converts the floats to pixels itself. Okay. I see, I see, I see. SFML deals with that. Okay. Well, so you you know subpixels. Have you ever watched like speedruns chat? You know when they talk about like subpixels? And they're like, Mario in, in this level has to be like half a pixel across. It's because like the actual logic in the back for the X value will be like 1.5 instead of just 1 or 2. So he's sort of there. Physics is easier with floats. Yes. Surely. That would make sense. My bad. Um, find collision. Okay, this is something more interesting. It's a optional collision? I don't, I don't understand this. Is collision a type? Is that our struct? That's our struct. There we go. We're bringing that back. So we're using this up here. I don't know what standard optional means. I'll be perfectly honest. It might return a collision or no, nothing. Okay. So either it will return a coll it will return a collision or nothing. Returning a collision in this sense means it will return this little struct here which would have a little value for normal and penetration. Can you explain what normal and- is penetration how far in or where it is on something? Can you explain what these are? Playlist. This is just if you- this is just like the rainy Pokemon playlist on YouTube. It is really good, isn't it? I love- the rainy playlist is so good. I know they're really easy to make, they're just like chill beats with rain in the background, but I really like them. I love this song. Penetration is how far it has collided. Normal is the reverse direction it collided with as a vector unit. I see. So, for example, if we have two... How do I draw this with my face? If we have... Let's just use lines, I guess, because it's easier. Pretend my two, my two hands like this are like the beans, but just like a very, very flat bean. All right, we squish bean. Instead of being like that, squish, all right? This is a squished beam. Here are the two beams, they're trying to collide, right? Lewdly, right, rather lewd. If they collide, you'll be like this, bam. There's a collision been detected here, right? Where the thumbs are, very lewd, all right? That would be, the penetration would be this distance, I'm assuming, and the normal would be that direction. Like if he's moving in this way, the normal would be that, right? Something like that. I think. Raid noises make me sleepy too, it's wonderful. GNU multiple precision seems like a good choice. You might try to make your own library. I think that's what that is. I'm going to assume that's what it is, because Donut hasn't immediately flipped himself. Alright, so our thing to our method to find collision might return a collision, or not. Whatever, brothers. And in order to find collision, you need to pass in a point, which is an XY coordinate, and the bounds, which is the space to search within, I'm assuming. And constant means it's not going to be changing just for now, right? So I want to, you want to pass in a little rectangle and a point. So I'm trying to see if, you know, is this dot here? Is that within the rounds? This will probably return nothing. But if it's within the dot, if it's like moved in like that, you would say, haha, he is there and he's come from here. Yeah? Normal is the opposite direction of force. Okay. I had to do a lot of this stuff with the, the uh, mini golf game. Do you remember that? Um, so, and I don't really remember what I did, honestly. 
But in order to make it so you could hit the ball, I, pr I programmed it really weirdly. It, it's very surprisingly, there is no information on the internet as to how to make a golf or ball game in Unreal Engine. That seems so stupid, but it, it is the case. So I ended up like just kind of fudging it. So when you're hitting the ball, it's like applying a force from like an opposite position. Like, I, I don't remember what I did, but I stored so much random shit. I did it all through trial and error, which is probably not how you're meant to do it. I bet there's a mathsy way to know how you are meant to interact with a ball object and move it and rotate it and whatever, but I just trial and errored it until it worked. But I'm pretty sure I used the normal and stuff. It's the op direction opposite of the collided surface. Okay. Anyway. It's just a pain. Constant auto left, bounds dot left. Okay. So these are some values. What are these being stored as? Can I find out? I don't think I can, can I? What was it? Was you just hover over it and it would tell you? Well, it doesn't matter. Anyway, bounds dot left here. So we're storing a left, right, top and bottom. Just for the sake of ease, I guess. Yeah, I think this is just ease. So this stuff doesn't have to be here, theoretically. Everywhere down here where it says left could actually just be bounds.left. But to stop it from getting really bloated with just the word bounds everywhere, Donuts defined four variables just for like readability, right? So we're saying left is the left, so the bounds up here is a little rectangle, right? Bounds is left, is left, right is right, top is top, bottom is bottom, whatever. And we're just putting them here to keep things simple. Um, I guess right is actually left plus width. So you could theoretically put this everywhere you see right. That makes sense. So I guess, wait, does bounds just store a top left? Or just stores a left and a top? And then a width plus a height? So instead of storing objectively the right-hand side of a square, it's defining the width of the square. Okay. I guess it's all local, isn't it? Hey, Hugh. Thanks for the 11 months. Hello, hello. 11 years QCC, 11 years wall hee hee. Oh, the music ended just as you did that, brother. There's a new playlist. What's this going to be? Sick. Thank you, Hugh. Imagine programming in something that isn't VBA in Excel, well, exactly. Or in uh, PowerPoint. Hey, brother. Programming it, I just trialed and errored it until it worked. Hey, it did work eventually. Thanks, man. Anyway. This is pretty simple collision detection, right? So point is a XY coordinate, remember? And these are all, I'm assuming, floats. So these are all these are all just numbers, saying where the square is and how wide it is, so you can measure and guess how wide it might be, or where it might be. If the x value is less than the left, if the y is above the top, hang on, explain this to me, Donut. How the bloody hell have you programmed this, brother? Documentation is blocked in Turkey. Well, I would have imagined that there would be no collision if the X is be before the left, because it's a rectangle. You could dare to explain. The bounds is the screen box. Ah, bam. So we're doing like, we're doing a collision from within, aren't we? Bam. 2D fuck. I've seen, I've seen brain fuck. Have you seen a uh, B fuck? It's a programming language where all the things are replaced with the, the uh, B movie script. So if you want to like, to find something, you have to write the entire B-movie script. It's quite terrifying. Alright, so, because this- yeah, Donut's right. The only stuff colliding in this view here- oh look, I've got two mice. The only stuff colliding here is the bean with the outside edge. We've got a box, we're holding our beans within a box, right? So we're checking for collision to make sure they don't exit the box, right? Like, look, it's like me and my little webcam here. Oh, that's actually a great one. So, if my Y starts to try and leave the box, or if my left tries to leave the box... Actually, this is a better example. So, if I'm going out the left here, it goes within this little point here. So, then if I'm above it, it means that I'm in, like, this sort of section. If I'm below it, I'm in this sort of section. Right, but you get the idea, lads. The beans are held captive. But you get the idea. So, literally, all this is doing... You can ignore, like, these bits for now, I guess. 
This is all the code actually is. It's checking to see if the left coordinate is beyond the left, or if, and if the Y is above the Y, or below the bottom, or to the right of the right, and above the bottom. Well, you, you get the idea, lads. So I guess it checks in that order. It checks left, right, up, down. Brainfuck is just esoteric enough to be fun for small things, but you can't get your head around 2D. Beanfuck. Get out of here, brother. Anyway, so that's all this is. It's very nice and simple. Returns are important because they return early and skip the rest of the function. Yeah, 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 it is, it is important, but as in, like, from a state of looking at the collision detection, this looks like a proper, like, little chunk of code. But you can boil it down to just a couple of checks, right? But yeah, so something important to remember is that return here immediately leaves, right? Anytime you see return, if this gets yoinked, if this gets executed, bam, no nothing else in this little method here gets executed. You're, you're out of there, brother. Get out of the method. Zoom out of there. So, if it checks left top and finds a collision, it none of this gets executed, right? So, saves a heck ton of time. There's no point in checking the rest of these, because you've already found a collision. It doesn't matter if it's colliding somewhere else somehow. Magically, it's in two bean spots at once. But the actual thing that's being returned can be sort of just looked at a little bit, a little bit simpler, maybe, if I, like, tab it out like this. Not that I'm going to keep it this way, because it's kind of, um, it's kind of messy, but... So it's returning a collision, a little struct from up there, I guess. The normal which was the opposite to where it collided from, which I guess is just square root of two, square root of two in this example. And the depth is literally just the left minus the X, the point, and the top minus the point. That makes a lot of sense. So the, 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 depth, of, the depth of penetration, friends, that can be calculated rather simply by just seeing how far beyond the point it's gotten, and it's just returning that. That's quite simple. But these returns are all different. So if it's returning out the left and up, it's returning the normal of square root two, square root two. If it's returning left and down the bottom, it's returning square root two minus two. If it's going right up, it's minus two, two. If it's going down right, it's minus two, minus two, and some bollocks. I don't know how you calculate that, honestly. Can you explain, or is that just, like, stuff you know? Like, why is it returning square root of two and all that? Is it just because you said it was a vector the size of one, right? Is it because it's an irrational number and we're never going to need it? Like, is it just used as, like, a point? Oh, no, we are using it. It's the length of a triangle where the hypotenuse is length 1. Okay. Okay, so it's where the hypotenuse is length 1. So that's how you're defining it as it's a line of 1, right? Yeah? Because you said that the normal is, is a length of 1. Pointing that way, brother. So if we're going out the top left, we're saying that it is this way and this way. So it's coming down. Going that way? I don't know. Whatever, brother. This is the stuff I'm sure you can also Google, but I think it's basic enough you probably could just memorize it. You think I remember how triangles work, though? That's a big yikes for me, brother. We'll be Googling a lot of shit, I think. And that's the fun of it. What are you typing? Okay. That's not even on the bean yet. All right. We move on to bean namespace. This is all the actual bean stuff. So remember this bean header from before? That described all these various hitboxes and physics and things? Oh, Tyrion! Hello! Thanks for the 16 months. Hello, hello. Wait. Thank you. Let's turn the music down just a tad. This is our bean stuff. Let's actually get onto the bean logic. The things that are going in the brains of these beans. Let's add a third bean. Let's add a few more beans to the mixture and see how they feel. Alright. What am I looking at? What am I looking at? What is this? This is the constructor. Your brain is waving. If you take a triangle with side lengths of one and cut it in half. Wait. Hey, brother. 
I wait. What's up, friend? Get out of here, Toby Boner. I already have my degree. Damn. Um, this is the constructor. So this is the thing that makes a bean. You want to make a bean? You yoink the constructor, right? You construct yourself a bean. Erecting a bean is what you should say whenever you call this. Right? You want to pass in a texture? You went a master degree? No, I'm never going to get a master's in programming. That seems like a massive waste of time and money. Uh, you get angles of 60, 30, and 90, and side lengths of 10.5 and square root 2. Okay. That's some maths bollocks. That's some, that's some real maths bollocks. Anyway, you want to make your bean? You pass in a texture, its first position, its first velocity, its first angle, and its first spinning -y stuff. Now, as to why it looks like this, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what this is. I don't know why it looks like this. It, you might have hacked. You might give a triangle with hypotenuse of length 2. Oh, okay. Yeah, is this Twilight Princess music? Shorthand for M sprite equals texture, but better. Ah, brothers. Exactly. Okay, okay. This is shorthand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were streaming Twilight Princess yesterday. We're going to be playing it again... Yeah, we're streaming more Twilight Princess tomorrow, chat. Brothers. Oh, so this is just... You can initialize the constant variables with a list. Initialize a list. Okay. So, if you remember, in bean.header, we have a bunch of variables here. Sprite, velocity, whatever. All the, all the initial things. Yeah? Yeah? Oh, yeah, here we go. Maybe? Here we go? I don't know. Here's our stuff, right? Here's our crap. We got our we got our sprites and all that. So here, this is just speeding our way through. Is this speeding your way through having to type out, you know, m sprite equals texture? Is that just having to skip having to do that? So you can just do it in a big list. Yes. Okay. So this stuff here looks a little weird, but that's because programmers like to save time. And I guess the more and more and more and more you do, the more and more you learn these little things that make things a bit faster. But then also, eventually you get to a point where your code is so like hard to read that like only master programmers can read it. Can you add 0.5f to the end of square root 2? Where? Star 0.5f? Oh, multiplied by it. That confused me. Like that. So you're doing half. That's a little lazy, isn't it, brother? Is this the square... Oh, but that makes sense. Square two half. Is there a refactor in this? Is that rename symbol? How do I, how do I refactor in this? Oh, it's probably just rename symbol. Cannot confirm reference. You sure you don't use the regular value? It looks like he's only using the square root of 2 in the collision, right? How do I do this? Like, yes? Okay, so I think I did that right. Let's go have a look. I didn't. I did that wrong. That's not how that works. No, that's not how that works. How do I refactor in this? So, uh, not in the other, the other program I used to program him, or many others, you can like right click, refactor, and it will change it everywhere in your code. Control F and find replace is not the same, though. I can do it, but that only works if it's in the same file, surely. But like, sure, that works as well, I guess. Oh, let's go two. Which one is that? Find and replace. Man, I sure love icons. There's some refactoring in this. You might need the C++ extension if you don't have it. Okay. 
You don't you don't know what you clicked onto, but you're weirdly captivated. Hey, Mojo. We're uh, we're reading through some files. Doesn't that sound like fun? How the heck do you find and replace in this, brother? Oh, we found it. Spirit to donut smells. Yeah, that sounds about right. How do I how do I how do I accept that? Donut, your program sucks. What am I doing, brother? You hit replace all. Of course. Alright, so now I've made it so every square root 2 is now called square root 2 donut smells. Right? You stop using VS code. I kind of liked Visual Studio. It made a lot of sense. I know it's slow, apparently. I, I didn't realize it was that slow. I thought it was slow with the Unreal Engine. You know? We should use Vim. I want to have something on the screen that's in 1080p. It's sunny. But your studio just works. Yeah, I always found it just sort of worked. And it only crashed like twice. A hundred times. Okay, anyway. Let's go back to our beaning, right? This is programmer wankoff about trying to make this more efficient. But all this really means is... Here's a little list, right? Here's here's our here's our constructor. This is to construct one bean, please, sir. And here's like a little list of things that you know. Just 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 do that quickly. You don't need to, you don't need to have any more than that, right? So we pass in all our nice textures and positions, and then quickly just go. Yeah, I'm just going to store those in my texture, my velocity, my angular velocity. Yeah. And uh, now he's got a big penis, because he's written that. Try right-clicking and press Format Document. Okay. Sure. Cool. Um, Alright, back to the constructor, right? Did it work? Oh, it lines your comments and stuff. Okay, cool. Anyway, we're inside here, brothers. We're having a little look. What goes on in the constructor? There is a... Presumably W is width, and H is height. Error type. Fantastic. Static cast float. Texture.getSize.x So c texture is like an actual, like, picture, whatever, that's being pushed in. We're storing the width of our beam as the actual width of the texture, I suppose. Next, if you have time to configure your Clang format file, there is a great online site for that. I will absolutely never understand in my life what configure your Clang format file means, and I don't want to know, honestly. That sounds terrifying. Donut made one for me. Well, there you go, brother. I don't... What does static cast mean? Because casting is when you turn, you like pretend one variable is another one, right? Or you, you like convert it. So I could cast this float as an integer, it would just knock off the, the dot and everything after it. So 1.1 would just become 1, I'm pretty sure. What does static cast? Or does it just mean I, does static cast is just the default cast? So instead of doing, you do, in a Java you do like float and then something that isn't a float and that that this little this little chunk here means that i'm casting this whatever it is could be anything brothers i'm casting that as a float so i can use this as if it is a number with a dot you know one point so that's is the c++ way of doing casting you have to type in static cast then what you want to cast it as and then the thing that you're casting okay Simple. Casting with float x is unsafe because it could cast anything to float even if it doesn't make sense. Static cast protects you from that. How does it protect you? Like, does it yell at you if you try and do it incorrectly? Maybe. Okay. What is int with a, um... With a little with a little asterisk next to it. In pointer. Ah, oh, right. Thank you. All right. Uh, anyway, whatever. 
M Sprite Set Origin. So I'm assuming this is our graphics library, our nice little uh, SFML. So it has a built-in few functions, presumably stuff like get function, get size. I don't think get size is something we have. Yeah, get size is part of the library. So we don't care what get size does, but it returns something, and we use that to make the width and the height. Okay. Presumably get size is actually a vector, because it has both an X and a Y, and those are the only two things that separate these. It protects you from some undefined behaviours. Okay. You can tell from SFML because the name was in camel case. If I'm honest, that's how I do everything. I like camel case. Um, although back in my back in my game maker days, I did all sorts. I did everything. I did everything from going like obj link for like object link to like o underscore link to like obj link to like o link. There's so much you can do, and none of it really matters as long as you keep it. Camel case is very Java. Okay. Hi, Tommy. You use snake case for variables, functions, camel case, classes, Pascal case. That's a. I think I'm meant to do that. That sounds about right. As long as you make it obvious what stuff is. I think I would like to use that sort of thing these days, though, yeah. Anyway. Is it called snake case? Because it's got like a little, like, sort of like, woo to it. Alright, anyway. So there's like some SFML stuff. We're setting the origin of the sprite to being the center. See? Width and height divided by two. That's quite simple. We're setting the position of the sprite on the screen to the initial position, which is passed in here as a vector. So that could be random. I'm assuming it's randomly generated, right? Oh no, it's based on the mouse actually. So if my mouse is here, it's set. Oh, that's a very lazy bean. It sets the initial position to you know, whatever that is, like, 400 by 10, or something. I don't know. The standard library, as well as Boost and a lot of big libraries, use Snake Case for everything for consistency, so you went for that. That's fine. That's fine. Anywho. So, set position, set rotation. I think rotation might be random, actually. I don't know if you can set rotation. Look at this lazy bean! Off they go on their own adventure. The whole world filing around them very quickly. This lazy bean trying their best. Anywho. Mass is set to 100. I, that's just like an arbitrary value, is it? Because this is all physics calculations. So this has a weight of 100. Is that an equivalent to something? Or is that just a number that you arbitrarily set? So if you wanted them to be lighter, you'd say it's like 50. Thick bean. 100 kilos. It could be 100 sneeze sizes though. Yeah, it's arbitrarily. Okay. So this is a hundred... A hundred donut units, I guess? Hang on, I'm choking. Okay, I'm not, I'm not choking. You can say it's kilograms, sure. Moment of inertia? Maths? Shit, I guess? It's, it's some... something? Multiplied by the mass. And also to do with the size of it. Sure. Use SR SL units, please. No, we'll use donut donuts. This is worth 100 donuts in weight. What size stones are you talking about, Colossus? Inverse mass. That's 1 divided by its mass. This is just physics. Physics crap, isn't it? Moment of inertia, moment of inertia. Adjust for less spin. Totally elastic collision. Ah. So restitution... If you set this to 0 0.5, is it more likely to stay against the edge? Is elastic means that it doesn't lose any inertia from smacking against a wall. If I remember something like that. You know C-sharp just doesn't speak to you at all. What doesn't speak to you about it? Is it just the, the way that keywords are written? Or what? Because I get confused, I got confused about like static cast, but now I know what it is. It's just the equivalent of doing bracket float close bracket, something, but a bit safer. You can change it to 0.5 and they'll get slower and slower with every bounce. Okay, yeah. So you see, for example, you see this excited bean, right? Yeah, you can see the excited bean. This bean is losing no velocity from hitting the side of the wall, so even though a collision is happening, it's just having a great time and zoom in. That's because invert... That's because uh, restitution is one. To totally elastic, he says. So what, when you do a collision, are you meant to, like, multiply its... 
you had to multiply that away somewhere or something. So if you set it to 0.5, they get slower and slower with every bounce. So they'd lose like something like half their speed every time they smacked a wall. So for example, you're making a golf game, and you wanted it to slow down and go po 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 po. You would set the restitution to something under one, I'm assuming. Anyway, corners. Is this the corners of the entire screen? No. Is this the corner of the? Oh, this is Mario. That confused me. I thought this was a Zelda playlist for a second. Or a Pokemon playlist. It's not. You can also see you arbitrarily increase the moment of inertia just to make them a lot less spinny. Yeah, you multiply it up. I see. Otherwise, would they spin out at the start? Maybe. Corners. Is this just the corners of the of the of this this bean here? This is basically its hitbox, as far as we're concerned, right? If we do it as a square. So it's uh, the top left, the width, and the top. No, wait, hang on, I've done that wrong. No, I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Top left, width and top. Bottom left. Bottom. Bottom. What? Wait, wait, what? Sorry? Top left. Zero, zero is top left. Width and zero is top right. Width and height is bottom right. Zero and height is down here. So it goes, it goes up left, up right, down right, down left. It's clockwise. Okay, that makes sense. That's how the that's how the corners are stored, and that has to stay constant, right? There's nothing that says it has to be done that way, just as long as you stick to it, right? Hmm. Okay. But this collision code doesn't matter yet, because the collision code just checks top left versus X or whatever. Yeah. Alright, cool. So this is the update physics thing. How much is this getting ran? Donut? Is update physics being ran as fast as it possibly can? Or is it being ran at an arbitrary speed? What font is this? I'm assuming this is just like some default system font, right? Or is this Liberation Mono Regular? Is that what I'm using? Is this not what it normally looks like? Two grapes, sir. The VS code is. Oh, you mean in the game? Right. Oh, this stuff there. I see. Hell yeah, brother. Alright, cool. Donut. Check run in main.c. Alright, main.c. What do you mean by check? Run. Oh, here we go. Okay, we're just going to quickly read this, because I think this will make everything else make a bit more sense. So, I'm going to ignore some... Actually, I'm not going to ignore this. Let's read through it. So, including some, some uh, library to do with time, I guess. Some time library. And float seconds... Equals float seconds are variable that you've stored somewhere. No? Maybe? Hmm. Quote literals means you can type one second instead of quote note standard quote seconds one. Okay. Sure. So this is just a library for mate to make his time easier. A one second. I see. Grapes are just large, tasty beans. Hell yeah. Okay. Using float seconds equals standard duration float. Explain this to me, brother. Using float seconds. What does that mean, brother? It's a type def. Oh, it's an aliasing. Oh, of course. Of course. Okay. Sure. 
I don't know if we're a different type. So float seconds is instead of having to type out this every time, you just type float seconds. Bro? Right? Beans are large tasty beans. Coffee is just bean juice. Yes. Okay, so this is just simplifying stuff for the programmer. Latest frame time is now. Cool. Latest FPS count time is that. So I guess that's just the starting point. Unless. Frame counter is zero. Sure. Zero unsigned, because it can't go into the negatives. Okay. So unsigned and signed in programming. You can sign a number, an integer, to say if it's negative or not, right? So if it's a signed integer, you can say minus 10 or 10. If it's unsigned, woof, it can only be 0 to whatever, infinity or whatever the maximum size of an integer is, like 100,000 or something. Yeah? So you use that because it gives you like one more bit. I guess of size, but also just to be sensible, right? Because you're never going to have negative frame rate. Probably one billion for 32 bit unsigned. Okay. What is unsigned by default in C++? Does it vary between compiling? Unsigned means the first 0 for 1 bit of the bit number can be double the usual amount. Okay. Yeah. Well, because every bit you add doubles the size of it that can be, right? Phrase between platform, most of the time it's 32 bit. Okay. Isn't- aren't you meant to use, like, uint32 or something to be explicit? Or do you think it doesn't really matter? We're not really going to be worrying about frame counter of 64 billion. Oh, I like this song. Oh, by the way, I've got my new, the new mouse pad from Tommy under here. It's so clean and lovely. It smells like new shoes. Most computers are 64 bit now. Hey, Poop Lake. Anyway, so, while running... Do all this. When it's finished running, return whatever the exit code is, which is zero or one, depending on if it ran properly, I assume. So while running, this constantly loops. Bam 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 Right? So if I did print hello, it would just go like a machine gun, like hello into the chat. New power pad, yeah, do you wanna see it? There's a single bit of dust on it. Look at this chat. I know, it's actually black, but look at this. I can like scrape my finger on it. No mark. It's brand new. Look at this. Do that with your own mouse pad or don't, it's gross. There's nothing on it. It is like discreet. It is so clean and new that I didn't put a glass on it the other day. Like a glass. I put it, I actually rolled it up and moved it. You have lost notes for LinkedIn's, can you please explain? A linked list, right? This little, this little, this little friendly boy here. This is my element. He has his value here, and a pointer to the next value. Here's his friend, right? This value points to this friend. His value is here, and his pointer to his next friend, and it just goes on and on and on. So it's just like little boxes that point to the next thing in the list, and the next thing in the list, and the next thing into the list. Yeah. Is that is that all right, or do you want me to? Do you want me or chat to explain it more? Link lists are really cool. The downside is if you want to remove something from a linked list, you have to like move instead of point to his friend, you have to point to his friend's friend. So essentially cut out that element. Which is a bit of a pain, honestly. Does it have the new China factory mousepad smell as well? No, it just smell yeah, it's just a chain. It's just a chain. It smells really nice. It's just like rubber, you know, like new like new shoes, new boots. I think lists don't have random access. You can't say I want the sixth element. You have to iterate from one end to get to it. Yeah, because you don't know. You don't know where in memory that thing is stored. The tenth element could be on some other bloody hard drive. Who knows? It could be stored on like a disk, plugged into a USB, plugged into someone's NAS. So you just say, all right, first show me second, second show me third, blah 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 blah. Show me sixth, please, fifth. They're kind of cool. Can you do nested dictionaries? The, you need to remind me on all this, like, year one uni stuff. I do not remember. I'm sure they're all very useful things, but if I'm honest, I just use the equivalent of array list as much as I can. I, I like to use maps, actually. I use heckin' 
constantly. Hash maps. Hash set. Hash. So good. Hash set and hash map is like the best thing in programming when you figure it when you figure out it exists. So you know how in an array, so you have an array of a hundred things, and you sort of know what's in it. Well, you know exactly what's in it, even. You don't want to have to like zoom through it to check if it exists, right? You don't have to go through every single thing in the array to find a slot to put something in or take it out or see if it exists. Imagine if just by knowing that thing exists, you can instantly check if it's there or not. Such is a hash set. Hash sets are so cool. C++ or Python? It depends what you mean by your opinion. I think C++ is cooler. Hash map is a standard unordered map in C++. It's useful, so it might be good to remember. Okay. So anyway, so the, my example is, um, say for example, how do I do this without being confusing? Say you have in your brain knowledge of like a hundred names of colors, like red, blue, yellow, okra, gold, right? And you've got a list here. You got a, you got yourself a hash set, sort of like an array. You want to know if you know your painting set includes that colour, instead of looking at every single jar of paint individually, you just go, bam, this is where gold would be, it's where it has to be if there's gold, it can't go anywhere else, it's right there, and you can go, is it there? No. Is it there? Yes. Or if you want to add it, you go, I have gold, bam, put it straight into splot. Do you want to take gold out? Bam, move it out. So good, instead of going, oh, does it go here, here, here? Such as a hash set. Highly recommend practicing. Is QCK the mouse pad to get, or does it not really matter? I said QCK is the best mouse pad to get, and Tomu yelled at me and said that it matters what kind of... Oh, it's got a weave on it. Like, who cares, alright? QCK, Steel Series QCK, they perfected the mouse pad ten years ago. It is nice. Name one blue food. The blood of the royal family. We move onwards. D-Lang is the superior language. Fantastic. Array elements are contagious, they're always adjacent. In a what? Anyway, mouthwash. Yeah, Lucasade. All these things. Not really Cyan, but it's close. That is pretty close. Anyway, lads, we zoom forwards. We're still in the run, alright? So it's running, it's zooming while it's running. It's checking the current time. It's now. The current time is now. The delta time is, uh, this is what you. Okay, so, chat. Take your, this is time to take your glasses off. You know how in Skyrim, if you change the frame rate, it fucks up all the physics? It's because. The game is expected to run at like a constant 60 FPS or whatever, and it assumes there's 60 checks of physics per second, right? That's really dumb and stupid. Same thing with Nuclear Throne, but in Game Maker, the default setting is to tie the physics to the frame rate. By doing this with Delta Time, you can separate the frame rate from the physics calculation. So the physics is just going as fast as the computer can do it, right? Like. Pfft. The faster the computer, presumably the more efficient, or they are, the more close to reality the physics is, right? So if you're using an old toaster, you know, it might actually only check every now and then. And when, you come to, when it comes to drawing, you just pull out whatever happens to be the physics at that time. You take, you know, you've got your washing machine here, washing your clothes as quickly as possible. So, hello, it's me. I'm here to draw the frame. Boop. Oh, this is the frame, I guess. Whatever. I draw that. Ah, oh, next frame, please. Well, you get the idea, brothers. Such is the magic of delta time. Yeah? And that's what we want. Current time is objectively the time now on the PC. It's like this instant. Right? Delta time, I think, is the time you want to use with physics. I actually don't remember. But that's the idea, right? Wasn't 76 based on it? Who doesn't love Chrono? Standard chrono duration cast, standard chrono duration floats, delta time, he doesn't love chrono. Well, you see, he's done the namespacing. He's done aliasing. He's done all of it. I think that's right. Time.header. Anyway. So this is now. Delta time is now minus whenever the last frame was drawn. Yeah. The current time in seconds, whatever. Current time count, whatever. Like, we don't who cares, right? It's just these two we really want. Yeah? The literal time now? And I punch my microphone? And the time since the last frame. What are you making? Hello, Kalekul. What are you making? Nothing whatsoever. 
I'm reading through some example code that Donut sent me to generate beans on screen, and then once I've got my head around it, I'm going to try and make a Toho plane. Anyway, so while it's running and it's zooming, it's checking, it's, it's updating the times, it's doing all that. GLGL, how are you doing, my friend? Are you are you keeping alive? I haven't seen you for a hot moment. Making music for it as well. It's just a, it's just a experimentation learning phase right now, so I'm not taking anything too seriously. We can. I can get a... Oh god. What was the one the cave story guy wrote? I don't remember. Or we could we could use... Um... I don't remember the names of the programs I used to use. There was one that let you make Famitracker? We could use Famitracker Brothers. Make NES music. No. I don't know. The, the cave story one, people thought he used Famitracker, but he actually made his own program. Garage Band, no brother. Cave Story Music Toho, exactly brother. Woho, OST. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. I could just like make beatboxing for it. Make it run on Linux and you'll play it. Brother, it will run on Linux. Such is the magic of the SFML library, pr um, compiled in CMake. Bam, just for you, my friend, Kyle Lekul. You can run it. Well, that's the idea, right? Donut, yeah? Actually, this is a serious question, Donut. How the hell do I distribute anything I've made in this? Is there like a thing I can download that turns it into Linux, Windows, Mac files that they can use? Do I, is there a thing within here that I compile it to a thing that they can just run? Like, presumably, I don't want everyone who wants to play the game to have to set up Visual Studio and the compiler and CMake and all this crap, right? Hum it so all the world, so you can map the entire Woho OST. Hell yeah, brother. Visual Studio is a thing that you compile for Linux nowadays. You can install a cross compiler to tell people to compile the program. But for example, to keep it simple, if I wanted to make a Windows executable, is that possible? Can I compile this as an EXE and then just send the EXE out? Sure, might, people might be able to decompile it, whatever, but who cares? Can I just do that? Or I don't know, what would you use on Linux? Because you don't use EXEs. It shows you how little I know about the world. Currently it's an EXE, yeah. If you support Windows, just compile in release mode and send people the EXE and DLL files. Not EXE. Linux doesn't have extensions. Oh yeah. Well, I guess Linux users, you can just do your own thing, I suppose. And the images and stuff. You wouldn't have to compile Doom. It's called ELF. I can show you how to do it when you get to that point. Okay, cool. Oof, we move on. If delta time seconds count is larger than the minimum delta time, minimum delta time being zero, does that ever get updated? Oh, okay. One divided by max FPS. Okay, so this decides how often to draw, right? Donut? So this is trying to see if the amount of... It currently waits for zero seconds or zero milliseconds, yeah. So okay, so this was back to the washing machine thing. This is like the pause between me taking stuff out, right? Because I'm not drawing a frame every single time it's generated. That would be extremely stupid. So... What I'm doing is I'm checking to see... How long has it been since I last yoinked a sock out of the washing machine? Has it been one divided by the max frame rate? What is the max frame rate? Is that a thing? Is that just like a value you have somewhere? I have no idea. Oh, set max FPS. Is that written somewhere? Options max FPS. It's zero by default. So by default, it does generate the frames as fast as it can. But, okay. Okay, I see. I see. I see. I see. Where am I looking? Main game. Let's go back. Go back to where we were. Okay, so minimum delta time is the minimum wait before we can start drawing a frame. And it's minimum and not just time to draw at. Because if you said, I only want to draw it every one second exactly, there might not be a frame available on that exact element of time. You know, it might be like do, 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 do. So it would never get drawn. So you just say, is it above this? So you go do, 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 ah, I am above this value here. Draw the frame. Bam. Do do whatever. I see. Okay. So, if we are ready to draw stuff, 
Right? So, while running, if we're ready to draw stuff, the latest frame time is now, because we've just drawn a frame. This is, this is our mark zero. Adding onto the frame counter, another frame has been drawn, I suppose. Is it nice? Is it is it good to have that constantly going up? How big is that frame counter? Does that mean the game will eventually crash if you just leave it running? Don't know. It gets reset every second. Oh, okay. Never mind then. Frame counter equals zero. Are you alright? It just keeps going. Okay. That makes a lot of sense then. So, if the current time minus the latest frame time is larger than a second, Is that just update this counter every second? That's how it looks, right? So, if this instant right now is minus the last frame, whenever that was drawn, was at least a second ago, i.e. every second, right? Basically, every second. Or, if, it take, if you have a, such a bad frame rate that every frame is being drawn every minute or whatever, just the next frame, as long as it's after a second, the latest count time is now, so this is just for drawing the frame rate on screen. Set the string to... Oh, this is how you're setting the string, is it? Thumped format. Oh, actually, that's not too hard to look at. Okay, so there's a bazillion different ways to format strings in programming, and everyone, everyone has their own favourite one, right? And then some people don't, some people don't care, and I'm one of those people. This looks like a nice way to do it. So it's drawing FPS, something hurts. And then presumably anything after this little comma here fills in that gap. Is it in order? So if I had multiple of these, like this, would these uh, fill in in this order? So it would be like frame counter goes in there, acid goes in there, acid goes in there, fridge goes in there. Yeah, you can do exactly that. That's terrific. I love it. So sometimes I get confused because it like makes you have to remember things like, 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 like that or something. I, I don't remember what it is. But you have to like remember like a particular letter that corresponds to the type. And then out here have like some like string blah. Hello. And then that would get filled in there. I don't know. Oh, old printer. That's it. It's a, uh, is it percentage sign? Yeah, you see I never use it because it confuses me a bit. So that is old school print F. ZU for size T. Yeah. All right, well that's not, anyway, whatever, that stuff sucks. So I'm glad, is this new or has this been around for like donkey's years? That's nice. So just put something in here, just slot it in there. It stops you from having to do like this, which you do in Java sometimes, where you go like this, you add that in the middle and then you do a little plus and then you finish it off like that, you know? Honestly, this is what I just do most of the time because it makes a lot of sense, but it does look really messy. It makes it hard to format the whole string at once. So this is just how it should look. Throw whatever in there. Simple. FMT is an external library, but it'll be implemented in C++ this year. Oh, is this the... This is the thing you mentioned before, right? It's pretty new. It's getting standardized for C++ 20. Okay. I like it. Frame counter is zero. Okay, so it resets the frame counter. Oh, I see. It's the number of frames... <sighs> makes a lot of sense, brother. So... Is this the frames per second? I'm an idiot. That was like, why is it a second? Frames per second is literally the frames per second. My god. <sighs> Every second, write how many frames have happened in the last second. Set that back to zero. <coughs> you know what I mean, lads? Like, <coughs> by the way, my like main light or something. I'm gonna turn this off. I have a good question then. How do things update faster than that? Is it just a guess? Like if you update the FPS counter every tenth of a second, do you just times the number by ten and just assume that's the frame rate? Exclamation point at the start to put quotes in the string. That's pretty neat. I'm getting a reminder to pay my cancel tax even though I've already done it. Get out of here, brothers. Alright. So we've got the frame counter. Handle events, update, draw, whatever. Okay. I have an idea of it now. 
You measure the time of one display one divided by time as the FPS you want. I see. Then it will update every frame. Intro. Back to B. Alright, we're coming back to B. How often is update physics ran? I have no idea, actually. Handle events. Oh, game update. Oh, in here. I see, I see. So physics is only calculated to the frame counter. So currently, there is no... There is no uh, FPS limiter. There is no cap. It's not capped at 30 frames. So it literally updates the physics as fast as it possibly could. You might want to limit it so it doesn't use the CPU. That's why games will limit it at like 300 or something. Because right now it would de probably demolish your CPU. But it does also mean it's running as fast as it possibly could. Does this mean my CPU is running at 100% just to run this program? That seems pretty likely. I might do that. Hang on. Let's close Bean. Oh, if I close it, it actually gets rid of the window. Sick. So how did you say I do this? You go into Terminal. And then what do I do? Control Shift Escape. Oh, that doesn't work on my keyboard for some reason. I don't know why. My old keyboard's Control Shift Escape always worked. I actually have to do Control Shift Control Delete again. It's wild. Uh, performance. Oh no, my CPU wasn't being used 100%. For some reason. I guess Windows might be limiting it. Uh, where am I looking? Donut, explain to me, brother. In terminal down here, you said I can type in custom stuff? Is it just max FPS... 300? No. Donut wrote this, brothers. How do I, how do, I do this, friend? Limit just the physics frame rate to 60 hertz called the tick rate and have it draw every frame by interpolating the position. Yeah, that's what I was trying to talk about like a while ago. Where you have uh, the, the draw separated from the uh, the physics. After you pass that, you pass that, you call the executable. I'll say, what's the executable called though? Build, this is a pain. Build bin debug woolen.exe Okay, so this runs it with a maximum FPS of 60. You see that FPS being like a nice solid fit 60? Mario Galaxy 1 music. Is that what this is? So you see how it never goes above 60 frames? That's because we have an hour of a frame rate limiter, I guess. Does it have a, something to stop it from breaking your computer? Or does it just constantly fill the screen with beams? Okay. So, Donut. I think I will do that. I, th I, I like the idea of the physics being ran as quickly as possible. Oh, sorry. The physics being set to some, like, as fast as possible realistic. Like 128 tick rate or whatever. Or 64. It runs out of memory, it'll crash. It's storyboard music. Lazy Bean is gone. We can have, we can try and find another one. Lazy Bean had a friend. Alright, these are some Lazy Beans. They're doing their own thing. Let them do their own thing now, brothers. I like that this works, by the way, with like, the window capture. I don't actually have to do anything. I like the idea of separating the, uh, the physics from something else. You interpolate with a tick rate and then still draw every frame I'm interpolating the position between the last two frames, see still smooth motion. You managed one million beans before, so it should be fine. You understand that I'm capturing with OBS though, so my CPU might be used by something else. Anyway, whatever. Let's go back to Bean. In update physics, which currently happens every 16.6 milliseconds or whatever, because it's 60 frame rate. We have delta time, which is... Well, actually, that's not where I want to be. I want to see where this is being called from. How do I do that, brother? Uh, help. <laughs> what? How much dedicated WAM do you need? You can do find all references. Find all references. Oh, no results. Fantastic. Do I need to hold it like this? No results. What? Do you not use this? 
It might be a bit dumb. This is definitely being used, right? In like game handle of update. So for every bean in our bean list, update their physics with the current delta time and bounds of the screen. Delta time is passed in here as the frame delta time seconds count. Delta time seconds dot count. Donut. Is this thing here just some useless value? And the count thing here what we're actually using? It's just a float. Count is a float. What does the seconds? Does this have other like crap to do on it? Like what is get out of here. What other things can you do with this? Min max zero. Whatever. Anyway. So our bean. They currently have been passed. Delta time seconds count. Duration cast. So what are they being passed, sorry? Count is to convert from an abstract seconds to an actual float. I see. So we're passing in the amount of time since the last update. I think. Does that sound about right? That sounds about right, right? So you have your update here, your update here, and I know this gap. Maybe? Yeah? Like I know the gap between these two updates. I think that's what that is. Update, update physics. Yes, that's right. Okay, terrific. So up here we have time since last update. Delta time. I don't... Why is it called delta time? Everyone calls it delta time. Is it like an actual mathsy thing? Hey, Vivera. And we have the entire screen to use as a hitbox, right? Because it bounces against the edge. So every time we update the physics, we move the sprite based on its velocity multiplied by the amount of time. So if, like... Two seconds have passed because our computer's crap. It will still move the same amount of distance as if someone has an ultra supercomputer and calculates this like instantly. Because it'll just multiply it by 0 0.001 seconds versus two seconds. So you'll still hopefully get to the same point. Delta team is relative between two states. Okay. Jurgen lost its sword. Oh yeah, Vivran, we did like a massive purge of uh, mods the other month, the other week. I don't know. How are you doing, man? Anyway, um, so, every time we update, we move it a little bit, based on its velocity, and we rotate it based on how it's already rotating, multiplied by a special number that lets you convert it into radians, multiplied by delta time. So it'll always rotate the same amount, no matter how jittery the frame rate is. You know, the frame rate is just how often we can look through the window into the physics engine. Basically, right? Hello, Vivet. Via Ravarian? Wait, wait. Via Ravarian? Vi. V. Rarivan. Riven? Viravarivan. Hello, Viv. Your tiredness music is making you sleepy. Hell yeah. It converts from radians to degrees, so the name's a bit misleading. Oh, it's radians to degrees. Okay. Search, please. So that program, now that makes more sense, right, brothers? Lazy beans are trying their best. You can click on the extensions tab in the vertical thing there. What do you want me to try and get? I've got the reload enable required. How long have you been coding? Uh, I'm 22, so... I don't know. I probably started when I was like 7 or 8, is that what I said? I can probably find. When was Game Maker Six? Maybe it was. Maybe maybe I was older than that. Game Maker Six came out in two thousand four, so that was when I was six. So I probably was like seven or eight when I first started. Maybe even longer. That's long. Yeah, but like, it's not like I've spent the time doing anything exciting. Like I programmed like nuts for years when I was young, and I didn't do much. And then college and uni, obviously, degree was in computer science. Like, bam, 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 bam. and now I've just worked. You know, nearly a year. So a little while. Yet, I still know so little. Isn't it wonderful? Definitely, like, more than half my life I've been staring at code, and I still have no idea what half these things do. It's fantastic. 
Yeah, chat, you come through. There's always new things to learn. There's always new things to learn. It's fun. This, you know what? The fun with either programming is the fun people must have with League of Legends, right? Where they have all these heroes to learn and all their interactions and the perfect upgrade paths and how to min-max. It's the same sort of thing with this, right? Can you draw a doodle using only SFML shapes? <sighs> Thanks. Maybe Donut. That's that's a, that's a 69, 69, 6 more he he taking there, though. I can try. That is a lot of points. Like Team Fortress? TF2 is way less complex than like a MOBA. TF2 is pretty much just like point and click. Like if you can play Scout pretty well, you can play Pyro Engine Engineer pretty much the same. You know? People who play League have, don't have fun with it. You've been playing it for eight years and most of the time you're not having fun. Yes, but I've played it for zero to four hours and I enjoyed it. So, you know? I, was, I had the trouble where I streamed it yesterday for the first time. We were going to play like a new eSport game every week. I think it was Lindley's idea. I think I keep saying that. Member of chat, Lindley, I think suggested the, that. But um, my friends have been playing League lately, so I thought that'd be a fun like first week of trying this. So we just played it with them. A little five stack, unranked, sort of. I had a lot of fun. Tried like new heroes every time. A nice doodle for a Woho boss will do. Hell yeah, brother. But I enjoyed it. It was just us and our friends kind of having fun. In rank high elos, it's toxic and frustrating to play. I can imagine, but as I have no intention to play rank to a high ELOs, I don't really mind. I'm just kind of enjoying it right now. After a thousand hours of TF2, you're starting to think it's simple. I'm back after like 7,000. Like it's, there's a lot of TF2, there's more TF2 than you can get in like at least 3,000 hours. There is, there's quite a lot. Like there, there's a lot. It's just not quite a MOBA. Because MOBA's more like super chess, right? TF2 is a simple game with a lot of depth, yeah. Like, at its core, every class in TF2 is W, A, S, and D, move mouse, click, maybe press a button and click, right? But there's loads of depth to fast compositions, loadouts, maps, how you play the maps, how you play versus players, aiming as like a whole thing, movement is a whole thing, rocket jumping, surfing, teabagging most efficiently. How to work with particular people on teams and move up the ladder, play different. There's, there's loads. There's like, there's at least a good like five, six, seven, eight thousand hours. But like, I think League is one of those games where like you have to spend twenty thousand hours to at least have like fifty hours in each character or something. If I said I have fifty hours in Scout and ten thousand hours in TF2, you'd be like, what are you doing, brother? What language are you learning? You're trying to learn code and you're because you're really into it, but you haven't played League anymore. Your rank is decaying already. Yeah, what are you learning? Anyway, update physics. We're moving. We're rotating. We have a variable here. We have a bunch of variables here, even. Put a little line in there. Collision point count. Normal sum. Penetration sum. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Point sum. So these just these are just storing the current physics thing. Sure, I guess. These are just a bunch of x y coordinates, and a float zero. Four corner, right? Transformed corners. That's a thing we'll look at later. But for every corner, I'm assuming, right? So this is going four times. You have 6,000 hours and there's still so much for you to learn and improve on. You have 30 hours on NG and over 2,300 hours. Just looking at like over 2,300 hours as being like a big thing is frightening to me. That's like, that's like you haven't even considered starting leaving Dust Bowl yet, brother. What you're doing with this code, what does it all mean? Uh, we're just reading through it. Donut wrote as an example code, and we're just we're just reading. We're just zooming. We're having a look. We're trying to explain what everything does, and meanwhile, I'm trying to relearn how C++ works. You're always welcome to go and watch like the other two hours of the VOD, but the TLDR is that there is a main file that starts the game. In the game, there is a loop up here at the top that constantly runs the game. Bam, 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 bam. And there is a bean on the screen. Many beans. Many beans. They have all sorts of things they know, like how they're rotating and where they're going. Well, they don't know where they're going, but they know the direction at least. Like this bean here has no idea that they're going to hit the floor. All they know is that they're going down and wham bam, off they go. And that update there is happening at 60 hertz. We've just capped it so my CPU doesn't die. Every 16.6 .6 milliseconds or whatever, it's calculating. Bam. This is a good song. 
And now we're in that. We're looking in the physics now. So every single time update the physics. Yeah, we're moving, we're rotating. For every corner, we're trying to see if there's a collision. If there is a collision, we this is where we are now, actually. How do they figure out the momentum? We'll get there. We'll get there, brother. Collision point count. So for collision in find collision for corner. So here, we're looping through all four corners. Right? One, two, three, four. This will get round four times. So we could technically do like one, two, three, four. And just pass in each corner individually, like one, two, three, four. But that's stupid. So this is all in a four loop. For every corner, if there is a collision, we store it here. We'll say that there's been a collision, plus one. If there's already been one, there'll be two, whatever. Adding onto a counter. Collision normal sum equals collisions normal. Penetration sum equals collisions penetration. Sum plus equals corner. So what we're doing here is we're checking over all the corners. We're checking to see if there was a collision and we're storing that, right? We're storing that, brother. And the idea, I'm assuming, is that if there's multiple collisions, say if we're touching the corner on the same frame, you want to bounce that way, not that way. Because if you only calculated for one collision, you'd only, only ever bounce on the horizontal or the vertical. But because you're going across all the corners, you could theoretically have a collision from all angles, and you would calculate the opposite to go. So this beam here, going up, going down, going left, going right. That's the idea, right? This beam here, going down, going up. That's what's happening here. We're figuring out where to go, the normal being the opposite direction. So he's going down, the normal will be up. Yeah? Going left, the normal is right, the normal is down, etc. And the penetration is how far it's going in. I'm assuming that's a calculation to mean that if it's going so damn fast that it somehow goes through a wall, it makes sure to pull it out by that amount and then keep going. I don't know. I'm not entirely sure what that's for. We'll find out, though. Sum plus equals corner. I, I don't know the maths here, but I think that's what the description is. And teach people for 6,000 each. Man, my uni was at the end was nine and a half grand a year in tuition. Can you can you believe that? Like, oh, Pikmin maybe. Wait, no, this isn't Pikmin. What is this? Where are we in this? One hour and five minutes. Oh, it's the title. Th this is Pikmin three apparently. Okay. You get money for going to uni. Are you? A oh wait, yeah, you're a European man. Make your own language, call it Wulang. That would be hell. Hell yeah, brother. Backwards long jump. Alright, anyway. We're still in the physics update. If... Collision coin... Okay. Why are you storing po collision point count as a float, brother? If you're only ever adding to it. Plus plus means plus one. It's just shorthand. It saves time. It's a float because it divides a float later. Okay. So for, this is a float because it's used later in some maths. Oof, maths. Are you scared? I'm very frightened. So if there's been any collisions, it's just zero if there's not been a collision because this will have never been incremented. Collision, increment. No collision, skip it, whatever. So if there's been any collisions, we grab the center of mass, boop, right in the middle. Oh, you've, you, you've been naming these as letters, brother. N equals normalized, normal sum. So this is... Is this the... This is the physics bullshit you have to look up in a book. Okay. I'm going to quickly look over it, but don't... We don't care about this. This is black magic, apparently. So yeah. In programming, or if you ever look at a source code of a game, you'll find stuff like this and be like, how the hell did the programmer know this? The answer is either they're very smart, or they had a book or a Wikipedia page open and just translated it from Wikipedia notes into stuff. So yeah? I don't know how this works. You want to know the basic on fun. Coding is not complicated. The coding part here is turning some like book into this, right? So constant means it doesn't change. Auto means we're using C++. So we just let them figure it out. If we're using another language, we'd have to write like auto like Auto int, auto float, whatever. But the magic of C++ lets you write auto. So a constant variable 
called center of mass, called n, called p, called r, called angular amount, whatever, is get position of the sprite, is some maths, is some maths, is the center of mass, equals something, equals something. That's all the code is, right? You're giving away the secret the programmers. That's all this is. Like the programming aspect of ju is just writing keywords to calculate something, right? I don't care what orthogonal R means. Donut special maths book. The guy who wrote that with his like PhD in maths knows what that means. Some of this stuff you can write yourself, but like, who cares? All right, Google it. Someone's already figured this stuff out. Just copy their work. Easy work. The end result of this is just to calculate the impulse of a collision. Okay, so... Where we be going, boys? Alright? That's all this does. If there's a collision, figure out which bounce to do. Right? This boy here, it's just figuring out this moment here. Bam. That moment. Bam. That moment. And apply it. Does that include rotating? I have no idea, brother. It's just, it doesn't matter. I guess we use that at some point. It includes rotating too. Okay. Angular amount. Okay. So yeah, this takes in our current speed, our current rotation, how fast we're rotating, or how fast we're building up, or whatever. Fast we're zooming, smack into a wall. What happens here, brother? This figures it out. It goes, ah, oh, you're rotating left, bap into the wall. You're now going like that, maybe. So yeah, if you're a physics nerd, you can read this. I'm not going to bother reading it, because it doesn't matter. I'm going to hide it, because it frightens me. See? Away it goes. The magic of programming. That method does something, or that bit there does something. I don't care what it does, as long as it does it. Alright? You can just hide it and pretend it doesn't exist. It's wonderful. So that's the hard stuff, I think. The rest of this is pretty simple. It's just more maths crap. So the bean also has a hitbox. All it does is return the bounds of the sprite. It doesn't matter. It returns the hitbox. Velocity returns the velocity in such a way that you can't change it. Right? Set velocity. You're using getters and setters. You're more jarbery than I thought, young donut biking chap. Why you do this, brother? Is it to be a proper programmer? I bet it is, isn't it? You don't just want to do m velocity plus m velocity. You want to do set velocity, blah, 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 or whatever. Anyway, these are all things to fiddle with what the beam knows. So the beam knows its speed and angle or whatever. Set velocity sets its own velocity to the thing that we pass in. Now you can change it even if the function is const. This returns a float, not the reference, so you can only read it. This is basically a read-only value then. This is a void set. The constant at the end means the function cannot change any member variables. Yeah, no, but I mean the reason that you're just you're, the reason that you're doing velocity and set velocity instead of just not having them and just typing that, you know, or that. Is that just to do things properly? Because surely this isn't actually needed. It's just there to be proper, right? Yeah. Are you coding, son? I'm coding. Hey, brother. The only use of code fold is to hide the code that intimidates you. Exactly. Are you scared by something? Bam. If there's a collision... Eh. Yeah, using getters and setters because it encapsulates the physics a bit better. Okay. So if all this crap here is looks like confusing and extra, it's because it is. It, it's not necessary, but in order to be sensible so the other programmers like you, you do this. Right? A big thing about programming is making other people think you're good at it or showing off how good you're at it, so they know how good you are. Do you want the song? So if you're using encapsulation, you know, you're hiding stuff away. People like that. Some people don't. Some people like that. When the pro gets big enough, stuff like this does matter. Yeah. So even though this is an example code and it looks kind of pointless, once there's like a zillion things to look through, it might be quite nice just to go, okay, can I just set the velocity? Like, I don't care what you do in the back end, just set it to two. And then on the back end, you might decide, ah, oh, every time I set velocity, I'm going to draw the screen again or something. You'd hide that away. But the person asking to set the velocity doesn't even know. Secret. Hidden away. You know, save those government secrets and send it off to the, the Chinese or something. In fact, you should be drinking coffee while watching this. It helps. Anyway, all this stuff does is set a variable 
or get a variable, right? See this? This returns a vector. Yeah? An x and a y coordinate. Ah. To call it, you do velocity. Ah. Constant means I can't modify. This method here, or someone calling it, doesn't modify. It just returns it. Just read only. Send out the velocity as a vector. You're cosy. You're doing okay. I had some break. Might sleep later. Hell yeah. All right. That's all this does. That's literally all this stuff does. Is it saves, mod oh, so it modifies or returns. Transformed corners is something I want to see. I'm going to move this down here because it's slightly different to the other things. So like, these are all just setters and getters or whatever. You can tell because they're purple. Sure. Transformed corners. This returns an array of vectors. Four, to be ex to be exact. I.e. top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. On my webcam, yeah? So this returns a little group of X and Y coordinates. It's called transformed corners. And it doesn't change anything. It just returns stuff. So it's called transform. It's not because it grabs it. It doesn't because it grabs it and then fiddles with it, you know? It just grabs it, does some calculations, and returns those calculations, I'm assuming. Right? It basically moves all the corners to where they're actually on the screen instead of on the sprite. That makes sense. So corners... It's just making the array. Here's our array to store the corners in. Standard transform is a C++ library. So that's, that's included at the top, I think. Somewhere. Standard transform. So that's an algorithm built into C++ that you want to include. It grabs the beginning, the end, beginning, the end, fucks them up together and returns where they are on the screen. Sure, brother. Is this a is this a lambda, brother? Is this one of those old lambdas I've heard so much about? Oh, hey, Orichal. Hey, brother. You need to sleep, RNG. Is, that, is, this, is this one of those little men? That's a lambda. That's a bloody lambda, brothers. What's a lambda? That's a bloody good question. It's it's a little secret hidden boy within the larger boy, right? You see how there's a return here? Whoa, brother. Why is there a return here? Surely that'll cut out of this whole method, right? Return ignores the whole thing, right? No, brother. It's because it's within a lambda, brother. It's a function without a name, yeah. So this whole thing here is a function. It's called transformed corners. This little bit here is a function without a name. You don't, you can't call it from somewhere else. Unless you can, I don't know about that. But it's a secret anonymous function. Yeah, it likes its privacy, right? Hi, brothers. Your BSISP decided your, fat, your flat isn't fiber compatible. No Wi-Fi for you, what? I thought you were trying to get, was that the stable internet you were trying to get? What are you going to do? The idea is you send that little function to transform so that you can use it. Can you explain the lingo here? What is square brackets with an ampersand in the middle? Is that how you declare it being a lambda? Back to data for you. Christ, Horacho. Is there literally nothing you can do short of moving house? When are you going to go and do more masters-y things in the UK or something? Transform takes the function you give it and applies it to everything in the range and puts the result in another range. Okay, so transform is this whole thing. With, with this whole section here is being passed into the C++ transform. The brackets with the ampersand means to capture all the outside variables by reference. Okay. So it's not going to fuck with them. It's just grabbing a reference of them. You go into the library, you're making a copy of it, right? That's what we're doing? Yeah? So here, transformed corners... We don't need to pass anything in because Bean Bean knows his corners. Bean stores them. This is a this is a method within Bean, right? Corners are stored somewhere in here, maybe. Here. So it, there's nothing actually gets passed into this method. You could think, oh, don't you have to pass in the corners? No, no problem. So you can access sprite within the lambda. I see. I see, brother. Capture list arguments parameters function body. If you didn't put an ampersand, it wouldn't be able to access m sprite. Right. Can you explain why? M sprite is just here. It's just a sprite. Is it just so you can pass 
Oh, hang on. Yeah, you're not passing the sprite in. You're just assuming you already have access to it. By default, it's as if you've just written the function out of the middle of nowhere, unrelated to Bean entirely. Okay. Could you theoretically not use the ampersand and pass in the sprite here? Or could you do M sprite? Whatever, M sprite. Does that work? Tell us. You have an idea what's going on. But the bean, so it's staying. Yeah, but the transform only gives the function to each item in the range. The transform only gives the function to each item in the range. What does that mean? The stream has burned out your brain cells in the five minutes you've been here. Hey, brother. Not with that lambda. Transform deals with that entirely. Okay. There's some bollocks going on here. There's some spooky voodoo magic. All right. All we need to really know is that the corners of the sprite, work, you know, wherever they are contained, are being shown to the entire screen, and we're getting the like, we're getting the objective coordinate. So this one's at you know, 400 by 20 pixels, right? And oh, hello. Your master's been delayed because of the quarantine and the fact you got a healthcare job. That's quite a, it's quite a, quite an oh heck from me, brother. M corners is a bunch of vectors, so transform gives the function each vector. No spray. Hi, brother. You transform, you apply the transform on an array of coordinates, and transform cells pass to it with a single element. All right, that sounds very confusing, brothers. We're telling C++ to transform stuff and store it in this array and then return that array. What we're transforming is my corners and then the corners of the whole screen? No. No, we're not. Okay. We're, are we putting them in begin and end? That's the... Is that the actual array start and at finish? Is that what we're doing? Friends. So, we, so we're starting, say, at zero and then ending at... Three or four, whatever. End is probably three, right? There's four elements in our array. There's four corners, brothers. Are we starting at zero and ending at four? And starting at zero or something? Or are we just iterating over everything between these? Or, or what? What's going on here, friends? How fun it Does that make sense? That's how it seems to me, right? Is there a way to see what transform officially does? Zero to three. Is it a corner, an array, or a vector? Transform is equivalent to, for each thing in the corner, do a function on it. Okay. First, last, dest, destination, function. Okay. So I'm having a look here at the, at the template. You can look it up on the reference. Yeah. Okay. So we're passing in the first thing and the last thing, which is the start of the corners array, my corners, so the actual stored up there in the header, and the end, start to finish. We're storing it, see, destination, in this array we've just made here, yeah? So iterate over my corners, pop it in here, because that's what we're going to return later, and apply this function to all of the things between these two. Perhaps? Do something on M corners and store it in corners. What it does is the lambda you pass. Okay, that makes that makes sense. Yeah? So we're going between these two items here. Start of the corners to the end. So corner 0, corner 1, corner 2, corner 3. Like on the webcam. 0, 1, 2, 3. Put whatever it is I calculate over there. Whatever. And to each corner, do this little lambda. So instead of doing a lambda, could you make a function somewhere and pass that in? Like, could I turn this from being a lambda into being a function here called do stuff, please? Return stuff. Could I put do stuff in here? I could just do, like, do stuff. Could I do that? Yeah, that would probably work. Okay. So if this makes it easier to understand for everyone else, we're doing whatever this method says to each corner. I get that. I think we've over-explained it enough to understand it, right? That's the wrong function. It's whatever, all right? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We're doing this lambda, which is the sort of little secret function that we're posting in here. 
We're passing in a specific corner. Called. Called corner. This could be theoretically called blah blah blah, as long as it's the same here, right? Yeah, clip. Yeah, chat. Clip the code. <laughs> Alright, whatever. So the function returns get transform, transform point corner. So it's some bollocks and where it is. That makes sense. I feel like now we've stepped through it, that makes a bit of sense. Do you understand as well, chat? Yeah? So transformed corners grabs the four corners of the sprite and return does some bollocks to it, stores that bollocks in a little chest and then throws the chest out there or whatever. Transform beginning end destination function, not beginning end destination function. You'll be passing a function pointer its name. Oh, sorry. So instead of passing in do stuff. So I passed in do stuff with brackets. You'd actually just pass in do stuff. Right. Sure, whatever. Oof. Easy mode, brothers. Here is the draw. So every single f every single frame, if you remember game.cpp, we're doing draw, which presumably tells everyone to draw. For bean and bean draw. Cool. When it's drawing, when the bean decides to draw, we have a render target, which is something, some special graphics library thing, some special render states. You're not being able to use auto in a lambda's argument list. How can you do that? So here, instead of writing vector, could you write in auto, perhaps? That looks really neat. I like that. This overrides a function is FSF drawable. What does it change? And yes, you can put auto there. Oh, fantastic. C++ friends. You want to remember how to write all this? Just chuck an auto in, brother. That makes more sense somehow. Less type strict stuff, templated stuff. Oh, does the draw... Is the default draw function normally a bit more complicated and has a bit more goo and stuff in it? I see. Sure. So we're passing in some crap into the draw function, and it is drawing to the target this sprite in its current state, which is this size, and it looks like this, and it's at this angle, and it's here. Yeah? Default draw is imp isn't implemented, you have to overwrite it. I see. You need to override the draw function. Auto, 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 const, auto. Fantastic. Alright, I need to pee chat, so I'm going to be gone for two seconds. Make sure you watch the beans for a few moments. I'll be back in 30 seconds. I'm just going to make the beans the same size as the screen, and then spawn a few more in so you can watch them for a second. Look. Let's start, let's start anew with a new set of beans. Can you race the beans, chat? Decide which bean you like the most. There's actually too, too many in there. I like this. Watch these beans for a few minutes. I'll be back in 30 seconds, friends. Hey brothers, how's it going? How are you enjoying watching the beans? Are you having a good time? Do you all like lazy bean the most? Back to the corner with these beans. They take up so much space. Away with you, friends. What sort of size was the beans before? Were they sort of like that, maybe? Did I have them underneath the chat? I don't remember. 
Who's got the follow thing over there? I don't remember. Were the beans under the chat? Or were they just above it? You would love to have this as your screensaver. Like that. Okay, let's go with that. Whatever. I'm back, friends. I had a good Wii. How was your Wii that none of you had? I hope someone won. You like the top right bean, it's cute. Future C++ programs will be like int main auto. I hope so. Alright. Terrific. Lazy bean. Alright. Remove a few. Lazy bean. You enjoy your life. You just drift about. Once again, keeping you up all night. I'm doing it, brother. Alright, lads. We've now gone through all of bean.c++. Do you feel like we understand this a bit? Like a quick little thing, you know? We can find collisions. We can say what the bean is and where he is. Where she is. Update the physics on the bean. And calculate how to update the physics. That's what bean.c++ does. And the header just stores the definitions of those. So here's the update physics again. All the variables. That's good. You like the part when you talked about beans? I did. Is it time to move on to game.c++? Do you want to do that? This stuff looks frightening and terrifying. It's got so much information in it. There's no way we'll possibly be able to tackle it, right? Perhaps we will. Perhaps we'll try our best, okay? How come some beans are fast and others slow? They just don't know where they go, you know? I, re I quite like it. Alright, let them do their own thing. Anyway, here is game.header and game.c++. This file is monstrous in size. Look at it, there's so much information. How could we possibly get through it? Well, we start here, don't we? Yeah, they seem to get random velocity, as I'm sure we'll find out. Because so far, we've only gone over what defines a bean and how it updates itself. But nothing else, really. This is where all the magic happens, surely. So we're including the bean header, so we can create those beans. We're including the SFML graphics library. Yeah. We're including something to get size t. Sure. So this is just some C++ library. We're including the random library. It's presumably to randomly generate velocity and stuff. And string view. Whatever that might be. What's this? Good question, Phillies. Coming into this with no programming experience, was it your brain starting to leak out of your ear? Don't worry about the details. You see these keywords? What they say doesn't matter. It's what they represent, brother. String views are great. They have wrappers around constant char. Sure. Alright. Don't worry about the extras, alright? We're just looking at the, the primary things that matter. So, this is the class called game, and it is final. Bam. It's not going to be derived from, right? So you can't make like a little sub-game that pulls a bunch of stuff out of here and then changes it and runs it differently, right? This is it. This is just game. It is here. You can't fuck with it. It's trying its best. Instead of copying a string, you get a view on it. I see. Whatever. Okay. This is the header file, so there's no logic in here. Just the names of things. So, publicly, we have the class game and its constructor, I suppose. We have a method called run, which presumably runs the game, and a function called quit that passes in exit code zero. So this, pr this just prints zero into the console if you quit with this. I'm assuming game has all the game logic in it, or so. Run is the little loop that goes over and over again. So here's game, run, loop, 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 loop. You chuck in quit and it stops the loop, finishes the program, right? And here's all the private stuff. All of this stuff is private. Only this file and game.c++ knows about it. We have options, which is a, a structure, which is a class, much like this whole game thing itself, or the bean. The bean is a class, but everything's public by default. So, sure. <laughs> Private. Options. So the options are just all the crap that you can throw in, right? So the height and the width of the window. The window boop. I is uh, bits per pixel. Okay, that's the that's the bits per pixel. Sure. What does that mean? 
depth. Is that like DPI? But for drawing instead. Color depth, basically. Oh, this is color depth. Okay. Oh, oh right, 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 right. It's how many... Yes. Okay, so this is 32-bit color. 8 bits for each thing. Okay, perfect. Yes. Oh, sorry, this is 8-bit color, not 32-bit color. Jesus Christ, 32-bit color. Oof. Brain. Hello there. Hey, Blast. So, yeah. Okay. Go one byte, black and white game. I see. One bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is color depth. What's this music? It's this. This is Zelda's lullaby. Font size is just presumably how big that font is in the top left. Sure. Max FPS by default is uncapped, so it'll just run as fast as it possibly can. Um, but right now we've passed in down here. Can you see the console? We've passed in 60. That's why it's only capped at 60 hertz. So that's cool. Window title is game, so that's the bit here that you can't see because window capture doesn't capture it. But this is, I assure you, there is a thing above here that with like, you know, the windows, the underscore, the square and the X, it says game. Bean image file equals data slash bean dot png. So this is the location of this image. It's stored in the game files as bean dot png. Font file, this is where the font is located to draw this to the screen. Vsync is off. Is Vsync, does you just, does Vsync just mean you cap the frame rate at whatever the uh, refresh rate of the screen is? And full screen is false. So this could theoretically run at full screen. I have a question for you, Donut, my friend. Does SFML library, if I enable full screen, does it stretch this 640 by 480 to the whole thing? Does it just calculate that? Vsync is more complicated, but you just leave it to SFML. Yeah, Vsync has some random shit to do with like waiting for the uh, frame buffer and all that crap, right? Something like that, which we're going to kindly ignore. Get yeah, stretches, that's fantastic. So I don't have to write any logic to do with going full screen. Does it just do that? Or slash have you just done that? The wonders of not having to write your own graphics library. You can ignore the boring shit, like how to make something full screen and just things on the screen and make them beans. Fantastic. Those thunder and lightning, you're spooked. Is it still raining outside? It stopped raining. It was raining pretty badly, yeah. yeah. All right. No discard. Do you remember this one, friends? I'm now I'm now friends with no discard. I used to find it frightening, and now I love it. If you've joined late, no discard says, if you're calling this function, store the value somewhere. Don't just call the function and just leave it. It's like it's like sending your kids off to school and just leaving them there. This says don't do that. Pick them up from school. Send in a car to put them in and then take them off. Back to home. You forgot to add no discard on find top least bone. You can add that myself. Oh, find topmost bean add. So let's add no discard there. So now it means if you call find topmost bean, you have to do something with it. You can't just call it and just waste CPU for no reason. You get that, friends? I get that. I'm now like cradling my, my nice coffee in my penguin mug. Yeah, awesome. Penguin mug. Cozy sort of penguin. He has a little, a little tail on his bottom. See his little bottom tail. No discard is the good parent of coding. What is always in line? I don't know. Where is that? I have no idea, brother. All right. So. We have a private function called random velocity, a private float called random angular velocity. So this is still a private function. Everything with these little, you see these little brackets, fellows? These little brackets? It's a function or a method. You can call it whatever you want. There's specific definitions, but no one cares. If you're in uni, it matters because you'll get marked one or two on your exam if you say function or method. But no one actually cares, I think. And if they do care, tell them to uninstall the retroarch. They'll know what that means. Call it a procedure. All oh, procedures are nice. What was the other one you said that I said I've never used? I don't remember. Anyway, so we have a bunch of functions here, brothers. Many functions. He separated them. Donut's been a cool boy. All of these are functions, and all of these are variables. Wonderbar. Sub subroutine. Subroutine's a natural thing, though, right? It's where you can pause the function, then come back to it later. Maybe? Something like that. 
It was no, that's a co-routine. That's a co-routine, chap. A co-routine, brothers. How could I have been so foolish? It's a co-routine, not a subroutine. Oh, I'm gonna shake my Wemo angrily. No, all right, look. Here's a bunch of functions. You can generate a random velocity, a random angular velocity. So a random speed, how fast it's going. A random angular velocity, it's turning. Co-routines are coming in C++ 20. Neat. Doesn't C Sharp still have it? I remember that was a thing between Unreal Engine and Unity Engine, is that Unreal doesn't have pro-routines, but then they were adding them in manually or, or something? I don't know. Whatever. It has something called Update Bean Text. I'm assuming that's this text here that says Beans 4. Beans 5. Oh, Lazy Bean, come back. Oh shit, where's Lazy Bean gone? We just got another Lazy Bean in. How could I be so foolish? Oh, there was one. It's like Terraria trying to do um, the, the the gremlin thing, you know. I just add a few more beans. Let them do their thing. Will this be going to the second channel? Yeah. Okay, you can already see people in chat wanking off each other. This is how you know you're doing programming. If you can't understand what they're saying, but they seem very forceful with it, you know you're talking to a programmer. It's like, I absolutely love this particular thing. Oh, you don't know what it is? Cool, cool, cool. You're falling for my trap. This would be a good video for proper chilling. I hope so, brother. Spawn bean, kill bean! I'm immediately renaming that. How could you, don't know? We're, we're renaming kill bean. Alright? We're renaming that to... Rehome bean. Okay? Disgusting. They're arguing about things that don't exist. Fantastic. The fact that I don't even know they don't exist tells you about how much I care. So you've got Rehome bean, spawn bean, and Rehome bean. Welcome bean into home, I'm going to rename that too, to be as confusing as possible, and also to show that it doesn't matter what you call it. Re spawn bean can be called. Invite Bean to Screen. Alright? Does that make sense to everyone? I think that's a better name, right? Invite Bean to Screen and Rehome Bean. It might sound too low. It's because the volume of the music's quite high. I can lower the music a little bit if you like. I'm not trying to scream too much. Hello, Minutes. Hey, Kerdrin. You've been killing. I think you've been killing so many beans until now. I've not. I've been rehoming them and inviting them to the screen. Alright, brother? No discard, find topmost bean at. Oh, is that to find out the layer? Because I was, I was actually wondering, how do you tell when I'm like, clicking on two beans here? Oh, I love it when they like start spinning off. Oh, this one's excited. Jesus. Like, how do you know when I'm clicking that I'm clicking on the one on the top, you know? Or like, how are you doing the, the Z sorting? Are you doing any Z sorting? Or is it just the order they're placed? It's the order they're placed on the screen, isn't it? That makes sense. Do, do. Is a new one automatically on top? It is. Do, 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 do. Will you be streaming RuneScape again? I will, but Tomu's busy for like a long time, so I won't. But I will when Tomu's done. I don't even want to stream it by myself. They're sorted, so the last one appeared in the vector is the topmost one. Oh. Willem.exe, oh no. Hey, brothers. Yeah, this is me. This is what does me. Yeah, it's basically a stack, yeah. Or it might literally be a No, it's not a stack. Surely. Because you can take beans out from any position. It just tells which one has the the most- the latest appearance in the array is the most topmost one. Big old array of beans. This one was added last. Its number is like 5, 4, 3, 2, 0, whatever. 5 bigger than 4. This one's on top. Kill that one first. Vector can be used as a stack and a queue. Ooh, I didn't know that. Neat. Ooh, 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 ooh. He'll tell me his job so he has to play video games with you. He's a student. He's older than me, but he's a, he's a student. In case you forgot. Pass option value. So these... Oh, chat. A programming thing. You can have a bunch of functions have the same name. So you see these are all called pass option value. The difference is that you can pass different things in. So this one sends in a character. You know, A, Z, Y, whatever. 
This one sends in an unsigned integer, I guess. So a value between zero and five billion, presumably. And this sends in a Boolean, so true or false. A little ampersand. That's a fellow. Hey, friends. Donut, how do we explain? How do you explain pointers? Because. In other programming language, the pointers are sort of hidden away from you a lot of the time. Like, oh, don't worry about those. Can you explain the difference? How do you explain the difference between ampersand, like adding a little ampersand at the end, or adding a little star? It's a string. The star means it's a pointer to a char. Okay. How is this a string? Constant char. It's a char, brother. How is this a string? It's just called overloading. It points to the first char in a string. C arrays decay to a pointer. What does that sentence mean? C arrays decay to a pointer. Overloading methods. How is this a string? So you pass in something called, you pass in a character value, you pass in a string the option name, and you, pa and you pass in a character result. A C string is just a char star. Whenever you see an ampersand, replace it in your head with the location of. To find the end, you go to the char equal to zero. Right, so... Okay. There's no string, brother. You have to, you have to like, use a library for that. Do you just say, here's the first letter of my series of letters. You know, word, a string. Here's the first one. The end is... Wherever it's... There's nothing there? Or what? You start, and the string that is... Wrong... Oh, there's so many things on the screen, brothers. Char star means there's an array of characters in memory. There's a bunch of characters next to each other. The pointer points to the first one. To find the next, you increment it by one. Can you explain, perhaps, why char star is, a, is an array of characters? What about this defines that as an array of characters? Or here? This is the location of... A... Can, can you explain that? C arrays are basically pointers. It doesn't have to be an array, it's just a common idiom. Okay. It could just be one car for all we know. How do you know the end? You said it somewhere. You start, and the string is from that to slash zero, a literal zero value. It's not an array in a typical sense, it just points to a memory location. I see. The end is at the first zero. So, is this built into C++? Does it automatically end it with a slash zero? Or do we have to manually do that? Because in C you would, right? You have to do so much crap. But we're doing C++, right? By convention, C strings have a character equal to zero at the end, so you can find the end. The first way would be to do standard string. So is he doing... I don't know, are you doing the C thing? Is this a C way of looking at things? When you write ASD, it automatically puts a zero at the end. Let's have a look at this picture. Hello, slash zero. I see. You're doing a C thing because it gets strings from the command... Okay. That's the point of confusion. Alright, chat. Let's explain something very quickly. We're using a programming language called C++. There's another language called C. Just plain old C. C is... Like, you have to do so much crap, right? C++, it's much easier for the programmer. C, you have to do so much micromanagement, right? Now I know. This is done in a C style because it reads from the command line. You see down here where it does max FPS 60? Do you have to do C sort of stuff? Because this command line stuff is written in, is re read in C. The C library knows the conversion that a zero terminates the spring. Okay. So, the C++ language is built on top of C. Theoretically, any C program can be compiled in C++ as if it's C++ and it should just work. You get the command line arguments as car pointers in main. I see. So to get this thing down here where it writes max FPS 60, for example, we have to pretend that we're writing a C program just for this little section here. So we're saying, 
Here's the start. So I guess that's I, that's this little dash here. So if this was a whole string, right? We're sending in this. This is the argument, right? This is what we. This is if it was a string, it looked like this, right? Value option name result. Option name presumably is this little section here, right? And value is this. And I don't know what I don't know. I'm not sure why there's three, honestly. Location of result. Is that where is that what we're doing here? Max FPS and 60 are different things. The value is 60, the result is what gets set to 60. Okay. So I think later we'll find out what this does. But you're passing in the value, which is 60. You're passing in the option name, which is max FPS. So really this should be like that then, right? Like it should be option name then value. The order doesn't really matter, but if you wanted to have it match how the string is set up. Command line arguments are separated with spaces. The program doesn't know if max FPS is an option or not. Donut checks it himself. Right. Now you think about it, you don't know why you did it in this order. Okay. So chat, if you're also as confused as I am, pretend that everything is in this order. Where it's read as option name, value, result. And we're doing it all weird and confusing with these asterisks and stars and chars because we're using the command line. And the command line is like Windows bollocks. And we have to use it for C. Hi, Colo. Might be because you made stuff up better when using the function. Maybe. Anyway, back to the real world. They spent forever looking at pass option value. We're sending in the pointer for this thing here. Maybe. Maybe? And the pointer for that thing there, or something? If I, if, I, if I understand it correctly, the way that a C string works then, is that this is actually stored like this, right? With like a little slash zero at the end. The dash and the six. Are you 15,000 years old? Is it your birthday call or...? Grand. Okay. So this is how max FPS looks right now. It looks really stupid, but it's just a big array of these letters, one after the other, ending with a special character. It was on the 25th, yes. What is it today? Oh, happy birthday! Uh, from last week, I suppose. But yeah, belated. Happy belated birthday, colour. Did you enjoy yourself in isolation? With your birthday cake or whatever? It's gone. Ah, okay. I understand then. Or slash, a reverse slash. Okay. You're the same age you've been for a while now. It does do that. Wow, it even, like, it even recognises it being unique. Like, it's drawing it as a yellow. Do you see that? Like, slash zero is orange, but backwards slash. Oh, is it the same as doing backwards slash n to do a new line? Ooh. If you type a string literal and hover over it, you can see the actual type is in a character array with a length of string plus one. Really? Can I do that? That's probably not- that's not gonna work, this is a header file, what am I doing? It was the best birthday ever! Hell yeah! Yeah, do you have grey hairs now? Now, let's chat chat. If you want to know, by the way, this is something really useful to know. Loads of times in programming... Uh, I'll try and think of an example, but you'll see this everywhere. You can do sl backwards slash N to do a new line. So you know the enter key on your keyboard? Slash N is like pressing the enter key. So if you want to do... You know, hello, how are you? That will draw it as hello, how are you? Useful to know. Backwards slash n. It's just like a memorizing thing. You have to hover for a second to tell the sense it's a bit slow. All escape sequences begin with slash. So if you're doing something that's not to do with the string, so this isn't part of the string. This is an escape character. We're escaping. We're getting out of there, brother. We're using our escape route. Attach for vertical tab, moves the cursor up and down and right by one. Oh. Okay. Anyway. So, the way that this is being seen is that we're pointing towards this, and it just keeps going, reading, 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 bap, slash zero, get out of there, brother. And then you've got your reference to your string there, which looks a bit stupid, but that's, I guess, how it works in the back end. Cool. Cool. Let's move on. That took forever, but this is how we're passing command line options, such as max frame rate. If I wanted to relaunch it, could I just like close the game? Press up, maybe? 
and then set max FPS to 240 and then launch it. You see it's running in 240 Hz now. With a new set of beans. These are the new bean families. Oh, they're all lazy beans. Except for that excitey bean. In most languages, slash n is alias to slash n slash r. Oh. What are you programming? We are reading through Donut's example program, and then we will try and make a Toho plane. You can do standard string view to convert the char to something that you can use as a string. I see. He was enjoying your voice and suddenly you slapped me with Gen 4 nostalgia. Got him. I wanted to stream Gen 4, but I'm pretty sure Nintendo's gonna do a Diamond and Pearl remake next year. Or this year, probably next year. So it seems weird to stream it. Okay. Let's bash on. Another function called command load command line options. Sounds pretty easy. It just loads a you know, set of options, a little array. Set max FPS. Presumably sets the FPS. Create main window, loan font, load texture, setup generator. These are all pretty self-explanatory, right? Setup beans sets up beans. Fantastic. Chat, I'm getting a bit chilly. I'm gonna put a scarf on or a blanket or something. Hang on. Blanket. I found my blanket. Oof. Oh, it's raining again. Oof. I have blanket now. Cozy. It's still raining. It's raining again. Plant beans! Oh, that's fantastic. I like plant beans. I might do that. Cozy, brother. The bean has been planted. I love counter bean. Counter bean ultra offensive. Been raining too here. It's omega cozy. Chat, are you cozy? Can you have your, you have your coding blankets on? The bean has been diffused. Oof. Why is there a fuse in your bean? All right, get your blanket on. Make like a little, make like a little blanket tunic, you know. Do like a like tie it up like this, brothers. Like a little knot here, like a little, a little, little cape, little bean cape. Tactical bean. Oh, I'm so comfortable. Just a little chilly though. Oof. Handle events, update, draw, whatever. Like a Greek god, exactly, brothers. Can you even see that my blanket's off? It's presumably can't darken here, isn't it? You can't. It just looks like I'm wearing a sort of weird hoodie. Or like a fashionable scarf. Oof. All right. Here's all our variables. There's the window. These are these are things to do with the library. Sick. So there is a render window. It's a thing, I guess. There is an object called a render window. We have a local copy called m window. There is the float rect bound. So I'm assuming that's the bounds of the window. That's you know the this whole rectangle around the whole thing. There's the font, there's a text, and a text. That's sort of like a text view or a text box or whatever for those. There's a random number generator. There's angle speed and angular speed distribution, which I guess is used in the random generator to make them really random or to make them between a particular point. I'm not sure how that works really. Uh, there is a vector of beans. So this is our sort of pouch for holding all the bean, our, our bean pouch, many beans in our pouch. Could I, could I rename vector to pouch using, uh, using like this? Could I do like... Would that work, brother? Could I call it standard pouch? Would this work? Oh. You could use template type name equals pa Okay, you're now typing a lot of things. I just thought I'd be a little, a little hee hee. All right. Minimum delta time is zero. Okay, we remember that from before when we were doing the, the spin. The we'll look at it again in a second, I'm sure. But that was the uh, that was to do with the minimum amount of time before we want to draw again. Or whatever. Exit code zero, whatever. Running equals true. So the game is running. Keep looping, brother. End. Fantastic. Why is end if at the end? Explain. Is that what you do at the end of the at the end of the header? To say it's the end of the file. Something like that, maybe. Let's go into game.c++. We're nearly there, brothers. It's the header guard. That sounds cool. Alright, lads. 
We're here on game.c++. Are you ready for a walloping? A real, a real walloping. Preprocessor needs an ender to make sure the file isn't copy pasted twice if included twice. Great. Oh, it's so it knows, like, this is the header to this point, then stop. And then if it tries to include the, the thing again, it's like, oh, we've already done the end if. You can pragma as well, but you like writing end if. Alright, epic. It's a hack that everyone has done since C, where you check if a thing is defined at the top of the file, and if it's not, you define it and then do everything else. Okay. Cool. Here is the game.c++, the final file, friends. The final countdown. Make sure everything's only done once. Okay. We are including the game header, this boy which also includes bean header and a bunch of libraries. So, we got a lot of stuff included. We're including algorithm, we're including a bunch of time and maths and standard in out for error. Marking out errors, I guess. Formatting, iterator. We're including a bunch of random crap for logic. Hello, Kilo. Send an error is the standard error stream for printing errors. Epic. So, namespace wool. So everything in here... Is everything in here technically wool dash... Whatever. Wool dash game... Or wool colon game colon. You pass it to foot print. Epic. Right, let's start. This is the constructor for the game. So when we're making the game in main... Yeah. Wool colon whatever game colon. Oh, so it's sort of like, in a way, it's sort of like a file system. So we're like, we have like our main folder called wool, and then within that folder we have a game folder, and then within the game folder we have a text file called game. So you go bam, bam, down the hierarchy. You decided to print a part that takes 15 minutes, so you spent three hours cleaning your room. Perfectly reasonable. What? Print a part? Are you doing 3D printing? I forget what you do, Kilo. Alright, so the constructor for the game tries to do a bunch of stuff and then catches a bunch of exceptions. So we're trying to load command line options, set the max frame rate, create the window, load the font, load the texture, set up the random generator, set up the beans. If something goes wrong here, presumably from trying to load a file, we're not even specifying an exception, we're just, we're just catching any exception. Sure. If there's an exception, like if this doesn't work, like if we can't load the file, we'll print an error that says what the error is, I guess, and then quit with an error code of 1. I think we're using error code 0 means it quits properly, like we press the X button or something. If it quits with 1, it means something bad happened. Like a crash, if you will. Catch dot dot dot, is that just anything else? Fail to set up game, quit 1. What are you printing, brother? Ear savers for masks. Hell yeah. Zero is coolio. Non-zero is error. Yes. You cleaned off your credit cards and now you've bought a washer and a dryer. You like working all this overtime. Zero is good. Your folks are doctors and they want them. That's fair. You quit with non-zero, I believe it's something bad. Yes. Quit zero and exit zero. That's a damn cool. That's a, that's a damn damn good question. I have no bloody idea. Does quit like is a thing? Well, quit is a thing that he runs. It's a function. It's here. Yeah. Hello, Chris. I'm cozy, brother. How are you doing, Christopher? I would love chocolate fingers, brother. Thank you, friend. Are they in here? Oh, I see. Awesome. So yeah. It tries to set up the game, and if it can't, it finishes. Cool. We've done. We've gone through the run thing. I'm going to come back to this. No, actually, we'll do this now. Standard exit is its own thing. It just straight up exits the program. It's like, what is it? The equivalent of just pressing the cross in the top right corner. Abort works as well. Yo, Christopher, is that a heckin' chocolate finger, brother? Thanks, friend. 
How's it going? How's the sun? I think the sun's not doing fantastically. I think he's getting quite old. Is he still doing all right in there, though? Like Morgana. He's still snoozing, yeah. I don't know, I think he's... I think he's finally reached old age at like two and a half years. You know? Yeah, another one. Thanks, friend. Is this one half eaten? Oh. Thank you, friend. Hey, Antron, dude. Yeah, brother. Chat, you want a chocolate thing? Here you go, lads. Hmm. Hmm? I will eat them if you leave them with me. One more? I can't see most of that. Thank you. Wow. Food! Alright. Let's go back to the game. You require chocolate at the there. Alright, lads. Come back, come back. We've had our chocolate, right? Have a little sip of coffee. Back to work. Alright. This is the run loop. We've gone through it. We're going to step through it again very quickly. Because we sort of know what it does. So. While the game is running. Ignore all this crap. Bean products for a bean coder. Hell yeah. So, while we're running, this is this happens a lot. This is just looped a heck lot. Set the latest frame time to this instant. Ignore this. This is just... The stuff to do with FPS count and, and frame counter is exclusively for the FPS thing you see in the top of the screen. So that doesn't really matter. So, set the latest frame time to this instant. While we're running, so remember, like, if we're quitting, running is false, so it doesn't run this anymore. The moment it stops running, return the exit code. Yeah? Which is just stored. It's floating around. Exit code's just around. It's default zero, but if something bad happens, it gets set to one. I'm assuming? Is this a tutorial code stream or just normal programming? I have no idea what it is. We're just, we're just sort of reading and enjoying each other's company. Gonna be starting in five minutes. Bye, Kurdrin. Now you might learn some things. I'm learning some things. We're just going through the file. We were doing more learning later when I start writing my own stuff, but we need to read through the example code properly first to know what we're doing. I don't know what it is, but it's very good. Hell yeah. So while the program's running, set the timer to now. The current time is now. Honestly, couldn't this be set to that? Or are you doing this in a actually no wait hang on this is before the loop so this is the this is the initial run cycle yeah the initial run cycle is here set it to this instant whatever every time it's running bam 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 so actually run only gets run once this this does not run infinitely this whole thing this is called once to start the game basically this bit here is going bam 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 Right? Wish I was your IT teacher. I am your IT teacher for today. Alright? While bam 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 bamming, setting the current time to now, delta time, which is the time between now and the last time, if you get me, brother, is current time minus the latest time. So current time could be 1000 milliseconds, and the last current time might have been set to like zero. So the delta time would be a thousand, right? Yeah. It's just a way to like convert between them. Hey, the wild loop is in the main game loop. Yeah. So bam, 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 bam. We figure out the amount of time since the last time we did a bam. So it might be bam, bam. So this is the amount of time it takes for me to say bam. You know, like 0.3 seconds or whatever. Who cares? Alright? We're just keeping track of time, alright? Seconds, this is just symbolics. Alright, who cares? It doesn't matter. It's the amount of seconds. 
All right. <laughs> so, if the amount of seconds since the last ban is over a minimum, we're now doing physics slot stuff, all right? Otherwise, ignore. So for example, we have a frame rate cap at 240. So if this is actually running at 5,000 hertz, which it is, it's running very quickly. I think this actually is like 3,000 it could be running at. Um, we ignore it because we've set our maximum FPS down here to 240 down here. You see in the console, we started up the program with a maximum frame rate of 240. So this minimum delta time is whatever one divided by 240 is, I think. Minimum delta time is equal to zero, but then that's actually set here, right? Somewhere. I don't know. Minimum delta time is a calculation based on your frame cap, basically. So, this might be bamming at 500 hertz. We don't care, okay? If it's ha if the if like the the number of milliseconds between the bams is smaller than our cap, we just ignore it. There's no point in constantly updating the physics because we will destroy our CPU because it will be running at 100% all the time trying to render these beans. So it's good to have at least a frame rate cap of like 999, even if you want to have it basically be infinite. It's a bad idea to have it completely uncapped. Um, like I think Osu is moving towards optimized, which is three times your refresh rate. Which is kind of dumb, because it means if you have 60 hertz, you objectively have worse circles at someone on 240 hertz, but whatever. It makes sense, I'm sure. You shouldn't be playing O2 on 60 hertz for too long anyway, it'll hurt your eyes. Anywho. We're bamming. We're checking the recent time. Aha! This is a time that we care about. Now we'll be updating the physics, handling events, and drawing the screen. In that order. Not in that order. Handling the events, then updating, then drawing. That makes sense. This little thing here, this little chunk here, this is just drawing the FPS to the screen. Yeah? We said this before. If the current time minus the count time is over a second, i.e. has a second passed, update the FPS counter. Remember? This updates every second. Not that it matters because it's capped right now and it's never going to go below 240. What a coincidence. Every second, we update the frames per second, based on how many frames have happened in the second. Wow. Wild. Oof. So this is actually currently happening 240 times a second. Nuts. We handle the events, we update, and we draw. So, what does handle events do? We should jump into that, shouldn't we? Oh, handle events, that's a large boy. Handle events, there's so much going on. What the heck? How do we break it down? I have no idea. So, so for event in events, M window poll event. What is this? Oh my word. Clicking and closing events. Yeah, so is this like if you've pressed a key or a mouse button? Wait, hang on, what does space do? Whoa! Space zooms things up, brother. Who knows there was a zoom option? Or does just space just give them a random velocity? Oh, it adds a random velocity. Okay. I didn't know there was a spacebar thing here. So press R to reset it. I see. We'll just let this one bean... Oh, the bean needs a friend. Bean needs a few friends. Alright, we'll let the beans do their own thing. All right, now I know that exists. This is where events happen to do with inputs, then. So if you're closing the screen, maybe? We're not using that. We don't care, that. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. If the event is window closed, we quit. Cool. So we're listening for, a, we're listening for input. Input includes pressing the X button, I guess, or whatever. Or pressing a keyboard. Epic. Is the random velocity minus one and one? No, it's a random one. All right. Anyway, so we're checking for events here, first of all. For every event that's happened, so if there's been four events that have happened, so within one frame, I've just pressed my face on the keyboard and pressed four keys at once. We'd be checking this four times. So say we're checking for a spacebar press. We go through here, we say, oh, he's done his 
weird, like, hipster if else if statements. Get out of here. Do this. Oh, weird boy. Just add a little space between them for readability as well. I like that. Separate them nice and properly. So, is our space bar? This is what we're saying as an example. Can we get a GitHub link, please? Ask a donut. I guess I should... Should I link this to my own GitHub donut? That's got my name on it. That's probably right. No link, I think. Ask a, ask a donut. They're not hipster. You're being a hipster, right? Let's pretend we're, we've just pressed the space bar and we're checking for that event. Is this a closed screen event? No, whatever. Is this a key press? Yes. Let's go in here. Is it... That's a little switch. What's the key code? Is it an escape? Uh, no. Is it a space? Yes. So, for bean in the bean list, screw with their velocity. Break. Get out of here. Break out here. Is it any of these other things? Oh, it doesn't even check those, does it? No. Okay. Out of here. Making a git repository is a good idea. We'll do that at some point, then. Um, anyway. Anyway, 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 anyway. Let's read through it without the examples. Space is between else ifs is a bad example because it makes a lot of separate ifs. I disagree. I think this I think this makes more sense to me because it separates these as like big blocks. It's easier to read. When stuff's like grouped together, I know it I know it makes you happy because it's like concise, but I think it's hard to read when like else if is just slammed next to that. Like this looks like these two are combined. And they're not really. When you separate it like this, it's like it's a whole its own thing. Indentation, schmindentation. Get out of here, donut. I think this is harder to read than this. I like the line between, alright? Get out of here. It Leave me be. Let's go through the events, actually, though. What difference does it make when the compiler eats it? It doesn't make. It's for the, it's for the programmer to read, and I am the programmer. So be gone. Get out of here. Right? It's not like it makes the program any slower. You don't think you'll find anyone who prefers it that way? I prefer it that way, Stinky. Stop trying to be hipster and make me upset. Be consistent with format. Great that you have Clang format. I mean, we do, if you do, um, there is a thing that, like, hipster formats it, right? Where is it? Format document. Oh, uh, that doesn't format the LSIF things. Okay. Put the in on the new line. Okay, I'm just going to annoy Donut a bit more. I'm going to indent this one by a few times. Just to really, like, show off that it, like, does not matter remotely, alright? Does this upset you? He's probably a little upset now. It's exciting. I actually want to keep doing that. Let's just, like, randomly indent stuff. Get out of here, brother. If you want to use it in your lines, you change the clang format file. You know what? Despite you, I won't. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. Who knows, brother? It should format it. It doesn't seem to format anything. Like, it doesn't seem to care. It'll make it easier for you. Okay. Well, let's ignore it for now because it doesn't matter. Look through the events. We've got closing the window, which quits the whole thing. Quit. This changes the exit code. Oh, you don't need to pass in an exit code? Hang on, brother. Here you're just doing quit. Do you not have to pass something in? I don't see two different versions of quit. You can post a link. It defaults to zero. If you don't pass in an integer, does this just assume it's a zero? In the header? Oh, hang on. Where am I looking, brother? Oof. Game header. Quit. Int- Oh, here. I see, I see, I see. So here, by default, we're passing in exit code. This is what you'd normally do. But if you don't want to pass anything in, it's just zero. If you pass anything in, it'll overwrite that. I see. So back to the whatever we were doing. Hang on. Where were we? Is that here? Yeah. This is a good clang format configurer. You can see what the options do. Do a peak declaration in the header. Check definition to see the sequence plus. Alright. You do all your programs in one line. Hell yeah. Let's ignore all this extra crap. It doesn't matter. No, no, that, that doesn't doesn't matter. All right. Formatting is cool, but chill. One thing at a time. Quit. Hex out the program. 
Checking for a key press is different to a mouse press, I guess. Okay. Checking for a key press is done via checking the key code, which includes escape, space, and then literally just like R. Is there an easy way to check? This this is irrelevant, right? That could be anywhere. Okay. So if I wanted to add in a check for something else, I'd do case, SF, keyboard. Can I see like a list if I type in something? Is there a way to check? Like, can I click through to it? Peek? No. Control space. Yeah, I don't know about that one. After the colons. Until he senses balked. I would leave it for now. You have to reload VS Coded. Okay, I won't bother with that. It's probably fine. Maybe I will. I'll load it. It takes a second anyway. No, I don't want to look. Get out of here, all this random. Can you see the screen okay? Press yes. Oh, wait. Do you want me to press. What were you trying to get me to do? Update. There are no updates available. You just balked it by not pressing yes. That's why it didn't work before. Well, I think it's fine. You know? What What do you want me to do? I was asking if you want to use IntelliSense. Didn't you say don't use Visual Studio because IntelliSense is slow? Is there an IntelliSense? VS Code is faster. I don't know, it was just broke for me in uh, the other thing. It was easier to just not... Oh, reload. Didn't it say... Didn't I type never use it, never ask again? The path to the compiler for one or two source files was not found. If you're using a toolchain file, it means you need to specify the caps option. You know what, lads? It doesn't matter. Settings time. Like, does it any of this matter? C++ extensions. Unless it's like in here. Intended sense mode. Oh, is it this maybe? Do you want one of these things running? IntelliSense engine. Oh. This thing. It's not just IntelliSense engine. Clang is fine. IntelliSense mode, Clang x64, right? I assume. We're releasing this as in AMD 64. Do I need to like turn on the engine? Maybe that works. I don't know. I don't care enough. Alright, we'll figure stuff out. Filament is snapped and you didn't notice. I think you want MSVC. Oof, brothers. There you go, brother. Pains of developing on Windows. You see, I wouldn't have encountered this pain of developing on Windows if I just didn't care. So let's go back to where we were, alright? Control, control space doesn't work. And I don't care. I honestly don't care. Clang is nice and special than VSC, but yeah, you probably don't have Clang. Okay. None of this matters. Alright, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. We can Google stuff if we need to. But if I wanted to check for, like, the press of E, I'd do this. And then could I do, like, what's, wait, what's print to the bloody console? I was going to do, like, print. Print F. What is all this bollocks? Oh, standard C out. FMT print is what the library you're using. You press E. And then you add a little break in there. And then if I were to debug the program, it's running at an infinite frame rate now, right? Because I'm not doing anything in terminal. If it gives it a second. Oh. Oh, I'm missing something before break. Oh, shit. Correct. My bad. Oh, I want to debug, don't I? Where are my beans? Oh, you know what it is? Donut. On my computer, contr um, control space sets stuff to the full screen on up. 
So that's quite annoying. So you see how it's actually running at like a billion frames. If I press E, does it sp spam the console with anything? This doesn't do anything, brother. This is in debug console. Where would this be printing to? Problems? What is all this? <laughs> I don't know. If you try running it from the terminal, you might see it. These are problems because IntelliSense is not configured. Ignore the problems. That sounds like something a programmer would say. How do you remember where this thing is? Was it that? That was close. It's just one dash, isn't it? Okay. Oh, this works. And it works every time you hold it. Do you see you pressed E in console? And because it's only refreshing every 60th second, or every 16.6 um, .6 milliseconds or whatever, um, it's not spamming it, like, infinitely. It's spamming it every 60th of a second, basically, right? So if I wanted to learn about... If I wanted to have something that held in place for ho press and hold and let go, I would want to have, like, a hash set or something that, like, stores what buttons are currently being pressed. And when you let go, it's tied to key repeat delay. Oh, is it? Because this looked like the default key repeat delay in Windows. You can check the keyboard state. Oh, can you? Do I, do I not have to manually do press, hold, and uh, is pressed down? Is that stuff already built in? Logan's Dogma. If you want to read through code, you want permission to post an op topic. You do. You just need to uh, get verified. You want me to do that quickly? Discord's not going to be on the screen. What's your Discord thing? You see the, pro you see the uh, thing that says... New users ask here to talk. It's that one. You can check the keyboard state, yeah, but it's a good idea to an input manager that stores what's being held so you can rebind keys. Yeah, because you don't want to say holding E. You want to say holding action one or something so you can rebind it. You probably had something groundbreaking. Fam, I can hold the E button and it says you pressed E. Do you like this? Speed it spams is a Windows setting. Wait, does that mean that you couldn't... You should do it another way, because this has the initial delay. Yeah, it does as well. Sorry, hang on. Does why, why does this have the delay? How do I get rid of the delay? Brothers. How is, that was the better way. Okay, cool. Is that you? You can be... Um... Heckin... Purple. Unless you want a colour. Gonna be purple? Purple's cool. There you go. You're pretty. Oh, Oran tried to join. Oh, you got the Twitch sub thing, so you can just talk. There we go. If SF keyboard is key pressed, you can disable repeat entirely on the SFML window. I want to do that. Where is that, brother? Is that in uh, setup somewhere? With the update in, in update or some other function. Okay. Switch to Excel. Thank you, Toe Banner. To print this 15 minute part, you have to take apart a power strip that ended up having triangular headed screws. So you had to find a bolt extractor to get those out. They cleaned and resoldered a lead in the power strip because it was a fire hazard. Then you cleaned your room for three hours and started the print. I see. So in create window, you can do like deleting it. Okay. This is when I would like to have IntelliSense working. <laughs> create window. Oh, it's create main window. Is this is just setting it up, right? So I can just chuck this in somewhere. M. Window dot set. Yeah, you're right. It doesn't fill out anything. God, I would like IntelliSense to work then. Yeah, that would be nice. How the hell do I get it working, brothers? There must be a preferences for like never ask again, right? Surely. Or do you think it's stored in, like, the registry? Look up the SFML documents. No, this is faster. I don't have all day, brother. 
Autocomplete. Default is the engine. Active uses word based completion. Settings.json. You don't think there's a way to do this in here? Like, what am I doing? IntelliSense Engine Fullback. Is the point of printing is flexible, but their size not be. You might have to reinstall Windows. I think that's probably the only option, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't see Make Configure IntelliSense. Make file. Is that this? That's probably this, right, brothers? What do I want to add into here? Into settings.json? Oh, uh, oh, stretch. <laughs> no, you don't think that's it? Well, I've been lied to once more by chat. Jake? Who is Jake? CMake. You thought it would the never again would show up there. Oh, that makes sense. Build args, build task, build environment, cache settings, CMake communication, path, configure environment, settings. Oh, it's all this bollocks. So much crap. Let's ignore it for now. Whatever. But this is where we'd get rid of the, uh, the thing. How, how do I get in Sense to work properly? Is that actually a thing? If by default it'll try and configure headers. The fuck am I looking at? I don't care. Have you not done have you done much embedded programming? No, not at all. You forgot you'd do C, but luckily you touch your Twitch followers. Hey friend. Control Shift P and find a command like configure intelligence. There's nothing, Donut, to do with IntelliSense. Control Shift P. Oh, my brain is like turning off. Control P and Control Shift P are different. Control P. You sure? Oh, here we go. There's Reset IntelliSense database. I've done that, I guess. I don't know what I've done, honestly. Let's just leave it. Whatever. But that's where we'd get rid of the delay, you reckon? Restart VS Code. Now that doesn't work. Uninstall and reinstall the CMake extension. Isn't that going to break everything? Won't that break literally everything? I can just... I'm going to do it anyway, whatever. Uninstall, install. Uninstall, reload. It shouldn't break anything. I hope not. Then we what? Close and open it again. Nah, that's not done anything, brother. You get rid of the Microsoft. C, C++. Oh. Sure. Back in the day we had paperback references of our punch card graphic library and used the index on the back of the book to find definitions. Oh no, it's not doing anything. It's just show. It's just recommendations for shit. Switch to Vim with plugins. I don't know, brother. You have to wait to slack off to watch someone else do C++ while you're supposed to be doing C++. Hell yeah, it's not installed. 
We sure these look like they're pretty installed. Oh, it's not. You're right. What? 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 Okay, it's this close and reopen it again for the fiftieth time. Mm. Not done bollocks, my friend. I'm afraid. You think it remembered the setting? Imagine uninstalling actually removing it from your system. What a world we would be living in. Is there no, like, reset? Do I not want to install Austin's two- Oh, he's got only three stars. Do I not want to install his thing? Or is that part of this? I guess that's part of the Microsoft thing. Extension settings? Autocomplete. Fullback style. It has some IntelliSense things. IntelliSense Engine fullback. So we want to just maybe enable that? IntelliSense Engine. Oh, Emulion. Thank you for the 18 months, man. Hello. I think it's the fullback. Okay. Thank you, Emulion. Hey, walls of slash. Keep scrolling. I can't. What are you talking about? Thank you, Emulion. This is it, brother. User and workspace. Maybe both of these need to be MVSC? MSVC? <sighs> Top, uh, uh, donut, have I broken my VS code? What are you trying to do? We're trying to enable IntelliSense so I don't have to remember how to program. Which it doesn't seem to work. It may be the CMake extension tools settings. Uh, and you're telling me VS Code is better than uh, what the hell I was using before. Regular Visual Studio. You remember doing this 10 months ago, you forgot how you did it. Great. <laughs> it's not my fault you pressed don't show again. I didn't realize don't show again would break the, v the uh, offering. The IDE. Build before run. Build environment. Build tasks. Build, 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 build. Uh, I just don't like it when it spams you with messages every time you load up. I don't know. I give up. I don't care. We'll move on. We were doing other things. We can do this later. Now it's in your memory, so you'll you'll start thinking about it maybe, and then realize, aha, it was easy. Just press F17. Alright. Okay, you'll have to look up the SFML docs. Is this SAS to her? Who isn't guilty of closing windows by reflex? Yeah, you're t are you telling me that you'd see this pop up every time you load the thing and you wouldn't press don't see me again? What part of IntelliSense are you missing? IntelliSense. Okay, maybe we should look at the documentation. Anyway, oof, let's go back to doing what we're doing. Let's go back to gaming. Alright, brother? Oh, you do press the middle button in this program. I'm not sure what it does, but that doesn't really work with my mouse, so... Alright, where is where is my bean? Have you done the keyboard repeat thing? I can't do that because I don't have IntelliSense and I don't want to have to search for it. Oh, no, you have to press debug, don't you? Why does debug work and build doesn't? Can you explain that? Like, why does debug keep it open? Oh, middle click just like bounces the bean somewhere else. I see. Build, builds, debug, debugs. That's useless, brother. All right, we'll we'll leave them there. We'll leave them to do their own thing. <coughs> Let's keep looking through, right? We've got things that check. We understand how to take keyboard input now. Build just builds, it doesn't run. I see. Mouse press. Checks for mouse presses. The point is the location of the mouse button at that time. And we're switching what type of button was pressed, so left, right, or middle. Well, I can't see the messages in stream chat. I can see your messages. 
Maybe someone's blocked you. You found a load to the function. Oh, it's that, is it? Thank you, friend. Create main window. So this little create main window, we're just going to throw that in there. Everyone blocked you. Wait, it's everyone. Oh, it might just be a bug. Uh, reload chat. Sometimes they're delayed and they just don't appear. All right. Left, right, middle. Left is invite bean to point at that point. Update bean text. Rehome bean updates the bean text. Middle bean finds the topmost bean at that point. And if there is a bean there, screw around with its velocity and angle. That makes a lot of sense. Easy. Mouse rule scrolled is completely separate to pressing the mouse wheel. That makes sense. Const auto point equals there. So there's the point that you've just clicked on. If the delta is less than zero, I assume that means you're scrolling in a particular location. Right? Right? Hey, Tommy, how was classes? Delta less than zero means scrolling down. Larger than zero means up. So this is the line. Delta less than zero means you're going underwater, and above zero means you're above water, so you're scrolling up and down. Okay. So if you're scrolling up, there is a box of about a hundred. No, wait. There is a box of two... Wait. Starting from your mouse, there is a box of a hundred surrounding it. So the box in total is a two hundred by two hundred, but your mouse is in the center. So it makes a little hitbox around your mouse and erases all the beans if they are within that box. Shrink to fit. Hang on. Is that the array thing? Is m.beans a list of... It's a vector. Okay. Oh, oh, I see. This is another one of those um, lambdas. I see. Shrink to fit deallocates memory. Yeah. Okay. It's not strictly necessary, but it is there. So it means if you were to theoretically make a zillion beans and make a massive array and then delete all of them, it would uh, remove that massive array and make it much smaller. Right? That makes sense. You can see messages again. Cool. So erase, remove if. I have no idea what this does, honestly. So it goes through the beans, and for every bean in there, it checks to see if the hitbox intersects this box. This mouse clicking box. m.beans.end. Removed if is a strange boy. Remove if first last predicated. Predicate? This is called the erase remove idiom. Explain yourself, friend. Hello was taken. Are you on Ubuntu right now? How are you enjoying yourself? Or have you managed to get windows to work? It's not mind numbingly awful today. Remove if doesn't actually remove anything, it just puts the stuff to be removed at the end, and then you can call erase to anything you want to remove at the end. I see. So it's sort of like if you have a pa if you have a massive line of skittles randomly coloured and you wanted to remove every red skittle, remove if would zoom through it, and every time it seems a red skittle, it would put it to the end of the list. And it would just keep doing that until eventually you have, you know, blue, green, and yellow, or whatever, over here, mixed up, and then a bunch of red in a straight line, and then erase mo cuts off at this point and chucks out all these red, red, all these red skittles, and then you've got this big array where there's only stuff like here with a big gap, so then you do shrink to fit to cut out this gap where you just removed stuff from, right? Is that the right idea? Why do you do that? Is that much faster than iterating through, deleting, iterating, deleting, iterating, deleting, iterating, deleting? Like, when you use remove if, does it actually squish it together? Like, does it move the red skittle from here to here, and then also squish the rest of it down by one? So if, there's it, if it's red... Sorry, if it's blue, red, blue you'd remove the red, and instead of being blue gap blue, would it be blue blue? It's more efficient than erasing one at a time. It's just it's just an efficiency thing. Okay. I see. 
and then update the bean text. Sounds like it iterates the list once instead of constantly. What does that mean? Anyway, um, reserve. Does that reserve memory inside? So it reserves the array. So it's saying I could have another thousand things in here. Please set that up. Which I don't think is necessary, is it? Is it just a good idea to do? Four, zero, up to a thousand. So a thousand times, add a bean to that point. Is that actually- you actually had a thousand beans when you see up. Is that a thousand beans? It is as well. Look at the bean counter going up. Reserve is just a memory efficiency thing, yes. It allocates that much memory so it doesn't have to allocate each time you add a new bean. I see. So it says, here's a thousand things, and then after that you just slot, 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 slot. Instead of doing, here's a new thing, can I have more memory? Here's a new thing, can I have more memory? Here's a new thing, can I have more memory? Blah, 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 blah. It says, here's a lot of memory. Add stuff to it. Zoom, 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 zoom. I see, I see. And I see, yeah, I just only just noticed that delete works in a big box around the cursor. So if this whole window is like 600 wide, it's about a sixth of the screen, right? So if I go right to the left, that's about a sixth. That's about a third. That's about two thirds. That's the last third. That makes a lot of sense. All right. None of that stuff is strictly necessary. It's just a good idea. I see. So M beans reserved is that invite bean to screen, update bean text. Easy game, right? So that's checking events, yeah? If you remember where we were before, I don't remember, honestly. We were inside the loop, right? Up here, brother, loops. So this is, this is our running. So we're running constantly and updating the physics. We're handling the events very first. Check to see if there's any keyboard inputs and stuff because you want to have, you want to have that happen before anything. Then update, send in the amount of time Delta time seconds count. So is that the time since the last update? You send in that. You're calling it delta time here, though. An update says to all of the beans in the list of beans to update their own physics. So that was the thing where it's like... Well, you can go into it, actually, quickly. That's where it's like, move it, rotate it, check to see if there's a collision for every bean every update cycle, hundreds of times per second. It's insane that it can do it so efficiently, but I guess it is fairly basic maths, right? And computers are really good at that. It's incredible how efficient a bloody computer can be, though. Here it is, like, thousands of times calculating for 22,000 things and individual physics and collision and door. It's incredible. Eventually you want to pub-sub the events into polling and if statements. The observer pattern. Oh, I remember patterns. We had to like rem we had to memorize those and like the UML diagrams for them. Observer. Oh, it's where you're like watching, and you send off a trigger. It's a bit overkill for simple games, yeah. Good to know though. Good to know. Oh yes, you watch. Hey, Fortberg. Oh, Fortberg. I haven't seen you in a while, man. Four gigahertz, four billion operations. It's just insane when you remember, right? Like if your CPU is running it, four gigahertz. It can do four billion things per second. Is it per second? It can do a lot of stuff. Computers are crazy. And then you wonder why it takes so long to like save a Word document. Like what happened? Anyway, there's the game update, whatever. All it does is tell all the beans to update. Easy game, right? In there you can do the bean update and then the update for all like the items flying around the screen or whatever. I see. Would add a lot of overhead. Yeah, isn't the point of patterns is for like programmer readability and like making your code much easier to extend and make larger, right? That's the main idea. Also, if you're using Java and you want to do anything whatsoever, you have to use patterns and factories. Bloody factories. What's this fancy new game? This is Donuts Bean Woolen.exe. We're reading through it and then I'm going to start making a Toho clone. Lazy middle bean. It's a very lazy bean. You like this fellow here? Just doing her own thing. Anyway, draw. Draw is the final one. Bap. What happens in end the draw? So every single time we're updating, checking the keyboard, updating the physics, then we draw. We clear 
everything on the window. So theoretically, if this was really slow, like if this little section in here was slow, you could add a pause, you'd see it blinking. You guess you could probably batch an SFML. How does that work? Oh god, I ordered new uh, ear cups for these, by the way, because they're actually like fallen off. I don't know if you can see, but um, my ear cups for this isn't actually connected to the earphone, and this one here is just destroyed. So I've got a new one in the post. No, I don't know if it's going to be good. It costed like four pounds, but like so did these. So this probably okay. It won't blink. It doesn't swap the bone buffer until M window display. That's the magic of double buffering. Fantastic. Yeah. So it, it's. This is what it wants to do next. Like, does it do... Double buffer is where it has the thing you're drawing, the thing it wants to do, and surely not the other thing it wants to do, I don't know. But, like, it's like it just swaps these two and then draws the other one. Right? It, like, draws them in inverse. Something like that. You draw everything on the back buffer and don't flip it to the front buffer until you're done. Okay. So, this is the update from zero. I'm still drawing, still drawing, still drawing, still drawing. Now I'm done. Now I'm going to draw from one. Dun, da, 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 da. Now I draw from one. Ba, 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 ba. I see. Are you hanging out in the Bullet and Hell Engines Discord server? I'm not. I didn't know that was a thing. Instead of a thousand draw cells for beans, you make a single draw call and it handles the array of sprites. Oh, that's pretty neat. Or would be. Imagine Wordogs take forever because it's just a fat zip file. But yeah, I was doing like a lot of uh, stuff on the disk. Anyway, so, every time we want to draw, on the buffer, we... C by the way, is it double buffered by default? Is this just like a thing? Can you specify that you want it to just do it as fast as possible? Because this technically adds a tiny, tiny bit of input lag, right? Or, or what feels like input lag, right? Because you'd be... You, you don't actually see what's on screen until it's been updated. Or until it's finished drawing the last frame. Every game since the 80s is double buffered, so don't worry about it. Okay. I remember doing this stuff in, like, game development at uni, and I don't remember. What song is this? This is... Isn't this the uh, Lost Woods? 46. Farron Woods. This is Farron Woods, yeah. This is, like, the start of the game. We've, we've uh... Fortberg, we streamed Twilight Princess yesterday, and we'll be streaming again tomorrow. Why don't you watch? Anyway. We move on. We move on. So, for every bean, we draw the bean. Sure. Auto bean. For every bean in the list of beans, we draw the bean. Draw being... Is that is this what we overwrite it? So bean... Is bean extending from a particular object? Actually, let's go look. Where am I looking? Well, it would be in the header file, wouldn't it? What is this bollocks over here? Bean.header. Aha! It does. My bean is extending. I see. So, bean extends from drawable, right? Anything that is a drawable will have a draw function. We are overriding it here. It even says override. So theoretically, if this wasn't here, it wouldn't do anything. So I think Donut said you have to override it. But bean as a class is a type of drawable. So over here in the game file, we can just call draw on it, because it just thinks this is a drawable object, and it just calls draw on it. And when it calls draw on bean, it executes the function right at the bottom, which draws to the target the sprite in the current state, so where it is in the rotation, right? If you get up early, it's rather early for you right now. I do it from 11 to 5 UK time, so like four or five hours ago. I would start. I don't remember where you are, Fullboat. Game.c++. Where were we? Oh, we're here. So for every bean, tell them to draw. Then draw the FPS text. Then draw the bean text. Then display. What? Oh, we must be looking at... We must look at the other functions so we can see how that works. Render state is some weird bollocks. It doesn't have to do with the position. It's like post-processing and stuff. Oh, okay. My bad, then. Got these are like horrible in my ears. I'm going to quickly check my emails. I want to see if, uh... Let's remove some of these beans. Slow bean must today. I keep getting spam from, like, fake TV licensing. 3, 4 in the morning in maple syrup land. I guess so. I always see the VODs. Maybe? What time is my evening stream for you? Is that a good time? That happens at... 
7 to 11. This song is Tom. A song of healing from Majora's Mask. Is it? Ba, ba, ba. Ba, ba, ba. Yeah, this is Song of Healing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is good. Alright. So that's that's the game loop. Let's have a look through the setup stuff then. So now we know what's happening constantly. I want to know how it's initially set up. So the first thing you do is load the command line options, which is a special thing. Donut, did you just write this from scratch or do you sort of know what you're doing here? That's one in the afternoon for you. Okay. We're doing, I think, Team Fortress today. So, four command line options that have been passed in. So we passed in like an option, like max FPS. We'd do this loop once, this whole thing. Constant whatever argument equals viewing it as a string. So this is going to be a standard string view. Okay, so we're now looking at, you know, dash FPS max 60 or whatever as a string. This is an argument that's been passed in. If it's dash help or some variant of help, throw out this thing to the screen. Can I do that? Can I do that now? No, you have to do, um, you have to actually find the game, which is like build bin debug woolen dot exe help. Yeah, okay, cool. I can't believe I've learned that already, brother. 69 months. Hell yeah. Close enough. Now look at anything to have a billion if statements, but it does the job. It's fine. I know you had like a really nice one. So help just shows you all the options in this sort of layout. That's quite nice. So wait, can I run this in 8-bit then? So BBP 8. And then do I just do space and another thing? Or do I have to separate them by a comma? Can I do like... Max FPS 120 Full screen 1 Invalid video mode Invalid video mode, 640 by 480 at 8. Well, let's ignore full screen then. Oh, I can launch two beans now. It doesn't show the right bean. This doesn't seem to do anything, Donut. Changing it to... Can I change it to, like, two? Changing the bitrate, the, the bit doesn't seem to do anything. Or the depth. Is it not meant to do anything? It might be bought. Okay. You just pass it to SFML. Oh, okay. Oof. What kind of JoJo game are you making? You don't actually know what it does with it. Okay, but that was, it was the idea was that you could have command line options, I guess. Anyway. So, if there's a width plus a value, pass it. Okay. Set max FPS, whatever. Create main window. Well, set max FPS is just... Oh, here we go. Actually, it's setting up the delta time. So if it's zero, if there's no max frame rate, update the physics and draw as fast as possible. Otherwise, draw it at one divided by the max frame rate. So one divided by 60 being like one... Wait, what? Well, hang on. Is that actually 16? One divided by 60 equals 0 0.166666, etc. Yeah. Which is every 16 milliseconds or so. 0, 0.00 or something. It's like pretty far down. Right. And that's the amount of times per second you want to update that thing. Epic. Create main window. I want to look at this as well. So you send in the width, the height, the bit depth, the title, full screen, and vsync. Oh, here we go. So to create the window, like this actual thing, we... what is this? Const auto video mode. I'm, I'm not sure what that is, but that is that a type of window, maybe? We have a variable for that, based on the width and height and bit 
depth. Maybe? Video style. I see. So if you want there to be a title bar, which you can't see because it's window capture. Video mode is just a struct with some window options. Okay, so this is the window then, right? We're, this is the window. Win video mode. This is the window. The window. We're, get, we're, say, we're setting it so it has a title bar and a close button. Window is M window. Video mode is not the window. Where is M window? Oh. What is M window? M window is a render window. Okay, so this window is a render window. Video mode is something else. It's what we're applying. Are we applying that to the window? Creating. Yeah, I see. So, render window is this block, this actual physical thing. Video mode is how we're setting it up. Right? It's the settings. Yeah. So we have it as a certain width, certain height, certain bit depth, with a title and an X. If it's full screen, and you're allowed to have it at that bit depth and resolution, set it to full screen. Just an SMML thing. You can change anti-aliasing and stuff with it. Okay. That's a thing. Does it just have, like, built-in effects like that? If the window is open, already, if it's not, if it can't open... What, okay, wait, let's, let's look through this properly. So if it's full screen, whatever. Then we create the window. We, like, we call the create function on the window with those settings and the title and the style. It's built-in anti-aliasing. I mean, all anti-aliasing is, right, is that you get a bit and then you change the colour on it based on the things surrounding it, right? Like, you can do a simple anti-aliasing like that, can't you? Uh, okay, so if the window didn't open after creating, we just say that there was a failure. Cool. V-Sync. V-Sync. Set key and A. Okay, this is the thing we, we just added. So no, no delay when I'm spamming E, please. Don't know, there's still a delay when I spam E. Do you see this? It ain't working, brother. That shouldn't happen, should it? Oh, this is hurting my ear. Why is this hurting my ear so badly? I can't wait for, like, the replacement ones to arrive. That doesn't work properly. The if statement should work. Did you build in release mode? No. Maybe the delay is the printing, not the key getting recognised. That wouldn't make sense, would it? Surely it should just print whatever I want it to. I shouldn't care about the Windows thing, should it? Anyway. God, that hurts my ear. Stop this, brother. M bounds is a rectangle of the window's height. Okay, so all the window does, make the settings, make the window, do some various small settings and set the bounds based on zero, zero, window width, window height. Sometimes standard out buffers. Okay, you know what I hate actually? Um, they added an update to Android Studio, the program used to make, you know, Android phone apps. Um, where it groups together your printouts if they're identical, which is horrid. This you pressed E would just be you pressed E multiplied by like 10, then a second later, 200. It's horrible. Standard end L if you use C out. No, we're not using standard C out. We're using some his library thing. Or is this is this for the if keyboard thing is pressed? Anyway, it shouldn't matter. No, it shouldn't. That shouldn't matter either. Anyway. 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 Load font. Font file size. It just loads a font. Like this is not that interesting. It sets the string and sets the position. This is the bit I'm interested in. So the text position is 0, 0, which is... Oops. Which is there. And the bean text is the position. And then a whole text size below. mfont.getLine spacing. That's just the size of the font's height. So like the line spacing for this font will always be 56.1 pixels or whatever. So it just grabs that and then puts the beans below it by 1. Power balancing from release.exe. Hang on. 
The terminal doesn't work anymore, brother. What is this? So instead of debug, oh god, I just pressed on it, didn't I? You want to do it in release? Oops. Okay, there's the beans again. I need to go for a Wii again chat and also to move my legs, so I recommend all of you that have been sitting down go have a quick move. I'll be back in another minute or so. Have a good little short break. I'm back. What's up? Not peeing in his chair. Weird. Roland has gone quickly. Post more emails. Continue with debug. I don't think the repeat state works. It didn't work for you a few years ago. You thought it would be fixed. Oof. Microtransactions? Hell yeah, brother. I'll be storing your credit card's information properly. Don't worry. Here we go. This is very broken. There a Christopher door opening. What is this? It's just so wonky, these headphones. How, wait, how many people do you think buy new headphones whenever these break? Like, the little pads. Do you think people, like, actually, like, go and spend, like, another £200 on, like, the most best expensive headphones just because the cup's broken? Even though it costs, like, £5 to replace it. If keyboard is key press, see how I press the... This reads the key state snow simulation now. You went with mono sound for two years. No, I don't mean I don't mean the actual thing. I mean like the pad. Can you replace the cups on beats? Can you not? Replace beat wait, what do beats look like? Hang on, can you not replace the ear cups on beats? Seriously. They are a scam. Yeah, but like, a fashionable scam, you know? At least like if you get snake oil, like no one cares if you have snake oil, but if you have Beats headphones, people are like, yo brother, you got the cash dollar. Your headphone cup snapped off when it was held in place with glue and string for a year before you replaced it. I mean, I could use anything to hold these in, right? What software do you use for three models? I think he's using, um, you said you were using Blender, right? God, that hurts. Yeah, these ear, these earphones are like, Folding up my ears, something bad. 
Oh, Solid Edge, my bad. Wait, who was using Blender? Alright, let's get on with it, brothers. We're nearly done. Loading font, max FPS, loading texture. If load from file, is that a thing that you can do? Is that like a, a method? Maybe that's in here. Try to load it, otherwise you can't load it. Set up random number generator. It just seeds and sets up some random parameters. I see. Set up beans. Width, height, center of the screen. Clear, reserve three, invite to screen. Wait, by default, is it meant to load three beans into the screen? Can we press... I like this one. SFML function. It does when you start the program. I see. So by default, when it first loads up, it puts three beans in the middle of the screen. I see. Should reserve and invite to screen be in its own thing? Oh, actually, wait, that's right. Because... Donut, oh, no. is it not... Should invite bean to screen not have reserve in it, so you don't have to type in reserve every time you want to invite a bean? What's your plan for textures in the game, if you can ask? Um, Aspirate and using my mouse. You haven't modelled ever and you managed to pick it up fully in two days. Hell yeah. You don't know how many you'll add. Reserve one is pointless. So does this not actually do anything? This is just for efficiency. Right? What's the point of clear if this is the first setup? Is it just there for, like, good faith? This is for efficiency. Okay. So you only ever want to use this in extreme circumstances, like, in the setup. Or in the middle mouse where you put a thousand in. Close in case you want to do call setup again. Yeah, that's that seems that seems like a good good reason. But you never want to call setup because surely you wouldn't want to set the width height in the middle again. Or in case maybe in game you'd add an option to change the window height and size, and you'd want to yeah maybe you'd want to like reload the width and height of everything. Okay, handle events we've gone through. Oh, we can just hide the stuff we've read through, can't we? Update, draw, clear. Well, that's it, right? Have we read through the whole thing now? Great main window, all this stuff. I think we've gone through the whole thing now, right? You can call cool setup in the reset state. It just looks at them. Okay, you're checking out their website right now. What is Solid Edge? I've never heard of it. Oh, come for it. You missed find topmost bean at. I think I have, haven't I? Random velocity, update text, invite to screen. Oh, actually, we should look at these. We haven't done everything. Random velocity sends a random like generates a random number for angle and magnitude and stores that as a cosine and a sine of the angle multiplied by magnitude sure this is maths this is like i'm sure basic maths like velocity from angle magnitude and storing it as a vector right I think I should know that, and I don't I don't remember it, but I should know that. It's a 3D modeling program, it's from, it's from Siemen. <laughs> Excuse me? I was gonna pronounce that as Siemens. What is it? Siemens. The vector is magnitude multiplied by sin but shorter. Right. This is where you pay attention to maths and school chat, so you don't get shown up on screen. They're going to Cartesian coordinates from polar coordinates. Oh, okay. You pronounce it correctly. Is it actually called Siemens? Are you kidding me? Yeah, I don't know maths, man. Angular velocity, whatever. Update beam text just sets the string. Oh, do you just draw it every frame based on what it is? You don't redraw it. Oh, I guess so, because in the draw function, right, you're clearing the whole screen. Could you, is there any way to have like layers? So you could have, you only ever update the text when it's updated instead of updating it every single frame, even though it doesn't need to be. So right now, is it updating FPS every, like, you know, 120th of a second? They didn't start in an Anglophone country. Funny. Redrawing everything is much more convenient. Isn't it really slow? Like, I know it takes an instant to draw frame rate, but isn't it a good idea? Well, say you have a big background layer that's, like, 8K for some reason, and it never moves, and it's static. Surely you just want to have it there? It's not slow, every 3D game is there everywhere. I mean, sure. 
But like, if you want to have the game run like a billionth of frame rate higher, is that like a thing you could do to make it run a bit better? Oof. All right. Invite bean to screen. Takes in a position, and adds in place back. Just adds to the back of an array, or the end of an array, I guess. It adds the bean texture, the position, the velocity, a random velocity, a ra random angle, and zero. What is zero? No, I don't want to see what in place back is. I want to see what m dot beans is a vector of bean. Oh, so this is this is a new bean. This is oh, it's not Java, of course. So in Java, you do like right, you do like new bean, and then uh, encapsulate it like that. But this is C plus plus, so you don't have to do new bean and then in brackets. It just knows this is a bean that you're placing in. You have to keep track of the exact pixels to write and replace, and it would be a pain. Only word processors do stuff like that. And placeback calls the constructor for you. Yeah, 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 constructor. So this is just the constructor for a bean which is here. So it takes a texture, position, velocity, angle, and velocity. So the angle is zero by default, is it? Okay. That makes a lot of sense. That's really convenient. So you could theoretically make a new bean here on this line, and then that put the new bean in there, right? New boy, and then pop him in there. But this is more C++ y Yeah. And instead of just having this written every time you invite bean to screen, you encapsulate it away, because really all you need to know is the position. I see. And if you wanted to say, like, spawn item, you'd do spawn item, and then, like, some, like, item ID, and then in here you'd do, like, mbean texture equals something to do with the item ID, and then pass that in here. And maybe add the ID in there or something. Terrific. Placeback is more efficient because it constructs it straight into the vector where it'll end up. Also, oh, it like literally goes into that slot of memory and just places it in, in, in bit by bit, instead of over here, first making it and then moving it in. It doesn't copy or move the meaning, it constructs it in place. That's convenient. So instead of building the house somewhere, picking it up and then moving it to the, uh, the lot, you're actually just moving to the lot and building the house brick by brick there. Are there any areas to do with reading? Like, if you if invite bean to screen happens at the same time as you're trying to read the final bean, does anything bad happen, or does it not does it not allow you to read there until it's done? Or because it's a vector, is it just magic? It's more complicated, it's slow to find out the deltas between previous frame and the current frame, and any filling will happen. Full rewrite is quicker. There is no threading. This program isn't thread safe at all. Oh, monk it has. This should be fine. Monk it has. Yeah, you know, um, how does multi-threading work in, in here? Because in Java, right, or in Android, you just do, like, new thread. And then, like this. Wait, hang on. Like, here's like, your new thread, and then you do, like, dot start. Right? That's how you multi-thread in Java, sort of. That's, like, a basic way to do that, right? Say I want to, like, load something. You know, download from server. And then you do dot start. I think that might even be start like delayed. And then you can have like some milliseconds in there. How would you do that here? It's just standard thread. You just do like. How do you... What's the equivalent of that in here? Is that your thing with like the lambda where you do like that, that, that? So args stuff with args. Is it like that? Include it first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But is it that sort of thing? And then here, if I wanted to do that bollocks from before, you could do the ampersand or whatever. You have to give the thread a name, though, so you can join it later. So you do, like, Bob is my new thread. Here is his logic. Like this. And you pop him in there. That's the lambda, but the body is this. Oh, so it's the lambda is actually bollocks, arguments, Stuff with arguments. What was bollocks again? Is that just setting up the pre stuff? You, you said there was, an ex there was a reason for this. Int who print who or whatever. It's the capture list. So you want to get like Psyduck in there. Maybe like a Venomoth. Is the capt captures the variables from its scope. You see, this is the stuff you learn in university. 
could you just say, it says these are the things you can work with from the local area. How about that? Captures the variables from its scope. <laughs> Next you'll be saying compile instead of buildy wildy. Get out of here. Alright, anyway. Rehome bean erases it. Could you call it it? Could you have called it individual bean to rehome? And then you could have done that, right brother? Why'd you have to call it it? You never saw lambdas in uni. We didn't either. If you don't want to care, just use ampersand to auto capture everything by reference. You order it for iterator. <laughs> yeah, that's actually very standard. Sorry, I didn't read the iterator bit. I thought you were calling the bean the it. Okay, so you pass in the iterator, which is at that point in the array, and then you erase that from the array. Does that mean we won't end up like a massive array with gaps in it as we start to delete stuff? Does it ever squish them together? Or does it not really matter? Because well, I guess it always in places at the back, doesn't it? But theoretically, could you go so long and then blah blah blah, and then so long and then blah blah blah? Erase squish stuff together. Okay, good. Because even if you do uh, shrink to fit, that only cuts off the end, right? So I was thinking maybe there'd just be a very long list with gaps in it. Okay, cool. Convenient. Find topmost bean at point. Begin is the start of the bean array. Rend, I guess R end. Why are you calling it R? Reverse, rend. What, 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 is, re what is reverse begin re rend? Does that mean that you're iterating f end to start? Why? I mean, I don't mean why. That makes sense. But why? Why is that its own thing? Why is that not just using begin as end and end as begin? Sorry. Or does that does that exist because it automatically does like minus one instead of plus one as it's iterating? One at a time, please. Eight or is the official name for iterator? Yeah. Okay. Re begin. Re end. Reverse it. Reverse iterator equals standard fine if. And here's your little your little lambda. So grab everything as a reference. Don't change it. Reference is grabbing a copy from the library. Passing by value is taking the book from the library, then fucking with it and then placing it back. The most recent bean is found like that. Yes, yeah, so the topmost bean. So do you instantly Reverse it because find it. Does it stop the moment it finds the topmost bean? Like, does it just completely cut out? Like, this just finds one thing. It doesn't just go through in case anything's in the point. Reference is no copy. Explain yourself, brother. Yeah, as soon as it returns true, it stops and returns the iterator. Hey, brother. Hell yeah, brother! Thank you! Did you have some? You sure? It looks like a mouth mark here on the, on the bowl. Oh, I did not have any of it. That looks like a mouth mark, Christopher. On the inside of the thing. That's really good. It's just orange juice, isn't it, brother? Is this the mouldy orange? Yeah. It was like a stalactite of mould. Do we need to leave this here? Thanks, brother. Ooh. Bye. Sorry, what do you mean by references no copy? Oh, I'm thinking of- I'm thinking- I'm inverted it, haven't I? Passing by value is copying, passing by reference is passing where it is. Alright, I mixed them up then. As I'm sure everyone does, right? 
Passing by value is when you go, I'm passing a copy of the book. Passing by reference is passing where it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because everything in Java, except for some... Uh, atomics. No, not they're not called atomics. What are they called? Stuff like int. Some things like aren't passed by value. They're passed by reference, which is kind of confusing. But your hi-fi amp crackles every time lightning goes by. Look at us. A reference is an alias for the variable instead of a pointer to the reference. It's cleaner. In Java, everything is a reference pointer instead of a built-in type, which is confusing as heck. Yeah, it's a little annoying. Strings and arrays and stuff and other small floats and stuff are passed by value. Yeah, but I think it varies even there. Because if you do capital S string, that is the class, like, encapsulator for string. And then if you unbox that and get the uh, little string... No, string's a stupid example. Or is it? String might be a... What's the word? Help. I've got it on, like, the tip of my tongue. String's not what you call a built-in type, but I was pretty sure strings get to pass by value. It's, it's a bad example. Int. Integer versus int, right? Integer with a capital I in Java is a class, or an object. Int with like a little i is what's stored in there. And the little int is passed box. Yeah, I'm thinking of boxing and unboxing and stuff, but you could, that's what you want to do. It's a boxed int. Yeah. But like the boxed integer with a capital I, that's passed around by value. Whereas the little thing inside is passed around by reference. If you want to take that specifically. What's it called? I've, it's, I've got it on the tip of my tongue. It's like reminds me of cavemen. Primitives. It's called a primitive type, brother. I think. Is it primitive? Does that sound about right? I think that's right. Anyway. Pass option value, pass option value. This just heckin' reads it and then returns some shit. It's hailing. Yeah, it's a primitive type. It stopped raining here, it's just sunny now. Okay, chat. I think we've managed to read through everything, right? Are we, are we ready to start programming? Four and a half hours in. I thought that was going to take like an hour to read through everything, or like half an hour. From Cars is pretty modern and cool. Is it May? It is May the like first or second today, yeah. First. All right, brothers. Are we ready to go? Are we ready to start doing something? Are we ready to start like planning and thinking? I think we might be, right? It's mate. Woho light. Okay, I'm gonna make a stupid fold file. Just in here. Can I do that within here? Can I not? File. New file. I'm gonna call this... Can I rename it? Can I not rename it, lads? You can set up- start setting up the git repository. I'm not gonna do that yet. Save first. Oh, it tells you. Okay, I'm going to call this notes.txt. And we're just going to do this because it's lazy and keeps it a long time the rest alongside everything else. Nice and easy. Actually, wait, I've got GitHub Desktop, right? I can just store it. It's like, do I want to store it on my actual, like, real name GitHub? Oh god, I've got all these changes from my, like, work. You have to do.txt in every project. That makes sense. I don't know, we'll think about it. Is it... No, I probably should just store it in my actual GitHub, right? Because that means it looks like I'm using my actual GitHub, right? You can do it on a local repository. Oh, then I have to use, like, dash git and stuff, don't I? Actually, you have to learn how to use the command line instead of just using the desktop program for GitHub. Anyway, here's our notes.txt, right? Notes. Right? We're gonna leave it like one tab indented. This is where our notes go, chat. This is how you keep your brain organized. This is how I'm gonna keep my brain organized at least. You haven't learned git add, git commit, m bah, git push mantra yet. No, I haven't. Alright, can I do that here? Or do I need to install something? Do I have Git on my system because I have the GitHub program? 
Or do I have dash git in my uh, command line? Do you reckon? There was a built-in git client in VS Code. Try typing git in terminal. Oh, so I need to close the program, I think. Git is not recognized. Debug console? Just install it. Do I need to download... Wait, is there, a, is there maybe an extension for it? Get the lame. You made a little bean you're posting in the old Discord. Hell yeah, brother. Get lens. Supercharge get into Visual Studio code. How do you use it? Alright, I don't care. Let's leave it for now. I'll just use the GitHub desktop at some point. You need git bash in that case. Maybe it is a good time to learn how Git actually works, you know? Why not? Chat, teach me how to use Git, because I use Git the desktop thing, but not the command line one. Windows S Git. What does Windows S do? Oh, it's the start screen. Yeah, no, it doesn't do anything. If you install Git and add it to your path, you can use it in VS Code. Download Git. Git. Distributed as the new centralized. Download for Windows. Your download is starting. Save file. EXE. Run. Next. Next. Is there a way to... Additional icons. Use Vim. No, use Notepad++, brother. Get from the command line and also from third-party software. Yeah? Use the OpenSSL library. Whatever. Please just use the Windows console. Okay, I'm installing it, I think. Does this have an option to add it to the path? I don't- I think it might have. I don't know sure. Git Bash is a program you need to download separately. It sounds like something you do in school. You like play Git Bash. This is launch Git Bash. I think I've just got. What is this? It's on my iPad. Okay, I think I have it. It says Ming W64. How are you still alive? How do you sell an hour of that electricity? Is your internet? Your, your, your power went out yesterday and it can't go back until 11. Holy hell. So can I type git now? So it would just say my, my like first name, which doesn't matter, because that's the name of my folder anyway. That doesn't seem to do anything. Do I need to check my path? Set environment variables. Path. Edit. Yeah, I don't think git's been added. GitHub bin has been added, but git hasn't. Do I need to find that? Is that like git.exe? Is that this? Do I need to like shift? Copy as path. It's already in the path, you might need to restart. It's not already in the path, so I'm gonna add it. I'm assuming it's git.exe, right? It is program files git command git.exe. Alright, let's just, whatever. I've added it to my path, I think. Let's close. Open up Visual Studio. Terminal. Git. Hey, look, there's git. Right? So what do I do? If I want to set up a folder to store my uh, my version controlled things in. You're being a small bits in art. Oh, I'll take a look now. Git in it. Initialize empty depository. Does that mean I can see it here now in the folder list? This green is green because it's linked with uh, Git, so it means it's been edited but not saved. 
Hang on. What is this little weird icon in Discord? I hate it. Uh, art. Where is Bean? Oh, God, there's so much art I haven't seen. Oh, that is actually just a tiny bean. <laughs> like an actual bean. All right. Brilliant. Sorry. Do git add to add dot. You added git in a git ignore, so it will automatically add files not to add. Just, just git add dot. That, don't use uh, add a. You got to explain. You can't say this. You have to say this because, because otherwise I'm not going to learn bollocks, and I'm just copy and pasting out of chat. What am I doing? Am I adding new files? What's the difference between dot, dash, a, and star? Star is presumably everything. Dot is current directory. Star is presumably everything, and dash a is what? Everything. You know? Git add help. Is that a thing? Gulp. Git add dash a adds all. Or just whatever, add all. LF will be replaced by CLF in main.cpp. What does that mean? Oh, it adds all, including all the folders and stuff. So if you have separate folders, it would add all the stuff in the other folders. Dot is just the stuff in the current folder. Git makes video makes the entire game for you. No, it's done. Wow, insane. Git good. Git good is not a git command. <laughs> See, git help. Line feed will be replaced by carriage return. What are we coding? I don't know. They're telling me to. They're calling me gits. It's really offensive. Is this in my downloads? Oh, that downloads folder doesn't exist. Where is this? Woolen SFML 69. Fuck, am I looking at? Dot git. I don't know what I'm looking at. It's probably fine, right? Now that everything's added, do a commit. So you do git commit. Um, first commit. Twelve files changed. Nine hundred and seventy-three insertions. Am I done now? Am I now version controlled, brothers? Git status. On branch master, nothing to commit, working tree clean. This is where you'd normally push to GitHub or whatever. Right. Okay. So if I change something, I can do save, and then what, like, git status. Ah, modified notes. I see. But if I get rid of that, does it know? It doesn't. Unless I save it, maybe. It's just been changed. Okay. You don't have it on GitHub, you don't have to do anything. Okay. Git add A. Git commit M message. Oh, you're doing it with a colon so you can do it all in one line. I see. Is that just like a copy and paste that you do constantly, just to add every file? Does it add any new file? Is it check? Oh, this is a new thing that's been created and add that to the, uh, the git. You can press up to get the last command. You might have added a new line and get realize it's the same file. If you want to open explorer at your current command line, type explorer dot. What? You can do that? Holy heck. Bean.png. I love it. Fantastic work. Git commit and Bushrashan works as well. Thanks, brother. Alright, so I'm in source right now. He's all these oh they think I think I'm using JetBrains C Lion. Notes.txt. Alright, brothers. Let's get with our notes. Here's our plan. Plan for the future. We're going to be making a Toho clone. Project. Whoa ho Project Woho. I'm gonna call it Project Woho. 
Project Woho, alright? This is our program. We need to start yoinking stuff down and thinking about what we're going to do for this little project. Because it's not going to be a massive thing. I'm not going to duplicate embodiment of the Scarlet Devil. We're just going to try and learn. We're going to try and have a character sprite that moves up, down, left, right, can't move off the side of the screen. We're going to try and have a set pattern. Or like we're going to have a thing that like generates maybe some like things that come down and you know circle around and then do their own thing. And we're going to have them generate at a particular pattern a bullet. And then maybe we also want to make it so you can shoot up, destroy them, maybe power-ups come down, maybe you can pick them up. And maybe just that for now. You know? You make a clown game with me. Hell yeah. Enemies with custom bullet generators. Maybe not even the bullets. Maybe we just want to have it so there's no bullets so far. And it's just the character moving around. And enemies coming down, moving, and then going off screen. Let's try and write some of this down. So here we are. Steps to doing stuff. Epics. Character... No, let's do, um... MC movement. So, like, the main character movement. That's That can be, like, an epic, brother. How about a text file that defines how they should spawn? File passing is fun. File passing is fun. But let's start, let's start here for now. So we want main character movement. We want enemy... Enemy, uh... Enemy spawning. Enemy wave spawning. Enemy individual moving. See, I'm calling them epics, because this isn't actually what you're meant to be calling epics. But it, it's easier to, like, define them, you know? So, we want main character movement, main char enemy wave spawning, enemy individual moving. How about also, like, MC... Shooting... Uh, enemy hit logic, enemy spawn item logic, power up logic, something like that, right? Well, they have AI. No, if we're doing a Toho clone, things are simple. So, like, the first enemy will always go left and then just off the bottom of the screen. And the 50th enemy will always go sort of like a little loop and then go off screen. Different enemy. No, no, no. We're not going anywhere with different enemy types yet, okay? None of that. Just one thing. One thing for now. Although maybe we could have two just to make sure we're doing object. Hmm. Polymorphism. Okay, let's stop. So these are like these are like the programming stuff to do. Programming to dos. And then we also wanted to, we need like textures for these. So let's do like graphics to dos so we need main character we need uh still move left move up move down move left move right um i don't think we need a thing for shoot do we we can have like particles around you when you shoot why why you do that? Oh my god, this autocorrect is annoying as hell. Can I turn that off? I bet I can, right? File preferences settings autocorrect. Really? I swear I saw this before. Oh. Is it one of these? Autocomplete, maybe. Is this just a text file? Is it one of these, brothers? Is it TypeScript? Yeah, aim trainer. Suggestions. Oh. Text suggestions. Is that this? TypeScript is JavaScript but typed. Oh.
Do I just turn off a word? Maybe. That one. Okay, yeah, that seems to work. Shoot start particles. Bullet particle, hit particle. God, it really tabs it out, doesn't it? Does the enemy really need sprites beyond just like just just like pixel? Maybe if I want to make it stop, it might have a different sprite. Because in Toho, it's just like a little fairy that like moves around, right? Pitching explosion. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Enemies don't really do much, right? Maybe like I'm about to shoot and not shoot, right? Keep things simple. Enemy death explosion. <laughs> death explosion. I know you want like maybe like some basic background. It can just be like grass. Come, do you want to try and maybe get some parallax going? Like we can have like a ground texture that slowly scrolls down and then like a cloud texture that like moves a bit faster maybe like slow scrolling dirt and ground fast scrolling transparent clouds space would be cool with stars ground sprites that scroll down and get bigger oh so it looks like you're moving forwards Maybe do a pa uh, an effect where stuff grows as it goes down to look like you're moving up and forward. Perspective. We'll see about that. Do you want to just do that then? Just for now? Because we can do stuff like having a main menu and like different states. We could do that actually, just as like as like a a full like a little like, like a little way to like code uh, like game states, right? Game states, yeah. This is already getting a bit messy. I don't like this like weird tabbing that it does that isn't properly done. Why does it do that? You know? Two dudes. So we're gonna put that in here, actually. So in here we'll do our game state logic. We'll do, um... Main menu... Play... Pause... Score. Maybe. Play, how about play, level, end, level, pause? How about that? Don't forget the settings menu. That can just be part of me. Oh, you want me to do it during... We can do that during pause, that's fine. Tabs or spaces? I'm doing tabs because it moves it further and it's more obvious. Like, I'm trying to very obviously separate these things. Let's do this actually. MC movement, shooting, dying. Enemy. Do that. Power up. Drop. Pick up. I don't know. Those don't need to be separate. Pick up and apply. Game state. 
main menu. I think this looks a little nicer, right? I kind of like the spaces there, actually. Yeah, this looks pretty neat, right? Four spaces. That takes forever, yeah. Alright, I like this. Programming to do's. Bunch of stuff. Graphics to do's. Uh, and then for the for the future we can do like audio to do's. Just to learn how they work, basically. So we'll just have like shoot bullet player. Shoot bullet enemy. Bullet hit. Player. Bullet hit. Enemy. Pick up item. That's that's about really the it really, isn't it? Oh, pause screen open. We can just use the same sound effect. Level complete. Uh, start game. Ambience. I don't, I don't really know if I care about that for now, so we'll just, we'll just have that off. Have fun, Enzi. Because honestly, I'll probably just record this, something. Maybe I'll do it like myself, I'll just go like... Something like that. We can just make the sounds ourselves. We can have, um, oh, you know what I could do? It would sound so annoying after a while, but I could make it so whenever you move, it makes a GameCube controller sound. Like... You know what I mean? Like, every time you change direction, if you went, like... That'd be kind of annoying after a while, but it's a thought, isn't it? I love GameCube. It's such a good controller. Like, oh my god. Nintendo, what have you done making the Switch? Put the GameCube controller on it. What's your reason for choosing C++? Fun, and I want to learn it. Oh, I want to learn it. I've already learned it. I want to learn more about it. I want to continue my education. No, not the sweaty melee player sounds. Please. I love the sound, though. And around Woho at 5,000 frames. Hell yeah. Alright, so those are the main things we need to do. Do you want to start doing these? We need to just, we need to actually think first of all. Initial to do's. We need to make some decisions. Um, settings. Keys. Level structure. Game flow. Alright. Let's get these things out here. Keys. Let's have... Let's have was movement. Space shoot. Esk. Pause. Yeah, that's all we really need, isn't it? Game level structure. Let's not worry about that now. Game structure flow. Settings. So I want to have, um, let's have a 640x480. No, wait, do I want that? Because you kind of want to design it in 4x3, don't you? Because it's nice to have, if you're having a vertical scrolling shooter, you kind of want the content to be happening in the middle. You don't want to have random shit off to the sides that you have to also pay attention to. 1280x960, is that a 4x3 resolution? It must be, right? Yeah, what's the default Toho size? Because I don't even know what the- like, the game- the game Toho, right? It's in, like, a screen, like... Like this, right? Yeah? But the actual game only takes place on, like, the left little section like this, right? And then, like, your scores over here, right? Lives. Loves. 
cute. And then you have your little player character down here, and then like enemies and stuff, right? No, I'm not gonna make a meme coronavirus game. This is my woho game. Yeah, 1980 by. Okay, so default resolution 1280x960. In-game play. Yeah, don't know. Is there? How would I um? How would I define the HUD from the rest of it? Is it? Is there possible to do drawing layers, or would I just have to draw it in layers and manually define the game area as being? 200 pixels by 400 pixels, oh, wait, width by height, yeah, like 200 by 8, like 600. And then I move that around the screen wherever. So the game area would be, think of my my little webcam here, right? This is the whole program. Here's the window, there's a the little X icon, whatever. The game area would be like here, and then the HUD would be like here, right? So I can define here as zero and here as width and height, no matter where I decide to put it and all the game logic can take place within that box. We didn't miss anything. You missed four and a half hours of us explaining the codes that Donut wrote already. But it's not relevant to this game, it's just relevant to our knowledge. But it means I can help explain as we go along a lot more. 640 by 480. Well, let's just run by this by default. In-game play area. Do you know what the in-game play area is in uh, Toho? You make your own custom window class that wraps render window and keeps track of where a specific window starts, like the huddle start at 0 by 0. You find the coordinates go between 0 and 1 and then scale them by the actual screen size just before you draw. I guess so. That isn't everything. It's literally everything. Yeah, you've missed the whole stream. So I think, wait, hang on, let's go into paint for a second. If it's 1280 by 960, can I type this yet? You can't. Thanks, paint. 1280... By 960? That's a very weird looking screen. 1280 by 960. Is that really the default game size? That looks weird. Maybe correct though. Hang on, chat. I'm gonna bring paint in. Here's Microsoft Paint. Right? This is. 1280 by 960, right? This size here, this whole thing is 1280 by 960. So if we want the HUD to be like over here, maybe? This over here is like the HUD. Maybe we want the game to be placed in, an, in, a, in a square so we can have 960 by 960. So if we'd make this 960, pull that in black, and then make it 1280. That makes a lot of sense, right? So we have like... Actually, let's make this look better. Let's have... Um... This can be the game. And this can be the HUD. That looks a lot nicer to look at. You have like, you know, score, lives, ETC. And then here is like the play area, which is 960 by 960. Should it not be 640 by 640 and then scale? Surely you want it to make sure that people can play it on tiny screens. Are they saying that? This is about the smallest screens you really get, isn't it? 640 by 480 seems like a good idea though, right? Hmm. You watched the first three, two or three hours. Are oh, you caught quite a bit then? I actually like the idea of it being 640 x 480 by default. You can make it an actual setting, like in the actual Toho. I might do that. Let's make it by 640. This whole section here, then, will be 480 by 480 units, or pixels, or whatever. So this area here is actually... Sorry. This area here is actually... Uh... Let's zoom in. 480 by 480. Hello? Black? Oh, yeah. 480 by 480. And the whole screen is 640 by 480. Right? Actually, let's let's uh, put this on the back and then move this down. All right, this makes a lot of sense, right? So this is just whatever. 
I don't know the maths, but maybe it makes... It's whatever 480 to 640 is. It's like that gap. Auto games with 640 by 480 by default and then change to other things. Yeah. This is 160 by 480, is it? Cool. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, so this is the play area. This is zero, zero. This is width by height, which is actually 480 by 480 by default. And maybe I'll actually use that. Maybe I'll use a built-in like coordinate system based on zero to 480. And then when it comes to scaling the screen, I just multiply it out. So if it's twice the size, I do 480 times two, or if it's like 0.1 the size, I do that. Yeah, what goes? Hey, Lupo. The Toho play area is more vertical. It really is, isn't it? But doesn't having a square make a lot of sense? It is like a lot thinner though, isn't it? It just, it makes a lot of sense to have it be square, doesn't it? Or does it not? Because this is a one-to-one. -one. Sorry. This whole thing is four to by three, and this whole section here is one-to-one. -one. That keeps it kind of simple, doesn't it? I like the sound of that. You think the vertical player is better? It might give you more space to roof. Having more vertical? By, by, by having more vertical, I'd have to cut out this, right? So I'd do that. Wouldn't I? Like, this is the resolution. Use SML sometimes too. Hell yeah. Oh, hang on, let's do it by 640 by 480, actually. 640 by... Right. This is the actual resolution of the screen. Six forty by four eighty. Having a square means you don't see in front of your sieve, depending on how you scale things. I guess so. So what would you recommend instead then? That we use uh, we make we make the main menu maybe two hundred pixels wide. This whole thing is. Hang on, I need to think about maths for a second. No, I don't. I just make this four hundred. Right. So I just do that, right? It's actually 600 by 400. Meaning that this stuff here actually gets stretched out a lot more. Toho screenshot. But the Hudden Toho is massive, isn't it? That looks about right, actually. Hang on. I wonder if that's actually what he does. What are you learning to code for? Fun. Oh, this is going to be for everything. I mean, anything that renders with... Anything that CMake can compile to. With our uh, chosen libraries. The closer and lower API levels. SDL might be better. You could, could you not just crash on, could you not crash, could you not just target a higher API level and just ignore people on bad phones? Hey Woolen, hey ho. Anyway, the game actually starts out a bit to the side, and then goes a bit more. I can just see how wide it is by doing this, right? So the Toho screen is actually about, let's say what, 380 by 450? So let's make that 380 by 450. X, hello? How's coding today? It's going well. We haven't coded anything yet, but it's going well. Hmm. You have a funny doggo video if you want to see. If you post it in Discord, I can have a look later. Six, six, 380 by 450 and then this can be the remaining stuff so get out of here brothers all right these are the things you do make to decide pretty early on so it's good we're doing it so if this whole thing is six this actually photoshop's probably better for this isn't it but whatever 
Oof. Let's say this whole thing is 380 by 450. And I make 380 by 450. 380 by 450 looks like this. That's this is the play area then, I guess. When you're done with paint, save as EXE and the game is ready. Hell yeah. Um so wait, what is this? 380 by 450. 380x450. So the game will be played on 380x450. What is Four, 640 by 480 is the whole screen. Can I get rid of some of these other lines I've made? They're a bit confusing now. That's not the right blue. And get rid of the orange. Just renamed to jpeg.exe. Export as exe. Hell yeah. So this whole thing is 640 by 480. Full screen. The little play area is 380 by 450. And this little bit off to the right can be whatever. I don't really care. We'll probably draw it based off the right hand side, honestly. Or not. We can have it come from here. We can just measure that. It's paint, right? Let's say everything starts at 400. So this point here is 400. Is here. That's this coordinate. This one is 380. So the, the, the score starts here, and then we just have whatever. I don't really care. This, like, that stuff does absolutely not matter. Whoa, ho. Ooh. That'd be 380 plus a bit, wouldn't it? Yeah, this little gap here. Do you think I know what a JPEG is? It would be plus a little bit, actually. You're completely right. I was just thinking of calculating that now. What is this? So what is 480 minus 4... Th that's 30. So there's a 30 height difference. I'm going to write this down just so I don't forget. 30 height difference. So it needs to start 15 pixels down. This is 15 pixels there. This is 15 pixels here. 15 pixels here. Yeah? Does that make sense? So this would be 380 plus 15, which is 395. Yeah? No, plus 30. Sorry, because it's 15 times 2. 15 and 15. 380 plus 30 is 410. So this HUD would start at 410, I guess. Um, and then in here, I, I, I like, actually just don't care. So this can just be marked as what ever. And then from that, it doesn't really matter, right? This is this is just the top. This is zero, zero. This is three eighty by four fifty. So this is e. Fancy single player scoreboard to see if you beat your old score. Ooh, that would include reading and writing. That would be fun. Let's add that. Uh, hold on to that thought for just a second. So this is the game board, right? Let's save this into the into the thing so we don't lose it. As like a little a little backup. Uh, downloads. Well, I just need to have this pinned to my like frequent menu, don't I? Let's do that. Uh, source. Let's call this board design dot. PNG, whatever. PNG V. I've saved it as a PNG V. That is not a file format. Dot PNG. Alright. So we can just remember this exists. Let's get rid of paint for a second. Bap. There goes paint. Just load this image into the game. You genius. 
You genius. You are a genius. Let's try doing that now as a little practice. No, actually, we need to write your idea down. Regular sulfate file saves of databases. I am not doing databases. Eat my bum. Ugh. We'll just, uh, we'll just, we'll just save it into like a uh, generic file. You could do a HUD background like that, actually. Yeah, I was thinking about that. And then we could replace it if we make an actual image in like uh, Aspirate, which is probably what I will end up using. Make your own extension. Don't worry, friends. We'll probably like hash it so people can't make up their fake scores. Although the problem is, this is probably going to be open source, so people definitely could make their own scores. So we just make it so if someone says a high score, you have to record it. That way we know they're legit. I could also make demos, I guess. Every, like, every frame save something to a file and constantly trash the hard drive. That would work. Thank you, Ties. Alright. Sorry, what was your idea? Single player scoreboard. Programming to do's. Game state. Uh, end level. So I guess you have the scoreboard at the end of level. So, um, scoreboard. Load old scores. Display score. Oh, oh, save new score. Select name etc. Let's have it in that order, actually. Not that it really matters. Um, and then uh, display scores. Maybe like share scores. Eh, I don't care about that. Yet. Well, on gameleaderboards.co.uk. Hell yeah, you're watching in 160p. Demo is a good idea. You don't have to save the files until it's done. I guess so, you could just hold it into RAM. How long- how- I guess if it's a- it's, if it's a rail shooter, basically, the demos only get to a certain size. So you can be pretty sure they won't get too bad. The benefit of GitHub or whatever would be that you always have a backup. That's- that was the main reason I would have it. But I'd want other people to be able to view it as well, right? You'll just break yourself instead of paying 15 bucks. I paid the bucks. I like Ace Bro. GitHub really good. I have a- I have GitHub, I use it for my work. I just don't know how I feel about releasing this on my real GitHub. I feel good about it. Maybe I should do it and just hide what it's called so you can't find it. I can make a private repo and add contrib contributors. I don't want to make a new GitHub account because I like the idea of saying that my current activity is on my GitHub there. You can make your own Aspirate all along, you already bought it. Anyway, whatever. Let's stop. These are the things you got to do. Do you want to start stupidly in the wrong place? Do you want to start by trying to load in that picture wherever the hell I put it? Where did I put the picture? Data? No. Source? No. Out? Build? Hang on. Where the hell did I save it? Oh, it's in, it is in source. It's called board design. Let's put it in... Uh, wait, hang on. What is this? Oh, this is version 6. I don't want version 6. Get out of here, brother. Uh, how do I delete this pin? Unpin. Downloads. I want Woolen Master Files 69. Here we go. Here we go. Pinning that to my quick access. So we want source. No, we want data. Data. Uh, let's call it uh, background. No, wait. Yeah, yeah. No, wait. Background's stupid. What's a good name for it? Backplate. I'm going to call it backplate because it's kind of obvious that it's something unique and weird. And I'm thinking of Lego. Let's go and actually, it's very stupid. Let's go and modify it and just see if, I could, if I've understood enough so I can start loading that in. So we want to go find the defaults and just modify those to 640 by 480 quickly. Where are the defaults? I have completely forgotten. Is that in setup? The CMX script you wrote automatically copies all data files to the XE when you compile, so make sure you put game files there, not your source, whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Main.c++? Game.header? Oh, it's game.header. Oh, it already is 640 by 480. Uh, so you want to have bean image file? This should, this should, this is going to get very messy if we start loading everything here, right? Should we have a separate header file called, like, textures or something? I don't know. But now, just for this instant, we'll put it there. We'll call it, um, backplate image file. And we'll call it backplate.png. Yeah. So we've got, we've got backplay.png loading. Loading. Let's go into game. Load bean textures. 
This is going to get very messy if we do it like this, but I, I just want to quickly see if I've learned enough. Load backplate texture. Backplate image file. Load bean texture. So we want, we, want to, we want to copy and paste this very stupidly. Again, I'm not I'm not intending to do this for the game, but this is just just for now. Load backplate texture, and we're loading in the backplate image file. If we're unable to load it from file. Oh, M. M back... Wait, hang on. M bean texture. M back plate. Hang on, where is M bean texture? Oh, it's here. It's stored in game header. M back plate texture. Now you have to add a couple of lines to load command options. How so? Add the function declaration in the header as well. Oh, you're right, you're right, you're right. Load bean texture. I thought that was, was kind of weird. Load backplate texture. Backplate image file. All right, that might work. It won't do anything, but that might load it. Otherwise, we won't be able to pass the option on the command line. What do you mean by the option? The option is in what? Yeah, I'm here. What What is the option? You can change the bean sprite. Oh, can you? A texture file to use for the bean. Oh, I'm not going to add a texture file for the background. That's going to take eight years if I do that for everything. Do you want me to copy and paste that as a background sprite in case people want to load a custom background sprite? Because we can just do that some other way. Yeah, that's why you added macros for it. I see. Well, I'm not going to do that. Surely? Automatically generate that stuff. That seems like a good idea. All right, should I just ignore that for now then? I think I can. Toho clean, yeah. So what we'll do on draw game, all the way down somewhere. So game draw, yeah. We draw the background first. So we're gonna draw M backplate. No. Is M backplate not a thing? Did I not make M backplate? Is game dot game dot header M backplate texture? Why do you keep switching between texture and image? You need to make a sprite for the texture. Can't draw texture. You need to bind to a sprite. Where? But this is already. I'm starting to see it's a little like just a tad messy. Um, make an SF sprite under the backplate texture. Does Bean have a sprite? Yes, SF sprite. Okay. I see, I see, I understand. So the reason Bean doesn't have one in here is because the Bean itself has a sprite. Um, so I just want to, like, have that over here. Because the backplate's never going to change, right? So the backplate can just be one sprite called M backplate sprite. So here's the sprite. After loading the texture, do set texture. So in the game setup over here, this is a good song. Yeah. So in the setup over here, load backplate texture. Let's go in here. So I'm going to assume that it's worked because it's thrown, right? So we just go in here. We do m plate texture dot set texture the texture. Oh, whoops, the other way around. Sprite dot text texture texture. Yeah. So I think what we're doing here is we're trying to load in the backplate texture, being that crap thing we just drew in paint. We're just loading that in. We're storing that as a texture. Then we have a sprite, which is an actual object that you can do loads of crap with. So it's not just an image file, it's got loads of random shit it can do. And we're setting its texture to that MS Paint picture. And then down here in draw. We're drawing that sprite. Yeah? 
Uh, presumably at zero, 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 zero. Like, does it just default at draw? Do I need to do anything? This could work. Do you think that might work? Because all I want is for it to draw that. Sprite has the position. Yeah, so the sprite by default should be zero, 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 right? So it'll just chuck it in the top left. And then just go... Bump. Done. Do you want to try it, lads? Let's see. Let's see if it even, like, renders. I didn't hit debug. Yo, brothers. It's a heckin' texture. Do you see it, brothers? It's right there. Hold champ. Hold you. Look, the beans are now bouncing around. Oh, lads. You know what we could do now, right? We can try and set the logic for these bouncy boys to be within this little square, right? Can we to make this a little bit bigger so you can actually see it? Let's do transform, reset, transform. So this is the actual size of the screen. Honestly, I could put it here and it would probably also not matter. I actually kind of like that. Forgive me for like messing with the stream after it's been like this for so long. But like putting it like this seems to make more sense in my head. Doesn't it? Because this like bottom right doesn't have anything in it of value. Yeah, so I'm thinking of changing the bounds to be here. And I've already calculated what the bounds should be, right? Yeah? So it's 380 by 450, 15 pixels in. Right? That's what we want to do, right? So I'm going to close that before my CPU breaks. And I'm actually going to go and build in a... Um, I'm going to go build in a frame rate limiter by default of 240, just because I don't want to break my CPU. Two textures of the chat box got clipped off. Two letters got clipped off. How's that? Oh, you're right. Oh, that's fine. So I get the size on the window size. Thanks for the MS Paint texture. But it works, right? You know what I mean? So here, let's get the game back up, just so we have something to look at, right? Hey, friends. All right, here's the beans. Window height, window... I'm actually going to put this on my other screen, so it's just there. Hmm. <sighs> Exciting stuff, chat. 380 by 450. How do I want to set that up? We want to get the logic that sets up the screen, right? The beans are very cozy. Game.c++. Where are we looking? Set up beans, window size, width height. Who are the beans? It's Kena Kamishiwasara from the Toho project. Create main window probably doesn't have anything in it, right? M.bounds. Oh, here we go. So by default, the bound was actually the size of the whole window. What I actually want it to be is what? Can I just do like 15F, 15F by... Um, 380. You can do 380.f, can't you? You have to do that zero. 450. Let's experiment, alright? I don't want to find out if this is incorrect. I just want to see what happens. Surely if they spawn in the side of the screen, it's going to crash, though. They're going to be really confused. Undefined. Exit code 1. That doesn't work. The game is open. Oh. Divide the window size and you pass that in by float. 640 by th divided by 380 equals 1.642104. I don't want to use magic numbers though, do I? Or do I? Oh, look at that. They're all bouncing within their bean holder. If I try to spawn one outside, it automatically clips it in. So that's somehow sorted by your amazing collision detection. So now the beans are within their collision box. Later, if you want to change the window size. Oh, as in if I don't want to have the game logic set by a default thing. Okay, I see. So right here, we're like hard coding it to be 380 by 450. I love this song. Wait, what? Oh, it's just been slow. Do I want it to be that? Divided by, oh sorry, divided by 1.6. That's the non-loop script. Hey friends. 
I've always used my config for TF2 and you've always seen unknown command. Yeah, it's null move. You can do game area offset X. Yeah, as in if you want to offset it off to the side and stuff, I guess. 65 is A in ASCII. Yes. Just so the numbers aren't hard coded. That's a good idea. I'm going to ignore it just for this second, though. That seems like something that's not so hard to refactor in later. The offset is, for now, it's fine to be offset by 15. But we, we can just calculate it, actually, because we can just do window height minus this special number. What's the squished, uh, what's the squished width? Sorry, it's, uh, 380. So wait, is that the squished width? Width, oh, it's the height I want to get, sorry. So the height is 480 divided by 450, is it? Oops. Is that right, or is it the other way? 1.06. That might be right. Let's do 1.06. Will that work? Eh? I don't know about that. Let's try it. It's fun. To, it's I find it more fun to like trial and error instead of actually think for two seconds. Undefined. Conversion from double to T. Possible loss of data. Oh. Well, hang on. That's not going to work then. The width divided by. Oh, hang on. You've got an F at the end. Oh, you're right. That's all it is. Oh, I'm trying to divide it by an integer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I oh, know. I completely see what you mean. I did 1.6 without an F. Yeah, yeah, no, that makes complete sense. All right, that seems to work. It goes a little bit off the edge, though. Oh, because uh, it should be minus 30. So wait, the height... The height's about right. It's a little bit over. 1.6 that enough is a double. Okay, we want to figure out the calculation a bit better. Doom, doom, doom. Same for Baron. Okay. Let me think for a mo, because we could automate this probably. So let's have uh, let's can we can I just quickly make like a spe oh god. Can I just have like a special float? Scaled width equals the width? Divided by 1.6. How did I get 1.6? Oh, the window's width is equals the window's width divided by window width by uh, 640. Right? Because that's what I'm scaling it by, right? And then scaled height can be window height divided by window height divided by 480. Is that not right? Brothers? Because I'm internally working with the idea of it being 640 by 480. 640 divided by 380. Oh no, you're right, you're right, you're right. Because I'm not... I'm just looking for the little bit on the left, right? I'm not looking for the whole screen to be scaled. I'm just looking for this section here, which would actually be 380 by 450. Yeah? So here we just do scaled width. And scaled height, right? You can multiply the window width by 380. Oh, am I doing a stupid math thing? Wait, that's not right. Multiply the window's width. So it's this. Multiply by 380. What? Oh. It's 380 divided by 640. Wait, hang on, hang on. 380 divided by 640. You want me to do this? So the window width multiplied by these two. Is that right? That makes sense. And what was this one? 450 divided by 480. Let's make sure they're all floats. How about that, brother? So the scaled width is this little miniature section. With it. it's, it's as it would appear within a 640 by 480 window. Semicolons. Brother. 
you're a genius. And then instead of 15 by 15, closing one percent this is too much. Oh. I need rainbow brackets. Does this thing have rainbow brackets? Oh, I think I saw it. Rainbow brackets, you beautiful plugin, please. Please function. Oh, it's it works. I love rainbow brackets. Chat. If you do any programming, even more than like a dark mode, install rainbow brackets. It is insanely useful. Cause this now makes it look like like where's the where's the other side of this red? It's like super obvious. It's incredibly useful. It's so good. What about the colours? You're not like the default. The defaults are fine, brother. Leave it. You do footnotes. You think I do anything, brother? I love rainbow brackets. Like, I just forgot how good it is. But now you can see. So easily. Anyway. We've now got our modified thing. So 15, 15 by 15. We need to actually get, like, offset, right? And the X and... The offset can be the same, right? I don't really care. Like, it's... It's the height minus the height. Wait, hang on. Brother. 15? Is it always going to be 15? No. It's not. It's going to be the height of the whole thing, such as 480, minus the height of 450, which is 15. Const auto instead of float. I like to special. I like to specify what I'm using, but sure. Const auto, and you're doing constant because it's not going to change very well. Const is fine. How do I calculate that 15? Well, 15, 15 is calculated by originally by 480 minus 450, right? So we can just do that for now. Just just to have something. We can call it scaled offset. Because it's gonna be scaled. This is Zelda music, yeah. Scaled offset can't be this number, can it? Should it be it should be the window width minus scaled height, right? Or window height, sorry. Minus... No, the other way. No, no, yeah. Yeah? And then divided by two. Because you want to have it halved. Because just window width... Uh, just 480 minus 450 is 30, which gets you these two numbers added together. Is that right? Sorry, 2.f. Is that right? Window height minus scaled height. So the whole height minus just the height of this little play area, divided by 2. Multiplied by 0 0.5. Is there a difference between divided by 2 and multiplied by 0 0.5? That sounds very important. Multiplication is faster? Sure. I'm all for a super efficiency. The compiler might optimize it for you. I wouldn't be surprised. It seems to do everything, including the dishes. By the way, chat, it's, been, it's like 5 o'clock. We need to stop, but like, I'm enjoying this too much. By the way, this absolutely does not work. This does not work. It's just off. Why is this fun? It is fun, isn't it? The beans are trying to escape. Why does this not work? Did I just print them out? Like... Oh, this is annoying. Donut, isn't it? See out. Is see out not a thing? FMT print. Can I do this? Does that work, Donut? Do I just have to do that? I'm not going to do a breakpoint. This is fine. This works. Oops. 
That should work. Alright. Let's try and see what's going wrong. You might have to run it from the terminal. That's fine. We'll do build slash bin slash debug slash wallen.exe. Oh, whoops. Oh, that, that does work. Oops. You see this? You see this. What does it print? It didn't print anything. You've got to compile it. Wait, do I always have to do build debug in that order? F7 takes a while on my keyboard because I have to do function F7. Oh, here we go. Scaled width, 480. Scaled height, 600. Scaled offsets, minus 60. Minus 60? Scaled minus window. That doesn't make sense. Because the window height is the biggest number. Minus the smaller number. That whole thing. That gap. Halved. Am I getting the scaled thing wrong? Let's Google like... Oh, I want to print LN, don't I? Is that a thing? Can I do print LN? So wait, it should be... Let's try, let's try that. Not that it matters for now. Flash N. I'll just do LN, just to keep it safe. Keep it safe, keep it easy. Yeah, I think print LN is a thing. Oh. Sure, maybe it is. No, we'll just do it your way, that's fine. Anyway, why is that going incorrectly? Window width multiplied by... Where did you get this idea from? Was that just the same maths thing as I was doing before, but just in a diff just in a neater way? So yeah, this is incorrect. Surely? Or 0 0.6? Don't we want 0 0.61555? Or is that just a close approximation? Hang on. It doesn't say what it is. I divided, he multiplied. It should be the same. Is there somewhere where I can see all the variables? Like some sort of debug window? Is that a thing? Yeah, just put a breakpoint. Or do you have to put a breakpoint? Then I have to just run debug again. Oh, whoops. Okay, here we are. We're here, right? The window's not loaded anything. That's fine. Um, have a look. Height and width is 450 and 640. Scaled offset is minus a zillion dot. That looks like an underflow, doesn't it? Make sure you've executed the first line. You have to step more, lot more, more line. Where's step? Step over. Oh, that makes more sense then. Six. Oh, that's not just the default. Okay. Why is it minus? Si can I like hover over it and it can tell me what it is? Four eighty minus six hundred. Why is the scaled height six hundred? Hang on, get out. Get this buddy pop up out of the way. Get out of here. Oh, I'm an idiot, lads. It's we're doing window width here. Classic brothers. So if we just uh, build, can I? How do I finish all this? Stop this! Like, get out of here! All of this shit. Build. Debug. Do I think Lionel Richie knows C plus plus? Scaled offset. So go. Yeah, go another one. Sorry. Fifteen. Perfect. That's exactly what we were looking for. So that should work, right? Oh, stop, stop all of this. There's so much shit going on. Okay, that seems to be calculating properly, right? Debug console terminal. 380 by 600. Why by 600? It seems to work, but I don't quite get why it's 600. That's the old one.
run it again in the terminal. Oh. Oh, yeah, you're right. It wasn't on a new line. Yeah, perfect. So our calculations were correct. And now the beans are within their own little window. Oh my god, it looks so toho -y already. Even though we've done literally nothing. I want to program more. Do we have to stream TF2 later? How upset will people be if we just do this? I, don't, I like forgot how much fun my day job was. Make the sprites smaller. You wouldn't mind. I don't know, people might get really upset. Look at tf 2 source. I really want to do this. Programming is really fun, isn't it? Like doing something and see it immediately happen. <sighs> Bloody hell. Do we have to like not do this until Monday? Another two days? I can't wait. This is really fun. So much progress, 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 progress. Bam, 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 bam. You know? We kind of have to, though. You know, we've made a schedule. It's a really, it's a big dick move. Uh, not a big dick. It's like a really dick move to promise to people you're going to play a game that they're probably going to want to watch and then go, sorry, I want to do my own thing. It just means next week we have to, like, we have to have, like, two straight days of programming in a row or something. Oh, no, no, no. Do what you want is different to promise stuff and then take away. It completely devalues having a schedule if you make it and then change your mind on it. It's a cliffhanger. It is, and I hate it because I want to keep doing this. But this is what we've decided. You know, brothers? This is what we've decided. I didn't realize it was going to be this fun. Like, I knew, it was, I knew programming was going to be good, and this is something I enjoy doing. I didn't realize that I would literally just want to do it for, like, hours and hours while being hungry. The offset's correct, yeah. We fixed it, yeah. Spam wall Hina. Alright, well. I hate to say it, lads, but it's quarter past-ish. Left side seems too big. Yeah, it seems a little bit too big, but that might just be that the drawing sucks. The drawing might just be incorrect, by the way. Is this not your channel? Your Twitter poll? No, 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 like, I've already made it. Like, this is later. If this was for a stream in, like, two days, I think that would be okay. Like, a future stream schedule change is fine. Like, if we wanted to skip doing OSU on Monday, we might be able to do that. But if this is something that's happening in an hour and 40, it's a pretty big move. Yeah, the drawing's just incorrect. Ignore the drawing now. It's close enough, right? Anyway, I hate it, but I'm going to say thank you all for watching the programming stream. This was great fun. Jesus, did you enjoy it, friends? I hope you did. i got to go take a break and eat lunch, though. A foul I've had today was a croissant, a few grapes, and a chocolate biscuit. Um, so I'm going to go and take lunch. We'll be back in an hour and 40-ish with some Team Fortress. I hope you enjoyed that as well. God, these like weird sort of streams have been way more fun than I thought. Like, League of Legends was great. Programming was great. The editing stream was great. Variety's great, isn't it? Trying new things. Sometimes it's not great. Like, you try a game and it's not good. But, like, some of these... Fantastic. But, yeah. Thanks for watching, friends. Did you enjoy League? I thought it was fun. I like playing with my friends. But, yeah. I'm going to end the stream for now. See you all in an hour 40. For now, we'll be doing more streaming on Monday. I might replace OC with this. Yeah, we might replace OSU with this, but we'll, we'll, we'll keep it in the back of our head. We'll do OSU or programming. Or programming. We'll see. You know, might change it. That's fine. That's in like a few days. So that's that's fine to change. But yeah, I'm going to end the stream for now. Thanks for watching. See you in a bit. We'll be playing some TF2 later. Some Ocarina of Time. No, so wait, some Twilight Princess tomorrow. And then the day after that, Ocarina of Time, Randomizer, and Tabletop. And then programming and OSU or programming. So we've got a good week coming up ahead. Have a good break, lads. See you in an hour and a bit. Bye. Bye, 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 bye.